So welcome dreamers. Just a minute, just let's settle down. Just a minute. Okay, so welcome all the participants and all the dreamers. Baiju's exam prep warriors. This is Ravindra Tube, faculty at Baiju's exam prep, and we are in the session of marathon where we'll talk about a machining process in a complete detailed manner in today's session. So all the participants, let's welcome the participants. Let's uh, name them all the participants. Amir, Raghu, Baumik, Mayur, uh, Char Bundawala, very correct. Raghu, Mayur, Malesh, Ateju, Shivam Singh. Okay, Manas Pagare. Okay, fine, Mayur. So all the participants, welcome. How are you all? It's a scintillating Friday. And on this scintillating Friday morning, uh, we'll talk about in a very thorough manner as far as Pratik Nikam, good morning, good morning. Yeah, Mithun Matthew, absolutely correct. Good morning, good morning. So let's welcome all the participants. I'll bet you that in this particular session, we'll try to understand each and every things about this particular related to the gate examination. Related to what? Gate examination. So right, fine. So I hope so you'll get a lot of detailed idea about this. Right. Uh, I have a request to each and everyone that that is nothing but sir, we are uh, uh, arranging so many sessions at Baiju's exam prep. We are arranging a test series. It's a beautiful test series. You can go and check test series. A Maha Marathon series is going on. Uh, number of sessions are conducted for students are concerned, right? Yes, Raghu, ABM. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Good to see you back. Ajay Krishna, SK, Arsha, right fine. So let's start our topic, right fine. So let's see that, sir, we'll talk about a conventional machining operation, right? Uh, today we'll talk about conventional machining operation in entire detail, metal cutting, basic fundamentals of metal cutting, analysis of metal cutting. Uh, then we'll talk about entire machining, lathe machining, drilling, milling, uh, shaping. Uh, then we'll talk about a advanced machining method that is called a CNC, DNC and non-traditional machining methods. This is what exactly today's agenda is because uh, it's not possible to cover entire production. Part second will be also coming. Part 1 and part 2 we have decided because in a one particular session to cover entire production, it is very, very vast topic is very, very difficult and otherwise it will be what? It will be just formula revision. So instead of that, we have covered that into two sessions. So part second will be also coming on the 16th. This is the part 1 we are talking about. Is it okay everyone? Yes. Oh yes? Fine. So let's talk about sir, whenever we talk about sir machining operation. Sir, machining is nothing but a removal of unwanted material from the workpiece is called as machining. And whenever I'm removing the unwanted material, I want to impart good shape that is called as required shape and required dimensional accuracy. So machining is basically done for two reasons to remove unwanted material to get required shape and required dimensional accuracy, required grade of surface finish. Now this machining can be done by multiple ways. Multiple ways are available by which that removal of material can be taken place. A removal of material can be takes place in the form of chip that is in solid or removal of material can be taken place by melting and the vaporization. There are a number of mechanisms are there. So out of that, first of all, we'll talk about conventional way of doing machining operation. What is conventional way? Conventional way means is nothing but where I'm selecting a tool. That tool should be harder than the workpiece. That is at least 30 to 50 percent. And whenever my tool comes in contact with workpiece, my tool will apply force. There will be a relative motions will be generated and by the application of force, just by sheer plastic deformation, unwanted material removal takes place in the form of chip. That is called as conventional machining operation. So when we talk about conventional machining operation, my tool should be harder than the workpiece and simultaneously my tool should be integrally in contact with workpiece. Is it okay? All good, good sir? Yes. Now sir, whenever we talk about this conventional machining operation, there are relative movements need to get generated. How? Let's say that I want to do a sharpening of the pencil. So what I'll do, I'll take a sharpener, I'll take a pencil. Now once I take a sharpener, can I say this sharpener will be get held in my, this particular fingertip, my, my wristwatch is there, everything. Or, and then once it is held, I'm selecting this pencil into right hand side and then I'm moving that pencil in a, this particular direction. So there is a one movement comes in the picture that is nothing but called as my pencil has to push in this direction. Pencil has to push. And then can I say that pencil has to rotate it also? There are multiple movements required. So when I'm pushing in this direction and rotating, there are relative movements are generated and this sharp cutting edge will apply force and then this particular chip removal takes place. This is what exactly removal of chip takes place. 
and therefore in entire machining operation there are two things comes in the picture one is called as cutting tool and second is called as a machine tool cutting tool is nothing but which directly comes in contact with workpiece and applies forces and machine tool is nothing but a device which is utilized for holding my workpiece holding my tool and to generate relative motion here can i say my hand my brain my fingers which are holding my this sharpener as well as this pencil and generating relative motions that is called as machine tool is it okay everybody is it called as what machine tool is it accepted everyone yes this is nothing but called as my machine tool so sir there are so many machine tools are there lathe machine is a machine tool drilling machine planing machine shaping machine these are machine tools but cutting tool is the one which is directly come in contact with workpiece what is cutting tool single point cutting tool is a cutting tool milling cutter is a cutting tool drilling tool is a cutting tool that's what exactly basic difference between single point cutting tool or cutting tool and the machine tool now in this chapter we are going to discuss everything about a cutting tool right cutting tool comes in the picture now we all know that sir whenever we talk about cutting tool a cutting tool is the one who directly come in contact with workpiece and apply force and now in this chapter we have to understand a geometry of a single point cutting tool so you can easily understand here in this particular figure can i say that sir this is exactly equal to my tool is which is engaged to the workpiece and when the tool is engaging workpiece force is applied and the chip start removing by the application of force single point cutting tool comes in the picture now during that cutting operation there are two motions are generated if i talk about simple lathe machining operation can i say that here my workpiece has to rotate workpiece has to rotate and my tool has to give an a feed so there will be a rotation of workpiece would be there so workpiece rotated by certain rpm isn't it yes workpiece has to rotate and my tool has to feed in this particular direction that is called as feed motion has to be given feed motion has to be given and based on that there are two concepts you must have heard about one is called as generatrix and second is called as directrix have you heard about generatrix and directrix yes generatrix and the directrix comes in the picture now what is mean by generating and directrix sir whichever the motion which generate the cross section of cut surface it is called a generatrix very important question was asked whatever the motion in the machining operation which generates the cross section of the cut surface it is called a generatrix now you assume that my workpiece is rotating workpiece is rotating in this anti clockwise direction by certain rpm and my tool is feeded there so now let's say that this is my single point cutting tool which is feeded and the workpiece rotated but the feed is not given to the tool tool is stationary assume that so when it is being moving like that can i say that this is the cross section which is going to get cut can i say this is the cross section which is going to get cut and this cross section which is going to get cut that is nothing but called as a cross section of the cut surface that is what cross section of the cut surface is generated and which motion which is generating that this is anti clockwise motion of this particular workpiece is generating this cross section of cut surface that is called a generatrix that is called as what generatrix if you go here you will also understand in the next figure so therefore here you understand that this is my tool on workpiece is engaged to the workpiece rotating like that workpiece rotating the moment workpiece start rotating moment workpiece start rotating can i say that sir this is my cross section of cut surface will come in the picture this cross section of the cut surface comes in the picture and this cross section of the cut surface is generated because of this anti clockwise motion of this particular workpiece whenever workpiece is rotating can i say this workpiece will try to push this cutting edge in a downward direction by application of force but this cutting edge will apply the force in opposite direction every action has equal equal and opposite reaction forces and that cutting force is doing the cutting operation so cutting force acting in what vertically upward direction cutting force kahan pe act ho raha hai vertically upward direction mayur absolutely means yes line generated around cutting portion yes 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 are you accepting everyone cutting force acting in what vertically upward direction and that motion is basically generating or that cutting force is generating cross section of cut surface right fine so therefore i'll say that sir circular motion is my generatrix circular motion is what generatrix right fine now what is directrix but sir if i continue this there will be no removal of material will takes place for removal of material and volumetric removal of material can i say my tool has to also move in this direction without movement of tool in this direction there will be no machining operation right there will be no machining operation and therefore i'll say that sir when my tool is fitted in this direction can i say there will be a chip will get generated like this this is exactly equal to my chip will comes in the picture and you can easily understand that this is a volumetric chip this is cross section of the chip and this is nothing but chip flow velocity comes in the picture and we know that 
linear distance advances by my tool with respect to workpiece is called as feed so therefore this distance is nothing but called as what a feed this is nothing but called as generally a feed distance feed distance comes in the picture and therefore a motion which removes the volumetric material that is a motion which is directing the generatrix whatever generatrix is generated or cross section of cut surface which is directing in the feed direction and we generate the volumetric removal that motion is nothing but called as directrix so therefore can i say that here the directrix is what linear directrix is linear and generatrix is circular which kind of surface will produce it will produce a cylindrical surface what surface it will produce it will produce cylindrical surface comes in the picture is it accepted generatrix and directrix right generatrix is nothing but a generation of cross section of cut surface and that cross section of cut surface has to be directed in certain direction for volumetric removal is called as a generatrix or directrix generatrix and directrix comes in the picture now let's say that in shaping operation also same thing in a shaping operation my tool is moving in this direction so whenever my tool is moving in this direction can i say this is cross section of the cut surface which comes in the picture this is nothing but called as so this motion is nothing but called as generatrix because of cross section of cut surface and between every cutting operation can i say feed has to be given like that because of that feed can i say this much is the volumetric material removal takes place this is the way by which chip removal takes place this is my chips comes out so this whatever cross section of cut surface is directed by this particular so this is nothing but called as directrix or this motion is nothing but called as directrix so can i say both motion are linear generatrix is linear directrix is linear which surface it will generate it will generate a plane surface it will generate what plane surface question was asked in examination if generatrix and directrix is linear generatrix and directrix is linear which kind of surface will be generated is called as linear surface will be get generated linear surface will get generated at that particular point so we can easily say that there are number of ways are there to understand that when generatrix and directrix are both are linear that is like a shaping operation surface will be plane but if generatrix is circular just now we have seen in a in a straight turning operation generatrix is kya hai circular and directrix is linear cylindrical surface will generate even if you do opposite of that which is nothing but directrix and generatrix generatrix is linear now directrix is circular again cylindrical surface will be generated yeah generatrix given by cutting tool directrix is given by machine tool absolutely correct generatrix is given by cutting tool and directrix is nothing but that tool is directed is it accepted everyone this is the way by which you have to understand and please understand very simple if generatrix and directrix out of that one is plane and one is circular by default cylindrical surface whether generatrix is linear or directrix is linear and other is circular by default cylindrical cylindrical and rest is very simple if both are linear plane surface will be generated one mark question is hitting over here is it true both are same in that particular manner right fine so okay sir we understand now we'll understand single point and multi point cutting tool geometry in a very short manner it is ocean but we'll understand what is required for examination point of view please write down in the comment box everyone are you allowing is this okay are you following this particular concepts are you following this each and every formula concept will be revised in a very systematic manner with aram say right you have to be a little bit patience in that particular case right yes sir yes raghu mithun viswajit shank raghu yes okay teju yes sir yes fine so let's say that single point cutting tool and multi point cutting tool has basic difference what is the difference sir when listen carefully when only single edge of the cutting edge is in contact with workpiece while the removal of material it is called as a single point cutting tool but that doesn't mean that my tool has only single point okay tool might be having multi point cutting edges doesn't matter but when it removes the material when it is in contact with workpiece only single cutting edge of the tool is in contact with workpiece such is called as single point cutting tool and here you can easily understand very thoroughly sir this is single point cutting tool is there and when this single point cutting tool this is nothing but one edge this is nothing but one edge what is that edge let's concentrate so this is my continuous edge let's say that this will be a this will be o this will be b so this entire edge will be in contact with workpiece how right hand side you see that i'm taking the tool engage with the workpiece only that edge is in contact with workpiece called as single point single point cutting tool but if you come back here we have multi point cutting edges milling operation drilling operation Play broaching operation here you can easily understand sir in milling process can i say that sir this cutting edge 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 can i say multiple cutting edges are simultaneously in contact with workpiece while removal of material 
same thing is happening to the grinding operation so these are called as multi point cutting edge or multi point cutting tool but now in this chapter we will only discuss about single point cutting tool geometry single point cutting tool geometry let's understand single point cutting tool geometry now sir this is my single point cutting tool now this single point cutting tool has a shank and the body but we are interested into only one thing that is cutting edge now this o point will be called as nose of this cutting edge called as nose of cutting edge and then there will be one cutting edge this is i am highlighting this o a is nothing but called as a one cutting edge and this is nothing but one more cutting edge which is nothing but o b o a and the o b so my total cutting edge consists of o a plus o b plus that whatever nodes and here at the corner there will be certain nodes or radius will be there now if i take that tool and engage with the workpiece you can easily understand that let's say i'm taking that tool engage with the workpiece engage with the workpiece you can easily understand how beautifully sir this is my nose of this particular tool now this will be exactly equal to o a and the o b but you can easily understand that there is one top face and whatever the age of the top face that that age is generally in contact with workpiece and out of that can i say majority of the portion of this oa cutting edge is in contact with workpiece and the majority of the material removal takes place by this oa cutting edge that's why it is called as main cutting edge principal cutting edge it is falling on the one side of that cutting edge because this is the one side of the cutting edge that's why it is called as side cutting edge also that's why name is given oa is side cutting edge main cutting edge principal cutting edge or it is called as side cutting edge whereas you can easily understand here sir can i say that if i talk about ob cutting edge can i say small portion chotu portion of this cutting edge is in contact with workpiece and small portion of material removal takes place by that that's why it is called as minor auxiliary or secondary cutting edge and this entire cutting edge that is ao plus ob and nose radius this is one single edge only this is one single edge only this is from here to here one single edge only this is nothing but called as my cutting edge and this only single cutting edge is in contact with workpiece it is called as basically single point cutting tool operation single point cutting tool operation now sir this surface is nothing but called as what plank surface this flank surface comes below the side cutting edge it is called as side flank this flank surface comes below the end cutting edge that's what is called as end flank and this is the top surface it is nothing but called as rake surface of the tool because whenever the cutting takes place can i say that my chip will start flowing like this this is the way by which my chip is going to flow are you accepting everybody this is the way by which my chip is going to flow and whichever surface over which my chip is flowing that is called as a rake surface of the tool what is what rake surface of the tool is the one where my chip is going to get flow now sir whenever we are solving any numericals or whenever we are designating tool tool is designated by a typical way and the way by which tool is designated it is nothing but called as tool signature called a geometry of the tool and there are two types of geometry you must have heard about that what is that one is called as asa system of tool geometry and second is called as ors system of tool geometry now what is asa asa stands for american standard association ors stands for orthogonal rake system understand very simple difference sir for effective and efficient machining operation effective and efficient machining operation can i say that there are certain inclination to rake and plank surface should be given and therefore can i say whatever this top rake surface is there or this plank surface are there they are given inclination this plank surfaces are inclined inwards because they should not come in contact with workpiece and the machine surface otherwise rubbing will take place and rake surface also given certain inclination so that my chip will flow over that particular rake surface very correct ragu right so therefore we have to measure that inclination of plank surface and the rake surface but when we have to measure that we require two things in which plane i am going to measure and with respect to what plane and therefore in a american standard association system sometime it is also called as a machine reference system it is called as what machine reference system that means whatever the planes are associated to any machine these planes i am selecting and with respect to these planes i am measuring the angles that is called as american standard association please sir can you stop the slide animation sir it's pixelating and my eyes are hurting oh ho 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 okay 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 is it uh, doing like that okay fine we'll do that okay done no worries right fine fine 
so now there are three particular i would say that the the planes are there associated to this particular tool uh, associated to this particular machine what is that suppose i am selecting lathe machine can i say every lathe machine has a reference plane it will be having a longitudinal plane and it will be having traverse plane that is what machine reference plane horizontal on which machining is placed longitudinal plane that is along the length of the workpiece or along the headstock and tailstock whatever axis is and one is traverse plane so these are the plane with respect to we do the measurement and these planes are mentioned over here can you see that sir Mach machine reference plane it is nothing but called as a pi r right fine longitudinal plane this is nothing but called as pi x right and this is traverse plane called as pi y so all the angles and inclination of rake and plank surface are measured with respect to this and when we measure the inclination of rake surface and the plank surface with these different planes along with the nose radius and if i write down in a systematic manner it is nothing but called as asa system of tool geometry asa system of a tool geometry now sir we know that we don't require to waste valuable time in this but only one section whenever i cut the tool can i say that sir this is what exactly one angle is coming you can tell me that what is this particular angle so can i say that sir this angle or this is also an angle i'm going to write down what will be this angle right fine so i'll write down here there will be a horizontal reference plane and this is exactly equal to rake surface of the tool can i say that this angle is nothing but called as back rake angle of the tool alpha b this is my end flank representing this is vertical axis so this angle is coming nothing but end clearance angle theta e this is alpha b this is theta e we can go and talk about each and every section now i cut the tool along this particular plane this plane is nothing but longitudinal plane right fine now this angle will be also coming what is this angle and what is this angle if you can write down in the comment box if you can write down in the comment box if you can write down in the comment box what this angle should be what this angle will be this is inclination top surface is inclination of rake surface can i say this will be exactly equal to side rake angle alpha s and this is inclination of a flank surface that is side flank that is nothing but called as a theta s so this is my side rake angle and this is my theta s there are three words side rake angle absolutely correct side flank superb so there are three words i'll be mentioning here sir alpha is notation for rake angle then theta is notation for clearance angle and c is a notation for a cutting edge angles is it true yes so therefore side rake alpha is side rake theta is side clearance side clearance comes in the picture and if i look from the top if i look from the top can i say this will be exactly called as a side cutting edge angle because it is inclination of side cutting edge and this is called as end cutting edge angle ce end cutting edge angle ce and there will be one nose radius also coming r nose radius comes in the picture so these angles are written down in a one systematic format one sequence predefined sequence and that is called as side sorry asa tool geometry asa tool geometry right all the angles are there do you know how the exactly asa tool geometry should be remembered very simple sir alpha b then what alpha s then what theta e then what theta s then what c e c s and nose radius n or as nose radius has to be mentioned in mm or it has to be mentioned in what mm or it has to be mentioned in typically inches mm or inches n stands for nose radius it can be written by r also is it ready yes sir side come seconds there are two words so i'll say that here bs two times es you can remember that i'll say that bs two times es bs two times es this is the way by which i can remember this or we know that back rake angle is coming first and after that side rake is coming after that side rake is coming so that sequence has to be followed continuously side therefore one is left then again side is coming one angle is left again side is coming every alternative side is coming and there is a typical sequence first rake angle second clearance angle third cutting is angle because we know that sir before cutting clearance is given before cutting clearance is given before getting married lot of pampering is done to the boys kyunki pata hai after marriage cutne wala hai that is what exactly before cutting clearance is given liberty is given liberty is given so do you understand that so you understand rectangle then what rectangle then what clearance and then cut rec clear cut rec clear cut bs two times cs very very important for solving number of numericals yes clearance and relief both are same yes 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 clearance and relief both are same 
it can be called as relief angles also it can be called as clearance angle also relief or clearance both are same no worries both are same which comes in the picture okay very good so we'll understand beat bs two times es which comes in the picture and last is nothing but nose radius is going to follow is called as asa system of tool geometry understood sir all the angles are there alpha b alpha s theta e theta s c c s r kya hai alpha b back rack angle alpha s side rack angle theta e clearance end clearance theta s Side clearance, CE, end cutting edge angle, CS, side cutting edge, and R or N stands for nose radius. Perfect, perfect. But sir, I have a doubt here. If you have ASA system of tool geometry, then why you require, sir, clearance is given to reduce friction? Yes, sir, clearance is given to relieve that surfaces from machine surface. As you ask the question, let's see. Suppose this is what exactly one surface is. What is that? End plank. This is one surface. What is that? Side plank. Now, these surfaces should not touch to machine surface. If this surface is outward, can I say it will come in contact with machine surface? Or this vertical surface, if this surface is touching to the workpiece, then there will be a rubbing will take place. It should be avoided. Only cutting edge should come in contact with workpiece while performing machining operation. That's why these angles or these surfaces are inclined inwards. Inclined inwards. This surface is inclined in this direction. This surface is inclined in this particular direction. That's why these are called as clearance are always given for what? Reduce the friction. Reduce the friction at that particular point. Superb. Right, fine. Now, I have simple question, sir. I have ASA system of tool geometry. Why do you require ORS? One minute or two minutes, I'll tell you. Sir, understand very thoroughly. Whenever my workpiece is rotating, it will rotate like that. This is the rotation. And what is the circumferential velocity of this rotation of workpiece? Sir, it's very simple. D is exactly equal to diameter of workpiece. If I say that D is diameter of workpiece and it is rotated by RPM. So what is the velocity by which this circumferential velocity? Sir, circumferential velocity by which it is rotating. It is exactly equal to pi into D into N divided by 60 into 1000. Whatever it may be, right? 60 into what? 1000. Pi into D into N divided by 60 into 1000. Is it true? Yes. Now this is the circumferential velocity. So this is the velocity by which this workpiece is coming and hitting to this particular cutting edge and trying to push this cutting edge in a downward direction. This is what trying to push in a downward direction. But tool is held properly into the toolbox. So therefore reaction forces will be generated. And that reaction force, whatever generated by cutting gauge onto workpiece, that is responsible for cutting operation. So cutting force is acting along the cutting edge. Cutting force is acting along the cutting edge. And therefore it is written like that. This is my cutting force. This is my cutting force. Entire cutting edge and portion of cutting edge which is in contact with workpiece, that is nothing but a, okay, 1000, 1000, absolutely correct, SKD is 1000, not, not 100, so this is my cutting force, cutting force, so where the cutting force is acting, you tell me, can I say cutting force is acting along the cutting edge, cutting force is acting along the cutting edge, is it true, it is acting in the cutting edge, so it is divided by 1000 to convert into meter per second, because generally diameter is given in millimeter, right, fine, and RPM is given in generally RPM revolution per minute to divide that minute into second divided by 60 and convert mm into meter divided by 1000 unit will be meter per second meter per second comes at that particular point right fine now cutting force is acting like that but is it only cutting force is acting there no sir because I have to apply one more force so that my cutting edge should remain in contact with workpiece if my cutting edge is not remain in contact with workpiece, there will be no cutting operation and therefore we are giving the feed. Can I say that feed? Therefore, this is the feed direction and because of the feed direction, there is one force is coming called as contact force. Contact force. How the contact force is coming? So, this is the way by which my contact force is acting in the horizontal plane. Normal to cutting edge in that horizontal plane and that contact force is nothing but called as what? A thrust force comes in the picture. Thrust force. So, if you talk about it in simple manner, Sir, cutting force is acting along the cutting edge and thrust force is acting normal to cutting edge in the horizontal plane. And if I want to do analysis of machining operation, we require these forces because these forces are doing cutting operation. But when we talk about ASA system of tool geometry, I have planes. What are the planes? One plane is a reference plane. One is traverse plane, longitudinal plane. Longitudinal plane is pi x. Traverse plane is pi x and machine reference plane is pi y, right, or pi r. But sir, neither my cutting force or my thrust force acting along this plane and therefore I can't be able to do analysis in my, in my ASA system of tool geometry and therefore analysis become difficult. Therefore, for analysis, I required a view in such a way that I need a plane 
along the cutting edge so that cutting force will be acting there and i need a plane normal to cutting edge so that thrust force will be acting there and therefore ors system of tool geometry is developed called as orthogonal rake system where i'm selecting two planes very properly reference plane is coming in both cases but now i'm selecting this plane called as cutting plane do you imagine that can you imagine cutting plane cutting plane is acting along the cutting edge along the cutting edge you see that sir this is exactly equal to my cutting edge this is exactly equal to let's say that my cutting edge can i say that sir this is my cutting edge can i say this is my cutting edge comes in the picture and along the cutting edge can i say this cutting plane is there and normal to that there is orthogonal plane is there and we know that sir cutting force acting along this direction in a vertical cutting force ka pe act ho raha cutting force is acting cutting force acting where this is the direction where my cutting force is acting fc and my thrust force is acting in this particular direction that is nothing but called as ft is it okay everyone yes alpha seen in sir yes therefore i'll say that sir i required ors so therefore what is basic difference between as and ors in as system of tool geometry angles are measured with respect to reference plane launch on plane and traverse plane but in ors this all the inclinations of rake and flank surface are measured with respect to two planes which is nothing but a cutting plane and normal to cutting plane called as orthogonal plane cutting plane and orthogonal plane is it okay yes now again there is one particular signature is coming same signature what is that now the ors signature is i alpha o theta dash s theta dash e c lambda n please understand that how to remember it i'll give you a high highlight here how to remember that sir i alpha o c lambda n what i remember i alpha o c s e e lambda n i alpha o c lambda n i alpha o c lambda n i alpha o c lambda n. what does it mean by that i inclination angle alpha o orthogonal rake angle please remember orthogonal rake angle is required everywhere while solving numerical and but what happens we take first value as orthogonal no 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 i is inclination angle alpha o is orthogonal rake angle theta dash s clearance of side theta dash is clearance of end end flank ce ce same end cutting edge angle lambda approach or please remember that name you remember principal cutting edge it is remembered by pcea principal cutting edge angle principal cutting most of the student get confused here please come in that most of the student get confused here principal cutting edge angle principal cutting edge angle principal cutting edge angle which is nothing but called as a approach angle approach angle and n is nothing but nose radius comes in the picture you will tell me very simple in this figure you will understand and i think so you have understood everything in a detailed manner just i'll highlight so i am i am i am measuring this inclination angle where i am measuring this inclination angle along this particular cutting plane so inclination of rake surface along that particular cutting plane with respect to reference is called as inclination angle i right fine inclination angle i that is what along the orthogonal plane this is orthogonal plane pi o what is the orthogonal plane so this is my pi o orthogonal plane and angle measured inclination of rake surface along orthogonal plane with respect to reference plane is called as orthogonal rake angle alpha o in the same manner we are measuring the inclination of rake surface with respect to a traverse plane that is called as alpha b back rake angle and alpha s side rake angle so can i say that sir this alpha s side rake angle and alpha o orthogonal rake angle they are similar inclination inclination of rake towards side and if i talk about this i inclination angle and this alpha o inclination angle can i say sorry not alpha o this is alpha b can i say that they are also inclination of rake surface towards back side we only measured with respect to different plane or in different plane they are measuring this i is measured in a cutting plane and this alpha b is measured in a traverse plane but they are all brothers and sisters right fine now i'll ask you that simple can i say that this is my inclination angle i and this is alpha b can i say that generally during everywhere can i say back rake angle always greater than inclination angle i do you remember that back rake angle sir what is the limitation of cs what is in by cs side cutting edge we'll discuss that also we'll discuss that in a cs side cutting edge is decided so that deviation of the chip should be restricted very interesting question we'll discuss 5 10 minutes give me here can i say that sir alpha o will be always greater than alpha o will be always greater than side rake angle is it true everybody you can understand that they are all brothers and sisters to each other they are brothers and sisters to each other which comes in the picture and it is written here alpha b i alpha s alpha o measured with respect to and measured in plane can i say all the rake angles are measured with respect to reference plane so they are measured pi r pi r pi r 
and we know that alpha b back crack angle is measured in what traverse plane pi y i inclination angle is measured in what cutting plane pi c side rake angle is measured side rake angle is measured in what plane that is pi x machine law and plane and orthogonal rake angle is measured in what orthogonal plane pi o pi o pi o are you accepting following my dear friends please write down in the comment box whether you are understanding this revision is going on teju and rest of the students just write down in the comment box yes we will immediately go to the mathematical analysis where all the formulas and tricks we are going to share merchant circle diagram velocity triangle cronenberg's equation uh, the the merchants analysis for that particular minimum energy minimum power consumption shear strain a lot of things has to be discussed right fine so let's say now sir this is that exactly top view selected now this is side cutting edge angle can i say this is nothing but cs this is nothing but side cutting edge angle and this is nothing but ce right fine now if i measure this angle this is nothing but called as lambda principal cutting edge angle principal cutting edge angle that is angle of side cutting edge measured angle of side cutting measured with respect to horizontal plane right if i talk about this if i talk about this line this will be called as a pi x called as machine launch channel plane machine launch channel plane and this particular if i draw this one this will be called as a pi y that is called as machine traverse plane machine traverse plane now with respect to pi x if i measure the inclination of this side cutting edge called as principal cutting edge angle lambda and this cs if this is cs can i say this will be also cs so can i write down here lambda plus cs is exactly equal to 90 degree is it lambda plus cs is 90 degree my dear friends yes lambda plus cs is 90 degree so if i know any one value can i able to calculate other value so i'll say cs is equal to 90 degree minus lambda or lambda is equal to 90 degree minus a cs minus what cs now there is one need is there you need to understand that for solving numericals our question is also coming convert as a system of tool geometry to ors and generally this has to be done to calculation of orthogonal rake angle alpha 0 because we know that we talk about orthogonal analysis of metal cutting operation orthogonal metal cutting analysis right fine so therefore we have to understand one important thing here and which is nothing but very important for analysis that is asa system of tool geometry has to be converted to orthogonal rake system of tool geometry and vice versa one mark question is hinting there so what is it so what is asa you tell me that revise yourself what is asa sir asa is very simple alpha b right alpha s then theta e theta s c e c s nose radius r or n now what is ors system of tool geometry right ors system of tool geometry is exactly equal to i alpha o theta dash s theta dash e c e lambda and n right fine now we have to convert asa to rs okay fine now sir it's very simple in both the cases c e c both are same end cutting edge end cutting edge same you don't require and if i know c s can i able to calculate lambda just now we talk about sir lambda plus side cutting edge angle c s is equal to 90 degree so in the as system of tool geometry if the side cutting is given principal cutting edge angle that is lambda or approach angle can be calculated directly so we don't require to see that transformation and nose radius whether it is asa or ors I'm going to measure the nose radius in the same manner. So that will also remain same. Now only this rest of the angles we have to convert and understand. Now clearance angle not, not required in the analysis anywhere. But inclination angle and the rake angle is required. And therefore how to convert alpha b to r, alpha s to alpha 0. There is one derivation is there. You must have heard about that. But don't require to remember that derivation. I have one matrix. If you remember that matrix, I'm damn sure that you will going to understand how exactly transformation matrix is done. So I have developed this trans. I have developed or this is the book, very interesting book here. This transformation matrix is given. How to convert and how to remember that? I'll tell you how to remember that. Very, very simple matrix. If you remember this matrix, I'll say that, sir, very simple. Sir, what we are interested to calculate? Sir, ASA has to be converted to RS. That means ORS angle has to be calculated. I can has to calculate, alpha has to calculate. So our first angle is inclusion angle I, second angle is alpha zero. So write down that alpha i and alpha 0. So write down here tan of i and write down here tan of alpha 0. Tan of i, tan of alpha 0. That we are interested to calculate. And this is nothing but called as ORS system of tool geometry. ORS system of tool geometry. Is it okay everyone? Now what we have to calculate? We have to calculate this. 
from where asa so here i'll write down asa angles related to i what is alpha b i'll write down tan of alpha b tan has to be selected and then what alpha is second angle tan of alpha is same manner same i alpha o tan of i tan of alpha o tan of alpha b tan of alpha s right fine and in between this there is a one link that is called as lambda is a link where which can be utilized so here write down sine of lambda minus cos lambda a cos lambda and sine lambda that's it lambda is there in a transfer machine diagonally there is sine sine diagonally there is a cos cos and minus sine has to be there you can able to calculate any value which comes here which comes there you must heard about okay we require tan of alpha tan of i okay you can split that tan i is exactly equal to how it can be done split this split this right fine how exactly it can be done so i'll say that sir it is tan of sine lambda sine lambda into what into tan of alpha b minus minus what Si cos lambda cos lambda into what tan of alpha s tan of alpha s have you heard about this equation everyone this is transform only this matrix you remember sir so in tan pi for shear strain which rake angle we have to have to use sir so side rake or back or ortho which one is that sir so tan pi for shear strain no 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 shear strain is exactly equal to shear strain is exactly cot phi plus tan of phi minus alpha 0 what is that phi phi is a shear plane angle shear plane angle we'll come to that analysis we are just about to enter into orthogonal analysis and then for alpha 0 was rec angle only rec angle back rec angle don't use it don't use back rec angle vijay sai don't use back rec angle shear strain we are just about to discuss now shear strain are you accepting this matrix write down in the comment box sir whether you are understanding or not whether it is fine, revision is going on, right, fine. Or if you want, increase the speed, we'll increase the speed. If you want, okay, directly go to that, we'll go that. That's what exactly we are here for you. Come on. Yes, sir. Are you revising these things? Formulas, revision, chal rai, sir. Right? Crystal clear, hai? Yes, SK. Good, sir. Mayur. Yes. Fine. Now, sir, mechanism of chip formation. And now we'll enter into that analysis right right what is the analysis analysis of metal cutting operation and here first is nothing but sir you can increase the speed right sir right 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 you can increase the speed okay fine yes sir mother are okay okay fine fine okay swati kumari yes superb superb yes so we can increase the speed in little bit of manner so let's say that sir this is orthogonal view of a metal cutting operation now we all understand that right fine and for for very important thing which need to understand sir for analysis of metal cutting operation this view is being rotated in anti-clockwise direction because we know that sir this this exactly a tool right and the workpiece and the chip is cut along the orthogonal plane that is called as pi o orthogonal plane we, we cut it and once we do that this is exactly where is coming now the material moves in the diagonal direction by the cutting velocity vc and cutting velocity vc is nothing but circumference velocity that is pi d n divided by 60 multiplied by 1000 right this is exactly equal to my cutting velocity by which material comes down with that particular velocity when the material comes down it will hit to the cutting edge and try to push in downward direction but my cutting edge applies cutting force in a vertically upward direction right fine now what happens my cutting edge is applying force in this direction right right and this material of the workpiece moves in a downward direction and because of that whichever the material comes at the tip of the tool can as it will go all sided compression and when it goes all sided compression because of that compressive force will be acting as principal force because of that there is a principal stress will develop and there will be a different shear plane along which a shear stress will develop so along this plane along this plane along this plane along this plane different different shear stress will get developed along different shear plane and one point will come where along one shear plane my shear stress will reach to shear strength and material will start sliding and therefore here can i say along this particular plane the shear stress will start building and develop and become what shear strength and therefore there is a new layer there is a new layer which will got what slide it will got what slide this layer will get slided that is called a shearing shear yielding will take place this layer will start shear by certain velocity and what is the velocity by which it is shear it is called a shear velocity vs so what is the velocity by which material comes in that is called as cutting velocity vc and then there will be a shearing of the layer will take place like a pack of cards 
right so therefore layer will start shear along the shear plane and what is the velocity by which it is shear that is called a shear velocity vs the moment this layer is at the tip of the tool it will receive the maximum shear strain but as it should start moving away from that tip of the tool the shear stress value will diminish and one point will come where the shear stress will become zero shear stress will become zero and when the shear stress becomes zero now the previous layer this is one more layer will come now right at the contact of this particular tool it will undergo all sided compression again the shear will take place and then this previous layer will push this new layer or previous layer will push the old layer in the downward direction and therefore this chip will start sliding on the leg surface and once it starts sliding on the leg surface that velocity is called a chip flow velocity vf that is called a chip flow velocity vf so how the velocities are developed right how the velocities are getting developed let's say first of all cutting velocity vc then the shearing takes place along the shear plane that is called as vs and then that layer will slide along the rex surface called a chip flow velocity vf an angle made by shear plane with a cutting velocity vector is nothing but called a shear plane angle phi which comes in the picture and this figure is rotated in anti clockwise direction by 90 degree figure is what rotated in a anti clockwise direction by 90 degree so this is the way by which this is my cutting velocity vc this is my shear velocity vs and this is my chip flow velocity vf and when the chip is coming out it will manufacture with certain thickness this is nothing but called as average chip thickness this is nothing but called as what chip thickness tc and this is nothing but called as what uncut chip thickness t not uncut chip thickness t not uncut chip thickness t not and chip thickness is tc comes in the picture and there are three velocities are getting developed angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector is called as what shear plane angle phi and now this figure is rotated in a counter clockwise direction in anti clockwise direction by 90 degree for understanding and for analysis easiness and that's why this is the figure you must have seen what is this cutting velocity vc what is this shear plane velocity vs what is this chip flow velocity vf angle made by shear plane this oa is nothing but called as what shear plane right fine and this is nothing but shear plane angle phi angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector is a phi which comes in the picture if i draw vertical line here you tell me that everybody is master now you tell me that what is the angle i am highlighting here can somebody tell me in the comment box everyone write down in the comment box what is this angle write down in the comment box what is the angle this angle is nothing but called as a orthogonal rake angle alpha 0 orthogonal rake angle alpha 0 comes in the picture and based on that there is one triangle is developed there is one back rake wo back rake nahi hai teju it is a orthogonal rake angle it is orthogonal rake angle that's the misconception student having because this is the orthogonal view buddy this is orthogonal view orthogonal view the tool is cut along the orthogonal plane and if this is not a normal rake angle also normal rake is different it is different it is orthogonal rake angle this view is calculated in orthogonal plane pi o pi o orthogonal plane orthogonal plane in which this is nothing but uncut chip thickness this is nothing but uncut chip thickness t not uncut chip thickness you know it is orthogonal rake angle which comes in the picture and this is the 3d figure because until now i was drawing a plain sectional view plain sectional view but it is having the width also that whatever the material getting cut it is having the width also so therefore this is called as width of the uncut shape width of the uncut shape w not now this is nothing but o this is a shear plane shear plane this angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector phi this the chip is flowing with velocity vf right fine and this is the direction where my chip is flowing this is called a shear plane velocity vs shear plane velocity vs and now once the chip is manufactured this chip is flowing can i say chip will be having certain width width of the chip chip is flowing with velocity v uh, is it accepted this view a view clear hai sabko yes is it true and because of the shearing takes place along the shear plane because of shearing takes place along the shear plane you can easily understand because of the shearing takes place along the shear plane can i say that my thickness of the chip will be always greater whatever this chip thickness is there which is nothing but tc can i say this is tc can i say it will be always greater than this uncut chip thickness t not can i say tc that is chip thickness tc always greater than t not chip thickness tc will be always greater than t not is it greater than t not yes tc is always greater than t not tc is always greater than t not and therefore i'll say that sir simple things i have written there so what i did whatever the chip is there i cut right and i drawn one simple view so that you will understand here how exactly so therefore i'll write down in a simple manner here sir this is nothing but called as my shear plane shear entire shear because width is also there and we are assume one uh, assumption width remains constant 
whatever the reduction or whatever reduction in the length of the chip takes place that will compensate by increasing the thickness so thickness of the chip increases from t0 to tc chip thickness increases but width of the chip before during and after remain constant width remain constant that is the assumption now this is nothing but called as a area of the shear plane this oa is nothing but called as length of the shear plane ls oa length of the shear plane this is phi shear plane angle phi this is t0 right phi so what is the area of the shear plane that is width of the chip multiply by length of the shear plane ls into w0 right fine now what is calculate ls it's it's very simple you take this triangle this ab this t0 is same sin phi is exactly this much so we'll take one very interesting formula and that is important for solving numerical can i say that length of the shear plane ls is exactly t0 divided by sin phi t0 divided by sin phi t0 divided by sin phi is it coming t0 divided by sin phi yes so what is the shear area so shear area is exactly equal to t0 divided by sin phi multiplied by w0 that is t0 into w0 divided by a sin of phi divided by sin phi shear area please remember this shear area shear area comes in the picture is it okay everyone shear area clear hai sabko shear area yes right fine now we'll talk about certain analysis and in the analysis in a simple manner we'll talk about a whatever the abbreviations i'm selecting alpha 0 orthogonal like angle t0 uncut chip thickness tc thickness of the chip W0 and DBC, width of the chip before and after metal cutting operation. L0 and LC, length of the chip before and after machining. Mu is nothing but friction because whenever chip is sliding, can I say when the chip starts sliding over the rake surface, there is a friction takes place. That friction takes place between the rake surface of the tool and the chip because rake surface of the tool will resist the flow of the chip and therefore between the chip and rake contact surface, the friction takes place and that friction is nothing but called as a coefficient of friction mu, called as coefficient of friction present between tool and the chip interface and beta is nothing but called as friction angle beta is nothing but called as what friction angle which comes at that particular point friction angle which comes at that particular point is it okay everyone yes it is okay yes ls length of the shear plane phi shear plane that is what angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector is shear plane angle vc cutting velocity v up chip velocity vs is a shear velocity shear velocity is it okay yes right fine now let's talk about there is one ratio comes in the picture are you alive everyone or dead are you understanding my friends Okay, okay, very good. Manas, Manas, Subhajit, everyone. Great. Now we'll talk about chip thickness ratio. Sir, chip thickness ratio R is nothing but given by T0 divided by TC. T0 divided by TC. Uncut chip thickness divided by TC. This TC is always greater than T0. So therefore, chip thickness ratio will be always less than 1. Can I say that chip thickness ratio will be always less than 1? There is one more risk introduced that is called a chip reduction ratio or chip reduction coefficient. Chip reduction coefficient. Chip reduction coefficient will be R dash, right? R dash will be exactly 1 by chip thickness ratio. That is R dash is exactly equal to a TC divided by T naught and which will be greater than 1. Which will be greater than 1. And sometimes you need to understand that in a gate examination, this word is utilized. It is written that cutting ratio. Cutting ratio is written. So now if the cutting ratio is given, if it is less than 1, you need to understand that is chip thickness ratio. If it is greater than 1, you need to understand it is a reduction coefficient. Chip reduction coefficient. Please don't make a mistake. Chip thickness ratio that we use in analysis that T0 by T is always less than 1, less than 1, less than 1. Is it okay everyone? Yes, it has to be understood in the same manner. Now sir, we need to understand a shear strain. What is the shear strain? Whenever the chip is sliding over the rake surface, when the chip what sliding over the rake surface, and because of that, there is a shear strain is getting developed. Shear strain is getting developed. What is that? So I'll say that sir, this is my layer. This is my layer. It is getting slide. Can I say it is getting slide from A to B? It is getting slide from A to B. The layer of the chip is sliding, and because of that shear, there is a shear strain is developed. How to calculate shear strain? It's very simple distance shared what is distance shared ab is the distance shared so i'll say shear strain is exactly equal to distance shared that is ab divided by thickness of shear zone what is the thickness of shear zone we have to draw a normal from this point to calculate a thickness of shear zone because i have to draw a line 
which should be normal to this plane both the this is called as thickness of shear zone thickness of shear zone and that is what exactly figure is drawn so this is from c to this is a this is what exactly normal is drawn and based on that a shear strain equation is developed and what is shear strain equation you all know that shear strain equation is exactly equal to quad phi plus tan of phi minus alpha quad phi plus tan of phi minus alpha so shear strain is always function of what phi and alpha zero phi and alpha zero shear strain is always function of shear strain is always function of phi and alpha zero it does not depend on anything now during metal cutting operation if i want to generate minimum shear strain then you have to differentiate this equation with respect to phi and equate it to zero the moment i am doing this and differentiating with respect to zero i'll get one condition and that is nothing but called as condition for minimum shear strain please understand the difference between two things in a metal cutting operation generally it is coming for minimum energy consumption minimum power consumption minimum forces that is called as merchant's minimum energy equation i'm not talking about minimum energy i'm talking about minimum shear strain minimum shear strain equation so can i say what is the minimum shear strain minimum shear strain only comes in the picture if i satisfy this condition that is 2 phi minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree this is called as a minimum shear strain equation condition for minimum shear strain minimum shear strain and how to calculate shear strain shear strain is exactly equal to a cot phi plus plus what tan of phi minus alpha 0 cot phi plus tan of a phi minus alpha 0 cot phi plus tan of phi minus alpha 0 cot phi plus tan of phi minus alpha 0 right phi now if you understand that let's solve this question and tell me answer what is that find out shear strain find out shear strain undergone by chip while machining with zero degree rectangle find out shear strain and find out which shear strain it is written here minimum shear strain i'll edit my question find out minimum shear strain minimum shear strain to undergone by chip while machining with a zero degree rectangle answer is very correct too sir shear strain is very simple that is exact shear strain is exactly equal to a cot phi plus tan of phi minus alpha 0. Right phi. So, sir, orthogonal rectangle alpha 0 is 0 any degree. I required phi. What is the condition for minimum shear strain? What is the condition for minimum shear strain? Can I say condition for minimum shear strain is 2 phi minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree. Is it okay? Yes, alpha 0 is 0. So, how much phi? Phi is equal to 45 degree. Phi is equal to 45 degree for minimum shear strain so you put it here so therefore shear strain is equal to cot of 45 degree plus tan of 45 degree because alpha 0 is 0 cot 45 1 tan 45 1 so minimum shear strain for 0 degree rectangle is coming what 2 for 0 degree rectangle is coming what 2 is it okay Shreya's telegram channel ka link abhi nahi hai mere paas but rest of the student if you have put the telegram channel link in a in a comment box Shear strain is equal to 2 is coming. Is it okay everyone? Simple equation. Simple. Either you will ask minimum shear strain or a shear strain. Values will be given. You will be able to calculate shear strain in that particular case. Right? Fine. Now there is one more that is called a shear strain rate. Also might be asked to calculate. What is that? Calculate the shear strain rate. What is in by rate? So rate is nothing but shear strain has to be measured with respect to time. Rate of change of shear strain with respect to time is shear strain rate. Strain rate, rate means what? With respect, differentiate with respect to time. So I'll say shear strain rate gamma dot is equal to shear strain gamma divided by time t. Shear strain, shear strain means what? Distance shear. That is if I say that distance shear, how much it is? AB is a distance shear because layer is getting sheared. Layer is getting sheared. How much? This is what exactly AB distance. And what is the thickness of shear zone? Delta H is thickness of shear zone. Delta H is thickness of shear zone. So I'll say delta H divided by delta H. And if I put it here, this is distance shear divided by thickness of shear zone divided by time. So I'll do that distance shear delta s divided by time into 1 by delta s. Now distance divided by time. Can I say it is called a speed? So what is the speed by which material is getting sheared along the shear plane? Will you share this PDF sir? Yes, yes, yes. I'll share. And Mayur, you don't require to panic. These all the PDFs are already there in my telegram channel. You can go and download this particular. You can go to the telegram channel, all the PDFs beautiful notation all the figures everything pdf is there you can download and study right no problem at all so i'll say that sir shear strain rate is coming what this value is exactly equal to shear velocity divided by thickness of shear zone this question was asked in very intellectual uh, level i think so dr is true 
this question was asked in yes now this question might come in gate examination calculate shear strain rate calculate shear strain rate calculate shear strain rate what is that vs shear velocity divided by delta h delta h delta h are you okay my dear friend is it okay accepted everyone yes right fine now we'll talk about a orthogonal machining operation an oblique machining operation now we know that sir, whenever there are two, I would say the dimensional cutting system, 2D cutting system comes in the picture, is called as orthogonal cutting operation. And if there are three system or three forces comes in the picture, so it's called as oblique cutting operation. But which are orthogonal cutting operation? Sir, swaying operation, broaching operation, and turning of a very thin, I would say that a, a cylinder, infra definitely, a, I would say that infra decimally small, infra decimally small thickness of wall, thin if I do the machining operation then it is called as a orthogonal why orthogonal because there are only two forces comes in the picture what is that sir cutting force will be acting in a vertical upward direction so this is my cutting force and feed force will be acting in this direction because the wall thickness is infinitely what is the wall thickness wall thickness is infinitely small infinitely small wall thickness and can i say only two forces cutting force and thrust force and these are acting in one plane these are acting in one plane called as my cutting force and thrust force called as my cutting force thrust force. that is called as what a orthogonal cutting operation now, sir, generally oblique cutting operations comes in the picture, right? Fine. Now, we have to convert orthogonal cutting operation to oblique cutting operation. Everywhere, we have to understand that my inclination angle I has to be zero. That is what, what is this? This inclination angle I has to be zero. Then only this orthogonal cutting operation will come in the picture. Otherwise, no analysis will take place. No analysis on the inverse can be taken care without consideration of inclination angle zero. Everywhere, agar mai bolunga orthogonal cutting operation, that means inclination angle I has to be zero. Inclination angle I has to be zero, zero, zero. Without inclination angle I zero, no orthogonal cutting operation will be in, will be done in the universe. Will be done in the universe. Nothing will be happen because now there are so many complex things will be developed here. So instead of that, I'll tell you simple, simple story here. Simple story will restrict to the simple one, right? Fine. So therefore, I'll say that, sir, here, we'll come back here. So I has to be considered to be zero. Inclination angle I has to be considered to be zero everywhere. Orthogonal cutting operation comes in the picture, right? Fine. Now, sir, here, I'll draw a two angles. Let, let me distribute. Are you excluding everybody? This is nothing but called as a pi x and this is called as pi y plane, right? Pi x and pi y plane. Okay, fine, sir. I am understanding this. Now, can I say that this angle will be nothing but called as a side cutting is angle CS. Side cutting is angle CS. Now, there will be two forces will be acting. Cutting force will be acting in a vertical upward direction. This is the top view of the tool. And there is a one more force that is called as a thrust force, which is normal to this cutting edge. Can I say this force is nothing but called as a thrust force FT. Thrust force FT. Now, this thrust force FT can be resolved along radial direction and axial direction. And how exactly their relation is there? Let's see. That thrust force, like this is CS, can I say this will be also CS, equal and opposite angle CS, yes. Now, if this is CS, this is normal, that thrust force is normal to cutting edge. So, this is 90 minus CS, can I say it will be lambda, 90 minus CS lambda. So, if it is this, this is 90 minus lambda, can I say it is a CS, right, fine. Now, can I say thrust force can be resolved into axial force, that is called as a axial force FA. And this thrust force can be resolved into a radial force FR, a radial force is acting along the radial plane. Right, fine. Which mechanical subject do you want to practice more? Practice more. Theory of machine. Practice more. Right, fine. Please answer everybody. So that we'll plan according to that. Production, Tom, Som, MD. Right, fine. Very beautiful subjects. Right. Very important for your gate examination. Now, can I say thrust force? You tell me that. How that thrust force can be resolved into axial force? Can I say axial force is exactly equal to Ft into cos of Cs? And radial force will become in the picture exactly equal to Ft into a cos of lambda. That is a sine of Cs. It can be also written at Ft into sine lambda, which is exactly equal to Ft into a cos lambda. Very, very important. This Fa is nothing but called as axial force. And Fr is nothing but called as a radial force comes in the picture where we have some side sideric angle cs comes in the picture right fine and for every every for every orthogonal cutting operation inclination angle i has to be zero even if it is not zero it has to be assumed to be zero because without inclination angle i has to be zero my cutting force fc will not come along the orthogonal plane my cutting force fc will not come along the orthogonal plane so you have to understand it is it okay everyone write down in the comment box my dear friends write down in the comment box and please like the session also right 
it's very very important for us to uh, go through that right if you if you are understanding that please like the session and comment on this comment box also so that rest of the students will also get benefited from this entire drama right fine beautiful situation are we accepting this particular question yes we are accepting therefore it is given here axial force axial force radial force radial force right fine you all know that right fine these complex things uh, we are understanding that right fine now sir there is a one thing that we need to understand there are two types of orthogonal cutting operations are there and you have to concentrate here because these are required while solving numericals very very important sir inclination angle i has to be zero by default when we talk about orthogonal cutting operation inclination angle i has to be zero i has to be zero but now case one for orthogonal cutting operation here is that my side cutting edge angle cs is not zero is it side cutting edge zero no sir side cutting edge angle is there right side cutting edge angle is not zero which means that lambda is not 90 degree is it lambda 90 degree no 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 lambda is not 90 degree principal cutting edge lambda is not 90 degree it has certain value so cs is zero zero degrees did not zero and lambda is not 90 degree it is also orthogonal cutting operation orthogonal cutting operation of case one and here i'll say that this is my thrust force this is my axial force fa this is my radial force this cs so this is also cs so this is 90 minus cs that means lambda this is 90 minus lambda that means cs so therefore we have written that the actual force fa is exactly equal to ft into cos cs right and radial force fr is equal to ft into a ft into what a cos of 90 minus cs that is sine of cs sine of cs is it okay yes this is exactly equal to relation now let's take that this is also orthogonal cutting operation here i0 i0 very beautiful very beautiful concept is coming i0 by default i0 okay fine but in addition to i0 you tell me that what is lambda value you tell me that in the comment box what is lambda value everyone please comment so lambda is 90 degree is it lambda 90 degree yes sir lambda 90 degree my dear friend lambda is 90 degree lambda 90 degree and can i say that or if lambda is 90 degree or can i say that cs is exactly 0 degree cs kitna hai mere boss cs is exactly 0 degree so if it is so i'll write down two planes here i'll write down two planes that is actual plane and a traverse plane that is traverse plane and longitudinal plane what is traverse plane sir this is machine traverse plane so this is exactly equal to my pi y and this is exactly equal to let's say that sir this plane will be exactly equal to my machine longitudinal plane pi x plane these are the planes related to ASA system of tool geometry now bring all the ORS system of tool geometry tools uh, planes there so ORS there are two planes one is cutting plane and what is orthogonal plane cutting plane is acting along the cutting edge so can i say that my cutting plane is coinciding to the traverse plane and orthogonal plane is normal to cutting edge can i say that will be coinciding this pi x and orthogonal pi o will get coincide to each other orthogonal plane is coinciding to the longitudinal plane and cutting plane is coinciding to the traverse plane cutting plane is coinciding to the traverse plane when lambda is equal to 90 degree and c is equal to 0 degree it is called as pure orthogonal cutting operation it is called as what a pure orthogonal pure orthogonal cutting operation have you heard about that pure orthogonal cutting operation please write down in the comment box please write down in the comment box is it true pure orthogonal cutting operation pure orthogonal cutting operation have you heard about that pure orthogonal pure orthogonal pure orthogonal cutting operation now you tell me one thing that very simple story very simple story in a pure orthogonal cutting operation, pure orthogonal cutting operation, you comment what will be relation between inclination angle I and A alpha B, inclination angle I and alpha B, and what is the relation between A sideric angle alpha S and alpha O? You tell me. You tell me that. Now, if they are coinciding, can I say that inclination angle I and back rake angle alpha B will be coinciding to each other? And sideric angle and orthogonal rake angle will be also coinciding to each other? Are they coinciding, my dear friend? Yes. Can you correlate yourself at this particular st statement? Yes, yes, yes. Right, fine. So can I say that, sir? The alpha S is equal to alpha 0. Alpha S is equal to alpha 0. And I is equal to alpha B. In what? Pure orthogonal cutting operation. In pure orthogonal cutting operation, can I say that what will be radial force? Radial force kitna hoga batao zara in comment box. Everybody, write down in the comment box. How much will be radial force? Radial force will be 0, 0, 0, 0. And we know that even if you don't know, you come here. Sir, CS, sorry, CS. What is the CS? CS is 0. Cos 0 is what? Cos 0 what? Cos 0 is 1. Cos 0, 1. Cos 0, 1. So, therefore, can I say that it will be axial force is exactly equal to my thrust force. Axial force is your thrust force. CS, CS is what? 0. Sin 0 is what? Sin 0 is what? 
zero sine zero is zero so therefore can i say that sir it will come exactly equal to is zero sine zero is zero radial force comes is what zero radial force comes is what zero radial force is coming what zero are you excelling everybody radial force comes zero radial force comes zero are you accepting everybody yes yes so therefore can i say that here my axial force becomes exactly equal to my thrust force axial force becomes like that thrust force it is also called as a feed force it is also called as what feed force comes in the picture it is also called as feed force are you accepting my dear friend you tell me that are you accepting my dear friends if you have any doubt you can ask me yes yes fine now let's move on and talk about some other case right now process parameters and now somebody has asked me a question right we'll try to understand one very important trick now how to solve numericals so now first process parameter is depth of cut we know that the perpendicular distance between perpendicular distance between machine surface and atmospheric surface is called as a depth of cut so can i say that sir this distance is nothing but called as depth of cut d because this is nothing but called as my atmospheric surface and this is nothing but called as my machine surface so perpendicular distance is depth of cut and based on depth of cut based on depth of cut can i say that certain length of portion of my main cutting edge is in contact with workpiece so based on that can i say that i know that this is my o point this is my a point so oa is a side cutting edge but is it entire oa cutting edge is in contact with workpiece no only a certain portion only certain portion of that oa cutting edge is in contact with workpiece and whatever the length a portion of side cutting edge is in contact with workpiece it is called as width of the cut width of the cut width of width of cut is different width of the cut it is called as what width of the cut so o let's say that b ob is nothing but called as width of the cut ob let's say that is exactly equal to width of the cut comes in the picture and now how the chip is coming let's say that the chip is flowing like that so this is the way hypothetically i'll say that chip will be coming in the picture now this will be a 3d dimension of this particular chip and from here this is exactly equal to chip can you imagine everyone this is my chip comes in the picture this is chip is flowing with velocity v f this is exactly equal to chip comes in the picture the volume of the chip and the chip has number of dimension can i say that width of the chip this is my width of the chip is there right fine can i say this is nothing but thickness of the chip is there tc tc thickness of the chip and it is moving with the velocity v f right v f now this is my o point let's say this b point this angle is nothing but approach angle lambda and this is nothing but called as a width of the chip wc is coming width of the chip and width of the chip is nothing but called as width of the cut width of the cut represented by let's say that b width of cut is represented by b let's say so from this triangle can i say that sir sin of lambda is exactly equal to depth of cut divided by hypotenuse b so can i say width of the cut d sorry it is called as a b that is called as width of the chip that is d divided by sin lambda can i say that sir this is depth of cut divided by sin lambda d is nothing but called as a width of cut width of cut width of cut is it coming everybody understand this width of cut comes in the picture have you heard about this particular equation yes sir we have heard about this particular equation right we have heard about this particular equation is it okay yes and therefore it is written here the width of the cut that is b or width of the chip that is w that is exactly equal to d divided by sin lambda comes in the picture don't take a d don't take a d right fine now sir for pure orthogonal cutting operation concentrate this is pure orthogonal cutting operation where lambda is equal to 90 degree or cs is equal to what 0 degree lambda 90 cs 0 this is my depth of cut and how the chip is flowing now you tell me that how the chip is flowing sir chip will be flow like that this is the chip is flowing this is the chip is flowing now this is my width of a chip wc can i say that width of the chip wc can i say is exactly equal to depth of cut directly that is width of the chip before during and after is constant so w is exactly equal to depth of cut d isn't it directly 
बट दिस इज ओनली फॉर प्योर ऑर्थनल कटिंग ऑपरेशन वेर लामडा इज इकल टू नाइनटी डिग्री और सी इज इकल टू जीरो बट इफ इट इज नॉट प्योर ऑर्थनल कटिंग ऑपरेशन वी हाउ टू टेक बॉस डी बाय साइन लामडा डी बाय साइन लामडा हाज टू बी टेकन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स यू डू अ मिस्टेक and if in a gate examination if in a gate examination if i say that if i if i directly if i directly written what exactly if i directly written one thing and what is that if it is written pure orthogonal cutting operation you didn't require to think anything can i say directly that is value has to be selected what w is equal to t w is equal to t w is equal to t is it right shreyas rastogi telegram channel if someone has telegram channel please comment in the comment box so that uh, this telegram channel can be uh, utilized to rest of the students right fine right fine okay i think so you are understanding this now yes fine now we we'll talk about the field field what is field it's very simple that sir linear distance advances this is nothing but called as field distance the relative movement between the cutting tool and the workpiece in a in a direction of direct is called as field so whenever my workpiece is rotating by one complete rotation my tool is advancing that is nothing but called as field distance that is called as what field distance comes in the picture right fine that is nothing but called as a field and let's say this is the chip comes now this is exactly equal to my field can i say that whatever field is there can i say field will be deciding my chip thickness which dimension will be decided by which dimension will be decided by field can i say t field will be deciding chip thickness that means can i say that feed and uncut chip thickness are related to each other feed and uncut chip thickness yes my telegram channel ka link i don't have right now but if somebody has my telegram channel link i request you that please paste into a, uh, this so that rest of the student yeah this is what telegram channel thank you parat yes shreyas rastogi this telegram channel where all the notes are there i will also post the link of the the notes also where you can take benefit of that right so can i say that from here you can easily understand a thickness of the chip will be influenced by feed thickness of the chip will be influenced by feed will be influenced by feed are you accepting yes it is influenced by feed and we know that sir now how exactly these things are coming there is one concept called as a true feed what is a true feed so let's see that So this is exactly my cutting edge. I am talking about pure orthogonal cutting operation. I to zero here. Side cutting edge angle is zero or lambda is ninety degree. So my cutting edge is moving from here to here in one complete rotation. So whatever distance it is advances, the perpendicular distance advances by side cutting edge is nothing but called as feed. And therefore here can I say that this feed distance and this particular uncut chip thickness both are same. And therefore it is written here the feed and uncut chip thickness both are same. Feed and uncut chip thickness are both are same. But if it is a not pure orthogonal cutting operation, then we have to talk about. So this is my a orthogonal cut, or this is my cutting edge. It is moving from here to here, right? And this perpendicular distance between them that is nothing but called as uncut chip thickness t naught. That is nothing but called as uncut chip thickness t naught, and that is calculated by the formula t naught is equal to f into sine lambda. T naught is equal to what? F into sine lambda. If lambda is ninety degree. Sine ninety is one, but T naught is equal to F. That is for pure orthogonal cutting operation. For pure orthogonal cutting operation, it is there. But if it is not, then from that whatever lambda is there, this T naught and F feed will be exactly equal to uncut chip thickness for pure orthogonal cutting operation. And that uncut chip thickness we have to calculate for number of calculations. Without that, highly impossible, highly impossible. Drama will be there, right? Fine. How we have already considered that, right? T naught is equal to F into uncut chip thickness. We have discussed that for pure orthogonal cutting operation. Uncut chip thickness T naught is equal to F, and for here T naught is equal to F into sine lambda. F into sine lambda. Please uh, tell me, students, are you following me now? All these formulas, all these process parameters. Shreyas Rastogi or rest of the students, Vinay Karena or or rest of the students, right? Fine. Okay, fine, fine. Speed is okay. Now we are about to enter into a merchant's analysis. Very very interesting thing. We are trying to understand now. Merchant's analysis may be about to enter. Let's see now, sir. Suppose I am selecting this particular one figure, which is nothing but the same figure. If we rotate in an anti-clockwise direction, then we will get the same figure now. So in a one complete, I am interested to calculate material removal rate. What is material removal rate means? Rate of removal of material. How much volume of material removal takes place with respect to a time? So therefore, let's say that 
I have drawn here. This is my cross section area of a material which is going to get cut. Right, fine. You know, one, one complete rotation I am talking about. So, here I will say that, sir, this cross section area is exactly good to what? This cross section area is good W0 divided by uncut chip thickness T0. And what is the velocity by which this metal is moving? By VC is moving. So, I will say that, sir, W0 into T0 into VC. And therefore, I will say that W0 is mm, T0 is mm, and velocity is mm per second. Unit is coming or value is coming mm cube per second. mm cube per second. This is my metal removal rate. And we can easily say that, sir, if I take this value, after the chip is manufactured, WC is the width of the chip. Anyway, width of the chip during and after even same. This is the chip thickness and it is flowing with the velocity Vf. It is flowing what? With the velocity Vf. And therefore, this is also called as my metal removal rate. Material removal rate which comes in the picture. There is no problem at all in this particular case. TC into WC into Vf. And that is called as MRR, material removal rate which comes in the picture. Right? Fine. Now, already we have discussed that W, w is equal to D by sine lambda. T0 is equal to F into sin lambda, right? Fine. If it is pure orthogonal cutting operation, lambda is equal to 90. Sin lambda, sin 90 is 1. Sin 90 is 1. So, W, width of the chip is depth of cut and the uncut chip thickness is exactly equal to feed. Now, if I do the multiplication of 1 and 2 equation, I will get here W into T0 is equal to depth of cut and the feed, D and the F. And therefore, my master formula for material removal rate is coming exactly equal to, in this equation, that W0 will be will be width of the chip will be replaced by the depth of cut and this uncut chip thickness T0 will be replaced by feed and that's why many number of times we use this formula material removal rate is equal to depth of cut multiplied by feed multiplied by VC but it is only utilized for pure orthogonal cutting operation where lambda is equal to 90 degree if not then these values has to be calculated by this particular equation by this particular equation material removal rate material removal rate is equal to depth of cut multiplied by feed multiplied by VC depth of cut multiply by fit multiply by vc is it okay is it okay everyone without that it is highly impossible to calculate this without that it is highly impossible to calculate these particular values right fine right fine now let's say that side cutting edge now somebody has asked me cs influence right teju so let's talk about now there are two values of side cutting edge are selected here there are two values of a side cutting edge are selected here there are two values of side cutting edge angle are selected here. Here, the side cutting edge angle CS1 is greater as compared to CS2. Right, fine. So, now whenever side cutting edge angle is greater, can I say that width of the cut is greater? OB is the width of cut greater? If the side cutting edge is smaller, OA is a smaller width of cut. And based on that, there are chip is coming W1 and W2. Width of the chip is also increasing. Now, you tell me that. If the side cutting edge angle is increasing, width of cut increases, but my can I say that depth of cut remains same? Can I say that in both the cases, in both the cases, my depth of cut is same? In both the cases, can I say that this depth of cut that is exactly equal to D, both the cases, depth of cut is same? Can I say depth of cut is remaining same? Is there any change in depth of cut? Is there any change in depth of cut? No, depth of cut is remaining same. Ganesh Kumar, good morning. Yes, depth of cut is remaining same. Depth of cut is not changing. For same depth of cut, if the side cutting edge angle increases, my width of cut increases. If my width of the cut increases, if the, my width of the cut increases, can I say that, sir, force required for machining operation will increase, the power required will increase, energy consumption will increase, and therefore, as I'm increasing and keep on increasing side cutting edge, my dear friends, my machining operation will require more force, more energy, more power, and therefore, more side cutting edge is not preferable. So, you will say that, sir, instead of this side cutting edge greater, you take side cutting edge angle 0 then, take a side cutting edge angle 0. But if I take side cutting edge angle 0, can I say that the width of the cut will be least, and but my chip will be flowing here, and can I say that my chip will be falling in this direction in such a way that it will start rubbing against the machine surface. Whatever the surface we have machine, it will start rubbing and it will spoil the my quality of the machine surface. It will spoil the quality of machine surface. If it is spoiling the quality of machine surface, it will be not used. And therefore, we have discussed that we have to develop the geometry of the tool in such a way that my chip has to be moved away from the machining zone. And therefore, for moving the chip away from the machining zone, I have to give certain side cutting edge angle. It is mandatory and therefore, I am giving side cutting edge angle. The moment I am giving certain side cutting edge angle, can I say moment, I am giving certain side cutting edge angle. This is my side cutting edge angle. My chip will be moving away from this machining zone. It will be moving away from machining zone. 
But if I keep on increasing side cutting edge, the width of the cut will keep on increasing, power consumption will keep on increasing and therefore maximum value of side cutting edge angle is restricted to 35 degree. 35 degree. Very important for solving numerical now. One hint I am giving. Side cutting edge angle maximum 35 degree. We know that sir lambda plus CS is 90 degree. If lambda is equal to 90 degree minus CS, CS maximum, CS maximum can be 35 degree. If this maximum is 6, 35 degree, what will be minimum lambda will come in the picture? Can I say minimum lambda will come 55 degree from here? Minimum lambda will come 55 degree here. And therefore, if my maximum side cutting edge angle is restricted to 35, minimum value of principal cutting edge or approach angle is always 55 degree. It cannot be less than that. And side cutting edge angle cannot be greater than 35 degree. Beautiful. Now here are tricks come. Generally, what happens in gate examination? Tool geometry is given. Tool signature is given. But whether it is an ASA tool signature or ORS tool signature is not given. And student get confused. Whether it is ASA or ORS. So what is ASA? Sir, ASA is exactly equal to the alpha B, alpha S, sir, theta E, theta S, C E, C S, nose radius. And I alpha O, theta dash S, theta dash E, C E, lambda and the N. Now, if it is not given in the problem, whether it is AC or ORS system of tool geometry, you just go and focus on the last angle. Last angle. If that angle is less than 35 degree, can I say that my nomenclature is ASA because side cutting edge angle cannot be greater than 35 degree. Cannot be greater than 35 degree. So, therefore, this angle will be what? So definitely side cutting edge. If it is side cutting edge, that will be ASA system of tool geometry. Right, but if my angle at this last position, last angle, if it is greater than 55 degree, which means that it is definitely principal cutting edge angle or approach angle, that means my nomenclature is ORS system of tool geometry by default. ORS system of tool geometry by default, which means that we have to go and check AS and ORS. Very simple trick go and check last angle. If the last angle is less than 35, ASA by default, 100% correct. If it is greater than 55 degree, by default, ORS and solve the numerical. Is it okay? I think so you are understanding this. Everybody is understanding. Right, fine. Now we'll talk about analysis of the metal cutting operation. Now, sir, I'm talking about here OA, nothing but length of the shear pin. Angle made by shear pin with cutting velocity vector is phi. And from here, there is one simple equation is developed. And that is nothing but called as a tip thickness R is exactly equal to sine phi divided phi cos of phi minus alpha zero. What is the equation is coming? We know that, sir, chip thickness ratio R can be calculated. T naught divided by Tc, which is exactly equal to sine phi divided by a cos of phi minus alpha 0. Have you heard about that? Yes. Now, if I go forward, we'll develop one more equation, which is most probably utilized while solving number of numericals is this particular equation. Can you go and talk about this equation? Yes. Tan phi is equal to R cos of alpha 0 divided by 1 minus R sine of alpha 0. R cos of alpha 0 divided by 1 minus R sine of alpha 0. And now we'll talk about one velocity triangle. Don't mug up that velocity triangle. Don't mug up that velocity. Yes, VF by VC will also come Teju. Right now it will come. Let's say that now, sir. I'll draw a this particular line. The line along this is shear pin, right? This is shear pin. So, so velocity along the shear pin is exactly equal to shear velocity Vs. And when the chip is flowing along the rig surface, that is nothing but called as exactly equal to chip flow velocity Vf. That this is Vs. This is exactly equal to Vf. Right, fine. And the, the velocity of tool with respect to workpiece is nothing but called as cutting velocity VC. So, I'll draw one line parallel here that is called as a cutting velocity VC. This is exactly cutting velocity VC. Angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector is shear plane angle phi. Write down phi. Don't mug up these values. I request don't mug up. You just revise how exactly this triangle can be drawn. How exactly this triangle can be drawn. And therefore, I'll draw a vertical line here. I'll draw what? Vertical line here. I'll draw a vertical line here. Once I draw the vertical line here, can I say this angle is nothing but called as orthogonal like angle alpha 0. This is 90. This angle is also alpha 0. So, this is alpha 0, this is 90. This angle, main angle, can I say it will be exactly 90 minus alpha 0. And if I calculate this total angle here, it will come 90 minus phi minus alpha 0. 90 minus phi minus alpha 0. Now, you apply sine rule. What is Vc divided by sine of 90 minus phi alpha 0, right? Vf that is divided by sine of alpha, sine phi and Vs divided by sine of 90 minus alpha 0 and therefore, I can say that sir, what is value is coming? What values are coming here? We can write down here with your permission. 
or it will write down here only. So I'll say that sir, VC, cutting velocity VC divided by what? Cutting velocity VC divided by sine of 90 that will be coming cos of phi minus alpha 0 is exactly equal to, it will be coming exactly equal to VF. VF divided by what? I'll say VF divided by sine phi, sine of phi. It is exactly equal to shear plane angle VS and opposite angle is what? Shear ka opposite is what? Shear opposite is what? That is cos of phi, cos of alpha 0, not phi, cos of alpha 0, right? You take VF by VC, VC if I take it here, so can I say that I'll get VF divided by VC is equal to sine phi divided by a cos of phi minus alpha 0 and sine phi divided by cos of phi minus alpha 0 is R, can I say it is coming VF by VC, VF by VC and chip thickness ratio R will be calculated by number of equation T naught divided by TC, right? Next is what? VF divided by VC, VF divided by VC. One more formula is there, L naught, sorry, LC divided by L naught, chip of thickness or length of the chip divided by original length of this particular chip and sine phi divided by cos of, cos of phi minus alpha zero, cos of phi minus alpha zero. These are all equations utilized to calculate that chip thickness ratio R. Chip thickness ratio R can be calculated by this particular way. Now let's understand merchant circle diagram. Sir, whenever we talk about any metal cutting operation, whatever the energy I'm supplying there, can I say that energy is utilized for a certain reason? And if we go and deep dive into the analysis of metal cutting, you'll understand that whatever force I'm supplying, energy I'm supplying, out of that, maximum amount of energy will get invested along the shear plane to shear takes place. And that zone is nothing but called as primary shear zone. Called as what? Primary shear zone. So maximum amount of energy 70 to LC by L0 from volume of chip. Now, sir, yes, yes, Teju, LC by L0 is volume of chip, correct. When we compare volume, width of the chip will get cancelled and T0 by TC will come LC by L0. Kya baat hai? Maza aage. Yes, absolutely correct. LC by L0, right, fine. So now, can I say maximum amount of energy will get invested here along the shear plane to shear takes place. Along what? Shear place to shear takes place. That is nothing but called as primary shear zone. So along the primary shear zone, there will be two forces will be acting. One is called as shear force FS and second is nothing but called as a normal to shear force. It is called as NS. It is called as what? NS. Called as normal shear force. Shear force FS, normal to. Shear force is the work which will be generating the shear stress along the shear plane and the shear stress when reached to the shear strength, there will be shear fracture will leads to a separation of that material chip. And normal shear stress, that is normal force which is generated because of principal stress because we know that sir, there is a all sided compression and this is nothing but because of that, there is a principal stress is developed that is NS. When the chip is generated, can I say that chip will start sliding over the rig surface and because of that, there is a resistance created because of friction. So there is a friction force is generated and there is a normal to friction force generated is called as N and therefore certain amount of energy is also required to overcome the friction that has to be supplied by system and therefore there are two shear zone comes in the picture. One is called as primary shear zone and second is called as secondary shear zone. Primary and secondary shear zone. Out of whatever energy I am supplying, 80% of energy is consumed along the primary shear zone and out of that the minimum energy that is 20 or 15 percent energy is overlap or generated or utilized to overcome friction, right fine. So there are two triangles are coming over here. There are two triangles are coming over here. If we draw properly, if we draw properly, so I'll say that sir, this is exactly a way by which I'll say that sir, this is the way by which it has to be drawn. So I'll say that sir, this will be exactly equal to a normal force NS, right fine, normal force NS and resultant of that, this is resultant R2. This is resultant R1 for a chip, equilibrium of the chip. If I take out the chip properly, if I take out the chip outside, this is exactly equal to chip. Let's say that this is the chip is coming out, right? Fine. So instead of that, I'll take this chip. This is the chip which comes out for equilibrium of the chip. Can I say that these forces will be equal and opposite to each other, right? Fine. So I'll say that this will be my resultant. This is my shear force. This will be exactly equal to normal to shear force. This is normal to shear force. This is shear force Fs. This is friction force F. And this is exactly equal to a normal to friction force that is exactly equal to N. Right fine. And the resultant of this friction and normal force is R1. And resultant of this shear force is exactly equal to R2. Can I say that these resultant forces R1 and R2 has to be between chip and the workpiece. Between chip and workpiece. Right fine. So can I say that sir? This resultant force should be collinear 
and they should be what equal and opposite in magnitude they should be of a same magnitude equal and opposite in direction they should be collinear so therefore for equilibrium of the chip this is what exactly condition comes in the picture so these are the actual forces which are getting developed in a metal cutting operation the shear force the normal to shear force a friction force and normal to friction force but now sir we can't be able to measure these forces there is one instrument called as a dynamometer dynamometer is one instrument and the dynamometer is instrument is utilized only for measurement of summation of resolved horizontal component of forces and summation of resolved vertical component of forces so it just measure fc and the ft fc and ft and that fc is nothing but what summation of resolved vertical component of forces and what is mean by ft summation of resolved horizontal component of forces horizontal component of forces only it is measured but whatever these forces are generated, these forces that is shear force, normal to shear force, friction force and normal to friction force, these are developed in a dynamic working condition of machining operation. If the machining operation stop, these forces will become zero. If the machining operation start, these forces will appear. But we don't have any machine who can directly measure what is shear force, what is normal to shear force and therefore we have only an instrument which is called as dynamometer which can only measure summation of resolved vertical component of forces which is called as fc and summation of resolved horizontal component of forces which is called as ft in this figure we know that sir cutting force in which direction cutting force acting this is my cutting force vertical and there will be a normal force to that that is called as contact force that is thrust force right fine these are forces which are measured by dynamometer resolved vertical resolved horizontal summation of that but sir these whatever forces I measure, these are measurable forces, cannot be used in analysis, whereas actual forces cannot be measured and therefore to set a relation between them, there is one relation is developed and that is nothing but called as merchant circle diagram, which is the base for solve number of numericals. Number of numericals can be solved based on this. And how these numericals can be solved? Let's say, sir, we have very simple, I have drawn one circle. This is exactly equal to, let's say that uncut chip thickness, this is my T0 and this is exactly equal to my workpiece. This is chip is flowing this direction. I understand, right? So I have just drawn here how the merchant circle is drawn and how the number of relations of merchant circle will be required. So I'll draw first of all here the line which is passing from this particular uh, rake surface. Rake surface. Can I say along the rake surface my friction force F is acting? And normal to that, can I say that normal to that there will be a normal force will be acting. There will be what? Normal force will be acting. Right, fine. So I'll say that sir here there will be normal force will be acting n normal force will be acting n and resultant of that it is exactly equal to r r is exactly the resultant of that right fine and this is exactly equal to normal this angle is exactly equal to friction angle beta i'll draw a vertical line here i'll draw a vertical line right fine if this is vertical line can i say that this angle is nothing but called as orthogonal rake angle alpha 0 is it orthogonal rake angle alpha 0 yes it is orthogonal rake angle alpha 0 comes at that particular point right fine now, sir, I'll draw a shear angle. So, shear particular triangle. This is the shear force acting along the shear plane. And there is one more force acting along that. That is nothing but called as a normal to shear force. Normal to shear force. That is called as NS. Right? Resultant is same. And now, I'll draw a horizontal force. You tell me that what is that horizontal force. And you tell me that what is vertical force. Horizontal and vertical force, you tell me. Then I'll say that, okay, you are understanding. You tell me that what is horizontal force. And what is the vertical force? You tell me that what is the horizontal and vertical force? So horizontal force is FC, right fine, FC, and this is exactly equal to FT, very correct. But sir, in the reality, my cutting force is vertical and summation of result all the vertical component of forces is a cutting force. But here, cutting force is appearing as horizontal, why? Because whenever I have drawn this particular figure, whenever I have drawn this particular figure, can I say that my figure is rotated in a counterclockwise direction by 90 degree? My figure is rotated in a counterclockwise direction. So whatever this figure is there, this figure is there. But this is rotated in what? Counterclockwise direction by 90 degree. And that's my vertical cutting force is appear horizontal. And horizontal cutting force appear vertical. But that is only for analysis purpose and drawing this merchant circle diagram. But in the reality, my vertical force is cutting, vertical force is cutting and horizontal force is thrust. You need to understand that. You need to what? Understand that. 
and therefore i say that sir you how to you how to what very very understanding that fc is cutting force horizontal thrust is this this angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector is phi right fine this shear angle is exactly oh, sorry this angle is beta if this is alpha 0 this is also exactly what alpha 0 this is alpha 0 right fine what is this angle this angle is nothing but 90 minus beta right can somebody tell me what is this angle so this is exactly equal to 90 minus 90 minus beta minus alpha 0 it is coming beta minus alpha 0 beta minus alpha 0 and from here sir from this particular there are so many equations can be calculated so many equations can be calculated my dear friend so many equations right point so i'll show you how many equations are coming let's say i'm taking one triangle just i'm highlighting i'm taking oac triangle from this OAC triangle sine of this angle sine of phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is opposite divided by hypotenuse r. So I am taking the fs, I am taking cos of this angle, I am taking a ratio, I will get one equation tan of beta minus alpha 0 divided by or tan of beta minus alpha 0, phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is equal to ns divided by fs. I will write down here what is the equation is coming? Normal force divided by a shear force is equal to tan of tan of what? Phi plus beta minus alpha 0 from this equation I will go here and, and triangle OBC this OBC I will get one equation that is tan of beta minus alpha 0 can I say everywhere we have to use that that is called as FT divided by FC FT divided by FC this is the highlighted point of this discussion where maximum number of time this equation is utilized for analysis tan of beta minus alpha 0 is equal to FT divided by FC and now from this this friction triangle can I say that my equation is tan of beta is exactly good what f divided by n and friction divided by normal force is nothing but coefficient of friction mu which comes in the picture. These are all the three equations required while solving numericals. All the equations tan of beta minus alpha 0 or sorry tan of beta is exactly good m by n. So if question he mentioned horizontal and vertical forces then by magnitude can we take no 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 Teju don't do that mistake. If it is mentioned in the problem very excellent question as asked by this boy let's say if it is mentioned horizontal cutting force and I am going to come to that point now horizontal cutting force is 100 so when it is given horizontal it is always thrust nothing to matter thrust is always horizontal 100 has to be thrust right and when cutting is given so I have to take cutting is exactly equal to 200 because there is one equation is coming called as Cronenberg's equation while calculating of friction coefficient of friction mu because for normally my cutting force is greater than thrust force accepted but there are certain special cases where my thrust force becomes greater than cutting force and where this equation cannot be used for calculation of friction that is tan of beta minus alpha 0 is equal to fd by fc if i use this equation where my thrust force is greater than cutting force my value of friction angle beta will get greater than 45 degree and value of coefficient of friction mu becomes greater than 1 now you tell me that is it possible to have a coefficient of friction mu greater than 1 no and therefore there is one equation is developed called as a cronenberg's equation and that Cronenberg equation tell me that mu is exactly equal to ln 1 by r divided by ln 1 by r divided by phi by 2 minus alpha 0 divided by what phi by 2 minus alpha 0 this equation is nothing but called as Cronenberg's equation it has to be only utilized when my thrust force becomes greater than my cutting force because whatever conventional equation we have written that equation is failed because my thrust force is greater than cutting force and because of that by that analysis my friction angle beta exceeds 45 degree and coefficient of friction mu becomes greater than 1. In such case, my classical friction theorem or a Cronenberg's equation is utilized. That is exactly mu is equal to ln 1 by r divided by pi by 2 minus alpha 0. r is nothing but chip thickness ratio and alpha 0 is nothing but rake angle of the tool. Alpha 0 is exactly equal to rake angle of the tool. Right fine. Rake angle of the tool comes in the picture. And now sir, we can write down this, this Cronenberg's equation. What is Cronenberg's equation? That is what exactly written mu is equal to ln 1 by r divided by pi by 2 minus alpha 0 pi by 2 minus alpha 0 are you accepting everybody yes and sir by this particular uh, the triangle or this merchant circle diagram can i say that all the values can be compared there right fine you can say r is exactly ft by sin lambda r so can i say that sir directly i'll write down this is the equation normal force divided by sin of phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is coming shear force cos of phi plus beta what is from where that that's that merchant circle diagram i have taken ft divided by sine of phi beta minus fc divided by this these are all the values but you don't mug up it just go to this particular merchant circle diagram we can every say that sir this is this is the angle what is that 
5 plus beta minus alpha 0. So, I will say sine of 5 plus beta minus alpha 0 is equal to what? This normal force, normal force divided by R, normal force divided by R, R will take to the right side. This sine of 5 plus beta minus alpha, so it will come Fs divided by sine of opposite angle. Fs divided by the, the sine of opposite angle. So, this is the way by which you have to remember. Don't mug up that. Chip reduction ratio is inverse of chip thickness. Yes, chip reduction ratio is inverse. So, therefore, this R is chip thickness ratio, this 1 by R is nothing but a R dash that is chip reduction coefficient that is 1 by R comes in the picture. 1 by R comes in the picture. But now, my dear friends, this is all the merchant circle diagram. We understand merchant circle diagram and these relations you can calculate. I don't have any problem into that. But these relations are not sufficient to calculate answer and therefore some other values are also required. Other equations also required. And now every time we are talking about merchant circle diagram for positive rake angle. But now you tell me that how the merchant circle diagram will come for zero degree rake angle. Let's say alpha zero is equal to zero. Let's draw the merchant circle diagram. If it is zero, I'll say that sir here. What is orthogonal rake angle? Alpha zero is zero. This is zero. Okay, fine. Let's draw and discuss that. This is the question is expected now. So this is the direction where my friction force F is acting normal to that. I'll say that normal force will be acting normal to that. Which force is acting? I'll say normal force will be acting. The resultant force is exactly with this, right? Hypotenuse is my resultant. This is the shear force that is exactly equal to Fs. Now this is normal to shear force, which is exactly equal to Ns. It is exactly equal to what? Ns. Horizontal force is exactly equal to my cutting force. Horizontal force is exactly equal to cutting force. And vertical force is exactly equal to my thrust force. It is exactly equal to thrust force. This is nothing but a merchant circle diagram for a zero degree rectangle. Now you tell me that for zero degree rectangle merchant circle, for zero degree rectangle merchant circle, can I say that my cutting force FC will be exactly equal to normal force? Cutting force FC is exactly normal force. Can I say that my cutting force FC will be normal to my friction force? Is it my cutting force normal to friction force? Is it my cutting force normal to friction force? This statement is given in the problem. If my cutting force is normal to friction force, calculate blah, blah, blah. We need to understand that boss, cutting force will be only normal to friction force when my orthogonal rake angle 0, 0, 0. If orthogonal rake angle is not 0, this cannot be done. This cannot be done. Are you accepting everyone, my dear friend? Yes. So, cutting force is exactly normal force. Cutting force is a normal to friction force. In the same manner, can I say thrust force will be exactly equal to friction force? Thrust force exactly equal to friction force and can I say thrust force will be normal to normal force and please remember that zero degree rake angle that is called as a that is called as a merchant circle diagram for zero degree rake angle right fine. Sir how to solve use Ft greater than Fc Vijay Sai let's see very simple we have one analysis series also where we will going to solve numericals let's see whenever in the problem whenever in the problem if the problem in the problem. I will explain this very interesting question is asked in the problem if my cutting force is given exactly equal to 300 Newton and my thrust force is given exactly equal to 500 Newton. So therefore here what happens my thrust force is greater than cutting force. Now if I ask calculate coefficient of friction mu, calculate coefficient of friction mu that means we have to calculate friction angle beta because I know that mu is exactly equal to tan beta that's the relation that means for calculation of coefficient of friction mu we have to calculate friction angle beta then only we'll be able to calculate mu value and there is one formula tan of just now we have discussed from merchant circle diagram tan of beta minus alpha is exactly equal to ft divided by fc now if I use this you'll get the value of beta which is greater than 45 degree and then you will get the value of mu which is greater than 1 which means that this equation is failed because coefficient of friction mu cannot be greater than 1. So directly you have to go and use this Kronberg equation where mu is equal to ln 1 by r pi by 2 minus alpha 0 r is chip thickness ratio alpha 0 is rectangle and you will get value of mu that will be definitely less than 1 and that will be exactly answer. So how to solve this problem only you have to check whether the ft is greater or fc is greater. If fc is greater normal if ft is greater Kronenberg's equation has to be used. Cronenberg equation has to be used directly without a problem, without a problem, you have to use it. Is it okay? Yes, I hope so you are understanding this, right? Fine. Now, sir, there are so many equations we have developed where we, uh, you must have heard that the cutting force Fc is calculated in terms of shear force Fs and Ns and then thrust force Ft is also calculated in terms of Fs and Ns and this is derivation is given. Based on that, my equation is coming. What is that? Cutting force Fc is equal to normal force normal to shear force into sin phi plus fs into cos phi into what cos phi classical theorem 
that is also called as classical theorem right fine next equation is coming ft i'll write down here ft is equal to normal shear force into cos phi minus shear force into a sin phi these all the equation will be required while solving the greater best numerical if you want to uh, take a by chance then you can only concentrate on the merchant circle diagram but there is a chance that question can come without these equations the the values cannot be calculated now again fc and fc in terms of this particular friction and normal force so i'll say fc is equal to f into sine of alpha 0 n into cos of alpha 0 and next equation is coming ft is exactly equal to f into a cos of alpha 0 minus n into a sine of alpha 0 sine of alpha 0 in my telegram channel these notes are there every derivation is there if required you can go through like that and this is summary which is drawn in front of you this is exactly equal to summary is drawn in front of you what is that basically fc is exactly equal to fs into cos phi ns into sin phi ft is equal to ns into cos phi minus fs into sin phi that is fc and ft are calculated in terms of fs and ns and here fc and ft are calculated in terms of friction force and normal force even if you want to skip these formulas but whatever formulas i am going to discuss now these formulas cannot be skipped because these four formulas i'll give you one hint by which you can be able to remember that for a longer period of time and these are most important whatever previous four formulas you can give a skip okay you don't want to remember that it's okay but this formula that is shear force in terms of fc and ft because in every numerical cutting force and normal force is to be given cutting force 100 percent is to be given normal force or thrust force is given and based on that shear force and normal to shear force has to be calculated based on that so therefore what is the formula is coming first of all we'll go through that and then i'll give, give you a hint so i'll say that shear force is equal to fc into cos of phi minus ft into sin phi right fine then i'll say ns is equal to fc into sin phi plus ft into cos phi right fine and in the same manner there is one more f into fc into sin phi n alpha 0 plus ft into cos of alpha 0 and i'll say that n is equal to fc into cos of alpha 0 minus ft into sin of alpha 0 right fine I'll give you a hint. How? What is exactly? What is this force? Normal to shear force. What is this force? This is exactly equal to my shear force. What is this force? Friction force F. What is this force? Normal force. Right, fine. This angle is nothing but what? Shear plane angle phi. Right, fine. This angle is what? Friction angle beta. And this angle is nothing but called as A alpha 0, alpha 0, alpha 0. Right, fine. Now, I'll write down very simply. First of all, I'll go like this. I'll go like this. What is that? Shear force. Then I'll go clockwise normal force. Then I'll go here, then friction force. And then I'll go here, normal force. So I'll write down here. Normal to shear force. They go, kitna beautiful hint. Normal to shear force. Okay, fine. Then what? Shear force Fs. Okay. Then what? Friction force F. Then what? Normal force. How exactly? Very important, right? Derivative strength. Right, fine. How exactly it is there? So today night practice session is there. We'll see that. How exactly we can do? Right, fine. Now, I'll say that normal to shear force, that is normal to shear force, then what is coming clockwise, shear force, then friction force, and normal force, right, fine. Now, I'll write down FC, FT, okay, fine, FC, FT, FC, FT, FC, FT, okay, fine. Then, we'll write down sine, because we know that, sir, whenever I talk about normal and shear force, shear force and normal to shear force. Can I say that that phi angle is related to that? Because we know that angle made by shear plane with cutting velocity vector is a shear plane angle phi. That means this triangle and this force are associated to phi angle. So I'll write out here sine phi. After that, it is cos phi. After that, word, cos phi. This cos phi, you take it here. So I'll write on cos phi, right? And then after that, next is what? Sine phi. Not what? Sine phi. This sine phi, you take it here. Sine phi. Then after that, a cos phi. This cos phi, you take it here. Cos phi. Sorry, not cos phi, right? Not cos phi, not cos phi. Because whenever you talk about friction force and normal force, can I say that when chip is started sliding, this is the chip, can I say the chip is sliding over the rig surface? And when the chip is sliding, there is a friction takes place. Now, can I say that which angle comes in the picture? Orthogonal leg angle alpha 0 is coming there. Alpha 0 is coming in the picture. So I'll write down alpha 0, alpha 0, cos of alpha 0, and sine of alpha 0. Is it true? Yes. And Shiddat se here go plus, minus, plus, minus can you remember this formula like this way alpha zero can you remember this formulas right what is that you have to start with here you have to start with what normal to shear force then go to 
frictional force or shear force then friction force normal force right fine fcft 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 sin phi cos phi take it cos sin sin cos cos sin plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus you can go and check these formulas are absolutely correct whatever we have discussed is there any doubt in this trick is there any doubt in this particular trick whatever we have discussed are you understanding and following how exactly these formulas has to be there fc into sin of alpha 0 plus ft into cos of alpha 0 fc into cos of alpha 0 minus ft into sin of alpha 0 yes ns if fs derivative if ns if fs previous formulas previous formulas can be get a skip but these four formulas are required because normal force uh, shear force normal to shear force friction force and normal force these required for calculation yeah 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 derivative of fs is a right fine derivative differentiation of sin is cos cos is what minus sin absolutely correct kya baat hai teju derivative of a ns is fs right fcft sin ka derivative cos cos ka derivative is minus sin kya baat hai badhiya superb superb teju bhai right very correct ye trick aapko yaad rahega everybody will remember this trick very very important trick right and this trick will give you mark now this formula just to remember merchant circle dry karo kya hai ns fs this this right great yes now sir whenever we talk about now machining operation we will always try to uh, perform this machining operation with minimum energy right fine and therefore the merchants has analyzed and calculated one minimum equation that is called as a merchants minimum energy equation merchants minimum energy equation and that merchants minimum energy equation is coming exactly equal to 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree this is called as merchant's minimum energy equation or equation for minimum energy minimum power minimum forces sir we can convert into matrix also yes sir yes vijay sai we can also convert into matrix also very correct right right so this equation is called as 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is what the minimum power consumption minimum energy consumption minimum forces sometimes it is called as merchant's first solution also it is called as what Merchant first solution. Sometimes it is written in gate examination. By merchant's first solution, calculate this. When I say merchant first solution, that means it is a minimum energy equation 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree. Now, sir, I want to understand one thing. Along the shear plane, there is a shear force acting. And because of that shear force, there is a shear stress is developed. So, if I ask you that, calculate the magnitude of shear stress. So, I will say magnitude of shear stress is exactly equal to shear force divided by shear area. Shear force divided by shear area. Shear force divided, and what is shear area? Already we calculated T naught into W divided by sin phi. So therefore, shear force, therefore I'll write down here, shear force is exactly equal to a shear stress into T naught into W divided by a sin phi. Right, fine. So sometimes question will come, calculate shear stress. We can calculate shear stress, shear force divided by shear area. This shear area, boss, this is my shear area. That is length of the shear plane multiplied by width of the chip. In the same manner, on this particular plane, there is a normal force also acting. This is NS is also acting. And because of the normal force, normal stress will be get developed. Calculate the magnitude of normal stress. So, magnitude of normal stress is exactly equal to normal force NS divided by shear area. Again, I will say normal stress is coming exactly equal to NS into sin phi divided by T naught into W. T naught into W. And whatever energy I am supplying, can I say that out of the total energy, some energy is required for sharing or some energy is required for overcoming friction. Therefore, I'll say that total energy is exactly equal to sharing energy plus friction energy. Total energy is exactly equal to sharing energy plus friction energy. How much is total energy? We know that rate of consumption of energy is called as power. Total energy is exactly equal to Fc into Vc. Sharing energy. What is the sharing force? Shear force Fs. Along the shear plane, the velocity is shear velocity Vs plus friction energy F into chief flow velocity. This is the equation can be utilized for solving number of numericals. Right, fine. The total energy that is supplied for metal cutting operation, out of that some energy utilized for sharing and some energy is utilized for friction. Overcoming friction comes at that particular point at that particular point. Right, fine. And therefore, I will say that sir, 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is merchant's first solution for minimum energy consumption. Merchant's first solution for minimum energy consumption. Right, fine. What is that? 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is exactly 90 degree. 2 phi plus beta 
minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree. Now, sir, I have to just give you a hint while solving numerical how to use this equation. That's the most important thing. How to use that 2 pi plus beta minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree. Generally, we are interested to calculate friction or shear plane angle phi or some value that is given by merchant's minimum energy equation calculate this this which means that i have to use this 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 2 pi plus beta minus alpha 0 and generally this equation is utilized for calculation of shear plane angle shear plane angle phi because this alpha 0 is tool geometry given in the problem friction angle beta can be calculated by previous equation and then he is asking us to calculate phi but that's why shear plane angle phi has a very interesting result on an impact on my metal cutting operation and what is that you need to understand here very interestingly Sir, I am selecting two particular uh, figures here where you need to understand that for both the cases uncut chip thickness T0 is same. For both the cases uncut chip thickness T0 is same. For one case, the orthogonal leg angle alpha 0 is 0 degree and for second case, we have a positive orthogonal leg angle alpha positive leg angle is there. This is my, my tool is there, right fine. This is exactly equal to my tool is there. You concentrate here and understand this is my tool positive leg angle and this is nothing but a tool which has a 90 degree leg angle. This is nothing but what a 90 degree rake angle is there. When my tool is 90 degree rake angle, sorry, not 90 degree, tool rake angle is zero. So when the rake angle is less, because there are three ways by tool can be having rake angle, positive rake angle, zero degree rake angle and negative rake angle. So for zero degree rake angle, can I say that shear plane angle phi 2 is very less and the length of the shear plane that is called as length of the shear plane is very greater. If the length of the shear plane is greater, can I say that which implies that area of the shear plane will be also greater? If the area of shear plane is greater, can I say force required, power required for shearing takes place will be also greater because same depth of cut is there. But for same depth of cut, when my rake angle is zero, when rake angle is less, my 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 shear plane angle phi is less. If the shear plane angle phi is less, can I say length of the shear plane is greater, area of the shear plane is greater. So if the more area we have to shear, more force, more power, more energy, more force, more power, more energy. If my positive rake angle is there, if the rake angle is increasing, the orthogonal rake angle is increasing. Can I say shear plane angle phi 1 will also increase this? If the shear plane angle phi 1 increases, length of the shear plane LS, can I say it will be less? If the length of shear plane is less, area of the shear plane will be less. Force and power required will be also less. So can I say that generally in a metal cutting operation, can I say that more rake angle of the tool will always give you less energy? Rake angle of the tool will be as maximum as possible so that my energy and power consumption will be as minimum in that particular case. So therefore, I'll say that, sir, in which cases the rake angle of the tool will be greater. So if I increasing rake angle, you say that, okay, rake angle, I am increasing, 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 and this is my tool I'm selecting. This is my tool. But if I'm increasing my rake angle by that drastic, can I say that strength of the tool will reduce drastically? My strength of the tool will reduce so drastically. And if my strength of the tool will reduce drastically, my tool might get break immediately. My tool might get break immediately at that particular location. And therefore, I'll say that, sir, it's very, very important that, sir, Beyond certain limit, my value of rake angle cannot be increased. And therefore, maximum value of rake angle could be exactly equal to 45 degree. Maximum value of rake angle could be selected is exactly what 45 degree. Beyond that, sir, beyond that, tool sharpness will increase. But my strength of the tool will reduce. So, rake angle cannot be greater than 45 degree. Right, fine. Now, sir, it's very simple. I have 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0. So, if I write down here, 2 phi will come exactly. 2 phi will be exactly. What is that? 90 degree will be there. This beta, I'll take it to the left hand side, right hand side. It will come exactly equal to negative and alpha will come exactly positive. Now, this phi value I require greater. So, in which case phi value will be, will be greater when alpha 0 will be greater and beta value has to be less. So, if the friction angle beta is less and orthogonal leg angle alpha 0 is greater, can I say that phi angle will be greater? If the phi angle is greater, force, power, energy consumption will be reduced. Force, power and energy consumption is will be, will be less. So, now... In which cases friction hull friction angle beta has to be less? So we have to use the lubricant. If I use the lubricant during the metal cutting operation, so cheap tool interface, whatever friction is generated, it will reduce. And if the friction is reducing, friction angle beta will be less. How to increase the orthogonal rake angle alpha 0? We have to design the tool in a proper manner which has greater value of this orthogonal rake angle alpha 0. And therefore, I'll say that, sir, the alpha 0 is the rake angle can be increased by proper tool designing and beta friction angle can be reduced by providing the lubrication by providing lubrication right fine now most important highlighted point here tips you have to download and understand what is that tip sir when to use this merchant circle diagram when to use this merchant circle diagram or when to use first solution it has to be used when it is clearly mentioned in the problem 
by merchants for solution for minimum energy minimum power consumption calculate this value by default use 25 plus beta minus alpha 0 by default you have to use that if 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 nothing is mentioned in the problem but there is no alternative way available with me to solve that numerical listen carefully if there is no other way left out to calculate the shear pin angle phi or other value then i have to assume the minimum energy condition and i have to use 25 plus beta minus alpha 0 this equation is utilized for calculation of phi and friction angle beta generally when when it is given in the problem use merchant first solution use minimum energy condition use minimum power consumption minimum forces we have to use that otherwise when you have left with no other option we can't able to calculate the answer without this and therefore in that case also you have to use 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 can be utilized at that particular point can be utilized at that particular point is it okay my dear friends is it okay my dear friends yes you have to utilize that at that particular point right fine this is what exactly way by which merchant circle diagram can be utilized right fine now, sir, there was one more scientist whose name is Leon Schaffer. They also tried to uh, derive the equation of merchants and minimum energy equation, but they failed. They followed a slip line theory and they come across with one more equation. And that is nothing but called as Lee and Schaffer's equation for minimum energy condition. And that is exactly 5 plus beta minus alpha 0 is 45 degree. How to remember that? You just know that 2 5 plus beta minus alpha 0 is 90 degree. You divide here by 2, you divide here by 2, you'll get 5 plus beta minus alpha 0 is exactly to 45 degree and this is nothing but called as Lee and Schaffer's equation for minimum energy. Where, where what? When R is not mentioned, the chip thickness ratio will be calculated. Chip thickness ratio will be calculated by number of ways, whatever is the way by which required. Right? Right? Okay, fine. Now, sir, there is a one more that is nothing but called as machining constant. Sometimes the question is coming, calculate machining constant. What is machining constant? Machining constant CM is exactly 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is nothing but called as machining constant. It is calculated from merchant second solution. But we don't require to go through. Just remember that this 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 that we calculated from merchant's equation that is nothing but summation of these angles in that format is called as machining constant CM. If question comes, we can be able to calculate that. Now, very interesting and most of the questions are coming in this called as specific energy in machining. What is specific energy? In simple language, the amount of energy required to remove unit volume of material, amount of energy required to remove unit volume of material is nothing but called as specific energy. What is that? Amount of energy required. What is that amount of energy required? Amount of energy required in joule to remove unit volume of material mm cube, joule per mm cube is nothing but called as specific energy. Specific energy and specific cutting energy can be written by the formula power divided by MRR. What is the formula? Power divided by MRR. Please remember that everywhere we have to use it. Power divided by MRR. What is the power? FC into VC. FC into VC is power. What is material removal rate? Feed into depth of cut into cutting velocity. Power unit. What is the power? Watt. Watt is nothing but amount of energy consumed per second. Joule per second is power. Material removal rate. Mm cube per second. So I will say mm cube per second. So this second second will get cancelled. So unit will come joule per mm cube. So specific cutting energy formula is power divided by MRR. If I cancel this VC and if I cancel this VC, the unit will come cutting force is Newton. Feed is millimeter, depth of cut is millimeter, mm square. So Newton per mm square, that's what is called a specific cutting pressure also. It is also called as what? Specific cutting pressure. Is the Lee expression important? Sometimes it might be asked in examination. Lee and Schaffer's equation. You remember a simple way. You don't require to panic. Slip line theory is utilized by Lee and Schaffer equation and that equation is calculated 2 phi plus beta minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 degree for what merchant's equation you divided by 2 where is number where is the number in the 2 phi is number 90 is number for that number you divided by 2 i'll get phi plus beta as it is minus alpha 0 is equal to 90 divided by 2 45 degree 45 degree 45 degree are you accepting everyone 45 degree 45 degree this is the way by which you can remember for longer period of time right longer period of time can be remember this is the way so this specific cutting energy can be also called a specific cutting pressure. One more thing I want to interestedly hear, specific cutting energy may, most of the time students are doing a mistake while calculation. Whenever I want to put the value of VC, can I say that sir, Newton into meter is joule. So cutting velocity unit has to be meter per second in the numerator. Cutting velocity unit is what? Meter per second. But in the denominator, denominator my unit is what? mm cube per second. That means speed has to be mm. 
डेप्थ ऑफ कट एस्टू बी एम एम बट कटिंग वेलासिटी इज एम एम पर सेकेंड एम एम पर सेकेंड डू अंडरस्टैंड माई डियर फ्रेंड्स प्लीज कॉन्सेंट्रेट हियर एट द न्यूमरेटर यूनिट ऑफ कटिंग वेलासिटी मीटर पर सेकेंड बट एट द डिनोमिनेटर यूनिट ऑफ कटिंग वेलासिटी इज एम एम पर सेकेंड आर यू एक्सेप्टिंग माई डियर फ्रेंड प्लीज कमेंट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स राइट Please write in the comment box. Are you accepting, following? Is it helpful, not helpful, or wasting of time? Right, right. All the fundamentals that we all learn in the best possible manner are getting revised. I know that. Yes, we are all rankers, potential rankers. We want four na hai, bhai. It's time below hundred. That's what exactly we are catching. Right, Vijay, Sai, Avinash, Mallesh. Right. Is it helpful, my dear friend? The way we are we are discussing. Please write down in the comment box so that I'll understand which mechanical subject you want to practice more. Tom, Som, MD, full complete. Forty-nine votes are there. Fifty-nine. Okay, fine. Ajay Krishna, yes, yes, yes. Fine, fine. We'll go on and quickly. Now, specific energy for sharing also come, sir. Specific energy for sharing is very simple now. That is F S. That is nothing but shear force multiplied by a shear velocity. That is a shearing power. Sharing power divided by material demolded that is T naught into W into W T C is it true? Yes, very helpful. Right, fine. So I'll say that sir, this is specific energy for sharing and specific energy friction is F into V F that is called as frictional energy, frictional power. This is frictional power, frictional power divided by M R R. Right, frictional power divided by M R R. And this is a sharing power, sharing power, sharing power. Divided by M R R, sharing power divided by M R R. Is it true? Yes. So our P A, a production engineering mechanical syllabus, honestly speaking, from my heart, uh, not sufficient. Honestly speaking, because uh, as far as P I paper is concerned, a production has almost a weightage of twenty five marks. Out of hundred marks, twenty five marks to twenty three marks of questions are coming on production. And simultaneously, as far as industrial engineering is concerned, uh, there are I think 20, 25. So production and industrial itself is consisting of 40, 45 marks, or more than that even, more than that even, right? Fine, more than that even, right? Now we'll talk about tool failure. We know that there are so many failure of the tool is coming, right? Fine. So I'll tell you in a simple manner what is required for get examination in simple manner. Sir, whenever the wear takes place on the rake surface, that is called the rake wear. And whenever the wear takes place on the flank surface, that is called as flank wear. Flank wear and the wear takes place on the rake surface. But out of that, there are number of reasons are there for that. We are not interested into that. We'll just go and talk about a very simple tool life. Now the tool life is basically mentioned by number of ways. The first basic way is nothing but the time between two successive regrinds. Time between two successive regrinds is nothing but called as tool life. So this actual machining time. Between two successive regrinds. Suppose I am selecting one tool, engage in the machining operation, right? And I have to measure and calculate and and measure what the machining time. And when it is failed, I I directly don't go and and change that particular tool. We go and regrind that tool, and then again I use that so that my cost of machining will be reduced, cost of that tooling will be reduced. And therefore, I'll simply say that tool life, tool life equation or tool life is measured by actual machining time, and that is measured in term terms of what minute. Minute is the unit in which it is measured. But during the mass production, it has been observed that very very small operation we are doing on a number of components and many number of components we manufactured before the failure of the tool. So during the mass production, it is observed and calculated tool life the number of tools produced or manufactured between two successive regrinding operation. It is called as tool life and that is nothing but major in times of in terms of how many number of components we are manufacturing and therefore it is given in the terms of number. So number has no unit. Number has no unit. How many number of components? Produced between two successive regrinds, it is nothing but called as tool life. And whenever we are interested to manufacture large size of component, in that case there might be chances that how much volume of material demolition takes place between two successive regrinds or before the failure of the tool. This is the way by which tool life is given, and that is nothing but measured in terms of what how much volume of material demolition takes place. That is called as mm cube is volume. mm cube is volume. mm cube is the volume. This is nothing but called as a volume. This is called as Mm cube is a volume. Mm cube is the volume comes in the picture. So there are three ways by which tool life can be measured. 
so how much time actual time between two successive regrinds measured in minute how many number of components manufactured between between two successive failure or regrinding measured in terms of number right fine and how much volume of material removal takes place between two successive regrinds that is nothing but calculated based on mmq this is the way by which true life is being developed now sir there are so many factors that are find out ki what are the factors by which true life is influenced and taylor has developed first equation called as taylor's true life equation and in that it has experience that cutting velocity has maximum impact on my tool life cutting velocity has maximum impact on my tool life and he has developed first equation that is called as v into t to the power of n is exactly equal to c here v is nothing but called as cutting velocity he is nothing but called as cutting velocity in mm per minute per minute right cutting velocity mm per minute t is nothing but tool life measured in minute c is nothing but called as taylor's constant it is nothing but a cutting velocity for 1 minute tool life and therefore it is also having a unit of mm per minute it is even a constant but it is what cutting velocity for 1 minute tool life so it is also having a unit of mm per minute but it is called as taylor's constant yeah most important concept and n is nothing but called as taylor's exponent the taylor's exponent small n value is ranging from less than point less than 1 and greater than greater than 0 less than 1 greater than 0 that is taylor's tool life exponent or taylor's exponent and this exponent value n depending upon a material of the tool whatever selected for a different different material taylor exponent n value will be different whereas taylor's constant c depends upon overall conditions of this particular machining that means if i use the lubricant if i change the parameter c value will be changed right c will be depending upon machining conditions whereas small n depends on the material property of the tool that is selected for machining operation but later period of time he has observed that it is not only a cutting velocity but other parameters also influence and has a influence on the tool life and therefore he has developed modified taylor's tool life equation and that modified taylor's tool life equation is coming in the picture v into t to the power of n into feed to the power of p into a depth of cut to the power of q is exactly to see it is called as a modified taylor's tool life equation where f stands for feed s stands for what feed in mm per mm per revolution d stands for a depth of cut in mm depth of cut in what mm again this p and q are nothing but called as exponent these are called as what exponent and again their value is less than 1 exponent and c is again constant but in this formula also the cutting velocity value v has to be put in mm per minute mm per minute and tool life value has to be put in mm please understand that it is a very sensitive of units without units you can't do anything so therefore i'll say that v has to be mm per minute tool life t has to be in mm a minute feed has to be in mm per revolution depth of cut has to be in mm and don't worry that feed and depth of cut i am considering in mm uh, per revolution or mm right fine and cutting velocity v has to be mentioned in oh i am sorry here cutting velocity has to be mentioned in what meter per minute not mm i am sorry cutting velocity has to be mentioned in meter per minute meter per minute not mm per minute not mm per minute meter per minute i am sorry this is meter per minute is it accepted everyone meter per minute cutting velocity tool tool life me kaun sa hai what is the what is the unit by which it is mentioned it is meter per minute it's not mm per minute meter per minute now we'll ask the what is that feed is in mm or depth of cut is in mm so whenever that toler got it sir all revise right fine okay fine this is modified taylor's tool life equation comes in the picture right fine now we have already discussed that orthogonal rake angle cannot be greater than 45 degree it has to be maximum value 45 degrees there otherwise there will be problem comes in the picture right fine now we need to understand that a very important thing that is effect of nose radius and effect of feed on a surface finish if not meter per minute right fine effect of a feed as well as effect of nose radius now here you see that sir on the left hand side i am selecting nose radius and the right hand side i am selecting nose radius right fine now if we understand that here nose radius selected is exactly zero right and whatever nose radius it has certain value which is greater than 0 right fine so whenever nose radius is 0 sharp corner is there and because of that replica shape is produced onto work piece and therefore this is the shape is produced and this is the surface finish this is the surface quality is getting manufactured so during that this will be my peak this will be my valley this will be my peak this will be my valley this is my peak and the valley and if i measure that can i say that this is one of the method to measure the roughness of the component roughness of the body which is manufactured and this is nothing but called as a rt value can i say it is called as what rt value it is sometimes also called as h maximum peak to value this is the one way by which 
the surface roughness is measured. And now if I select a increase, if I increase the nose radius a bit up, so can I say that more subtle profile will come in the picture, more subtle profile is coming in the picture and now this will be my pick and the values, this will be my pick and the values and if I measure, measure that RT value, can I say that this RT value will be much lesser than the previous one, much lesser than the previous one which means that sir, can I say when the nose radius is increasing, R is increasing, can I say that better surface is getting produced, can I say that sir, better surface is getting produced. When the nose radius is increasing, can I say that better surface is getting produced? Better surface is getting produced. That means, can I say that sir, nose radius should not be preferred zero as, as we are generating a smoother and smoother nose radius, better quality of surface will be going to weight manufacture. Now, if so, then I am selecting nose radius like this. You say that sir, nose radius has to be greater. I am selecting such nose radius. Such nose radius of the tool is selected. If extremely greater value of nose radius is selected. Now, if I increase the node is way beyond the certain limit, can I say that there will be a no cutting operation and my tool will be simply start rubbing against the machine surface. It will start rubbing against the, the workpiece surface and my quality of surface will deteriorate drastically. Therefore, I will say that, sir, the value of nose radius should not be too high, should not be too less. It should be optimum value of nose radius should be selected. Optimum value of nose radius has to be selected. And therefore, if I draw one graph here, right, RT value against nose radius. If I select it on the R, uh, this is RT value, this is what exactly, sorry, this is what nose radius value R, right, and RT value is there. So, how the, how the surface finish, so RT value will reduced and, and again it will increase after a certain point and the optimum value of this nose radius is coming in between, that is 0.2R to 1.2R. So, nose radius will be exactly equal to optimum nose radius is 0 0.2 to 0 0.1.2. Have you heard about that? Yes, right, fine. Now, we'll talk about a influence of that with respect to feed also, with respect to feed also, how the feed is coming in the picture. Now, on the left hand side, if you see that the feed value is greater, on the right hand side, relatively feed is less. When the feed is greater, can I say that this profile is getting generated, feed is greater, feed greater hai, so this will be exactly equal to my RT value generated. This is exactly equal to maximum peak to value height is coming in the picture. This is exactly equal to my RT value comes in the picture. When the feed value is smaller, when the feed value is smaller, can I say that this is exactly equal to my RT value is coming? So can I say that, sir, if the feed value is greater, rough surface will be generated. If the feed value is smaller, smoother surface will be generated. And that we already experienced in the machining operation. Have you experienced that during the machine? Yes, sir. If the RT is greater, that means more and more rough surface. That is more pick, more deviation is there, pick in the value. More deviation is there. Which means that simple manner will say that, sir, whenever my feed value is greater, more rough surface will be generated and when the feed value is less, more subtle, more better surface quality will generate and therefore there is one formula is written, it is RT is exactly equal to F square divided by 8 into R, F square divided by 8R, F square divided by 8R, that is maximum peak to value height is a function of F and the R, function of what? Feed and the R, RT is inversely proportional to R within a certain limit. And RT is directly proportional to feed. Feed jada hai, RT will be greater. Feed less hai, RT will be less. If the nose radius is very small, problem. Very greater, problem. It has to be in an optimum range. It has to be in an optimum range. Are we accepting everyone? Yes, fine. Now, sir, we have to understand this is nose radius already we have discussed. F square divided by 8R is coming. Now, effect of end cutting edge and side cutting edge on the geometry of the surface which is getting generated effect of side cutting edge and end cutting edge on the surface finish and this is the hot topic recently so now let's see that sir i am selecting one tool which is having side cutting edge and end cutting edge what is the side cutting edge you can easily understand that sir this is exactly equal to my side cutting edge this is exactly equal to my side cutting edge this is the end cutting edge and because of the side and end cutting edge can i say this is the profile is generated this is the profile so this is my pick this is my value this pick so this is exactly equal to rt value is coming pick and value but if I select the end cutting edge value, that is CE, that is end cutting edge value is 0, generally 0. If it is 0, can I say that perfectly smooth surface will generate? Perfectly? Unless there now I have confused which formula then to use. Don't worry, just we will consider this formula and we will have all the formulas in this particular case. All the formulas will be discussed here, right? After this, all the formulas of surface finish will be revising, connected to each other. So I will say that if the end cutting is 0, but if the end cutting is 0, can I say end cutting will start rugbing against the machine surface? And therefore, end cutting edge, technically speaking, cannot be zero. I know that theoretically, if the theoretically, if end cutting edge value is zero, then the perfectly smooth surface will get produced. 
but but can i say that practically it's not possible practically it's not possible and now we know that how exactly this formula is developed now let's say that sir i am selecting this geometry that is what this is pick in the valley pick in the valley that is what rt value and by the derivation there is one derivation from the derivation we come across value that is rt is exactly equal to h that is exactly to h is equal to f divided by tan cs plus cot c right rt value maximum pick to value right that is h is exactly equal to what feed f is not force f is what feed divided by tan of cs tan of cs plus cot of c tan of cs plus what cot of c cs side cutting edge c end cutting edge that can be calculated from where asa system of tool geometry from here we can take it and feed is f so can you able to calculate rt value rt is equal to f divided by tan of cs plus cot of c and rt is maximum pick to value height but in the metrology you understand that maximum pick to value height cannot be trusted that much and therefore average roughness is calculated and therefore average roughness from that same geometry is there is one derivation and from that derivation we come across ra is equal to h by 4 ra is equal to h by 4 which is exactly equal to rt divided by 4 so average roughness will be calculated directly by rt divided by 4 rt divided by 4 and we know that rt already we have calculated that is f square divided by 8r f square divided by 8r divided by 4 divided by what 4 so therefore i'll say that sir ra is equal to f square divided by 32r 32r these are the formula ra is different rt is different i remember this like thanks for scotch yeah fine right rt by 4 or f square divided by 32r f square divided by 32r is it okay my dear friends clear as of doubt everyone please write down like the session my dear friends right so that we'll come to understand ki how exactly equal to situation comes in the picture is it okay everyone right fine so shall we take a break now metal cutting is over we'll start now machining operations we'll start what now next thing we'll start machining operation so we'll take a break of five minutes five minutes we'll take a break right after five minutes uh we'll resume is it okay let the session be on in five minutes we'll be resuming okay everyone yes if you have any suggestions you write down in the comment box also i think so metal cutting are you understanding vijay sai AM will start after machining, we will start AM. Advanced machining methods will start after AM. No worries. Machining may will talk lathe machining operation, uh, drilling machining, shaping, planing, uh, milling. These are important things will be covered. No worries. Is it helpful, my dear friend? Honestly, tell me that. Is it helping you? Because it's all for you. If there is any modification required, you can suggest me. That will be also can be done. Because the entire production in one day is very, very, very difficult. Otherwise, it will be formula revision. Uh, it's very difficult right so we'll come back after five ten minutes okay okay vijay sai we'll also discuss that no worries we'll cover entire uh, machining topic today that is non-traditional machining advanced machining and the machining that's what exactly we'll be covering right fine we'll take a break of five minutes we'll be back right fine
Hello. So we are all back, everyone. Okay, I'm audible, my friends. Yes, fine. So Teju, economics of machining is also there, but I did not include it here. Uh, these all the things are there in my uh, uh, notes. You can go and check about that also. No problem. Shajin is again started. Let's see now. Again, we'll kick start. Fine. We'll talk about now machining. Machining is also plays very important role as far as exam point of view is concerned. <laughs> yes. Fine. I think so. Okay. Okay, fine. So let's say that, sir, whenever we talk about machining, there are different kinds of uh, machining operations like a lathe machining operation, drilling machining, shaping, uh, planing, and the milling operation comes in the picture. Now, in the machine tool, there are different parts are there, right? Fine. What are the different parts? Head stock is there, tail stock is there in lathe machine. This carriage is there, cloth slide is there, tool post is there. This carriage can slide over this particular guideways with the help of this carriage wheel. And there will be headstock behind that. There will be a certain uh, prime mover system will be there. Generally, motor is selected as prime mover. And from that prime mover to this particular chuck and this particular lead screw, this rotational motion has to be sent. Rotational motion has to be sent. Because we know that, sir, without that rotating the workpiece, without rotation of workpiece in lathe machining operation, can I say that no machining operation can take place? No machining operation can take place. So prime mover is the one which will convert the electrical energy to rotational mechanical, mechanical rotational energy. And that rotational energy has to be transferred to this particular chuck and through the spindle. And once the workpiece is installed there, it will start rotating. It will what? Start rotating. Now through that chuck also, that rotational motion sometimes required should be given to this particular lead screw. Given to what? A lead screw. And therefore, there is one a mechanical transmission system is utilized. Because we know that, sir. This prime mover and the motor is installed at the bottom. You must have seen that. And this chuck spindle is somewhere away. Right, fine. And most importantly, this motor is generally start rotating with same constant RPM for which it is designed. Generally, it is the induction motor. But whenever I do the machining operation, we require different RPM of the workpiece. And therefore, we require different RPM of that particular workpiece during machining operation. So, there has to be certain transmission system developed who should be able to change the RPM of that particular spindle also. So therefore, there is one step cone pulley belt drive system is utilized. The step cone belt, belt pulley drive system. You can easily understand here, this is what exactly my spindle. Can you see that sir? This is exactly spindle which comes in the picture, right? Spindle and the workpiece is held there. And at the back side of the spindle and the chuck, there will be a, a system is developed. That is called as a, a step cone pulley drive system. A step cone pulley drive system and that is nothing but the input is taken from the motor that is prime mover and that is transferred to the spindle shaft and when the gap is greater there is a certain gear drive system also can be utilized number of transmission system gear drive system can be utilized the simple gear train compound gear train you all are aware of that particular thing right fine now whenever i'm utilizing a step cone pulley drive system you know that sir it has number of steps this is called as driver this is the driven driver shaft is prime mover and driven shaft is nothing but spindle or that particular spindle on which my chuck is installed. And now you can understand here, there are different steps are available who has different diameter of this driver shaft. Diameter different, diameter different, diameter is reducing. Now when this larger diameter shaft is engaged with the smaller diameter shaft, can I say that rotational motion of this driven shaft will increase drastically and that is same applicable over here. If this is what exactly gear is, right, who has number of teeth on the periphery, that is the number of teeth on the periphery is 100, whereas number of teeth on the, this driven shaft is 25. And these teeth are meshed to each other. Whenever a driver shaft is rotating, these teeth will get meshed. And therefore, can I say that when the driver, if driver is rotating like that, can I say that D1 will be rotating like this? And when the 25 teeth are meshed, can I say that this D1 shaft will get rotated by one complete rotation? Right? One complete rotation. And by the time, by the time, when this driver is rotating by one complete rotation, can I say that my D1 shaft will rotate by four number of times? Which type of uh, drive is mostly used in machine tool, belt or chain or gear drive? Generally, gear drive system is most preferred. Belt drive system is having a lot of problem with the slippage. For understanding point of view, you are given. But the gear train system is definitely utilized. Gear train. Gear train is the most preferred because you must have seen that whatever this uh, headstock is there, whatever that 
particular headstock is there which is nothing but called as so you must have seen that whatever headstock is there headstock you must have seen have you seen the headstock just a minute guys hello so can I say that sir chain drive system can be used but basically uh, gated you must have seen that the headstock if you open there are a number of gears are meshed there with to each other and therefore these are utilized for changing the rotational speed of this particular driven gear driven gear right fine so mechanical transmission system is utilized and generally here whatever the speed that can be generated that can be developed based on a geometric progression based on what geometric progression and whatever this belt cone pulley drive system or whatever the the gear gear turn system we have developed that gear turn system whatever we develop it will be designed for a fixed number of rpm infinite number of rpm cannot be so therefore i am selecting one example i have a uh, uh, one gear turn system who has a six number of gears six number of speed that is called a six speed gear train system is developed six speed gear train n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 and the speed of this gear train is definitely developed with the help of a geometric progression so i think minimum losses will be there in the gear drive only absolutely correct. minimum losses is there and that's why it is most preferred that's why it is a preferred at that particular point bro that's why it is preferred so now we are talking about a geometric progression is the one based on that the number of speeds in that particular gear turn system is developed or transmission system is developed and what is that the geometric progression is nothing but next speed of that gear train can be calculated by multiplying non-zero constant to the first speed and therefore it is written here in a simple manner the first speed if it is a let's say that first speed is a next speed let's say that r is nothing but that common factor by which i multiply next speed is a r next speed is a r square next speed is a r cube next speed is a r raised to power 3 that is nothing but if common ratio or that multiplying factor r, r is equal to 2 and the first speed this is exactly equal to 3 so therefore first speed is 3 next speed is 3 multiplied by 2 that is 6 next speed is what 6 multiplied by 2 is 12 next is 12 multiplied by 2 is 24 and this is the way by which what the number of speed in a gear train system can be get developed that is in a geometric progression and that r is nothing but called as a common ratio very very interesting question comes on this common ratio it is called as what common ratio what is common ratio common ratio means current speed divided by the, the, the previous speed or next speed divided by current speed is called as common ratio and that is represented by r r is called as a common ratio so what is the r here it's very simple it's very simple r is exactly if i say that n1 speed this is n1 this is n2 this is n3 this is n4 this is n5 and so on so common ratio r is exactly equal to n2 divided by n1 common ratio r is exactly equal to n3 divided by n2 and so on this is called as common ratio common ratio so i'll say that r common ratio a is the original minimum speed and n6 is nothing but a maximum speed that is developed based on geometric progression and there is one ratio is nothing but called as a speed range ratio that speed range ratio r is nothing but exactly called as maximum speed divided by minimum speed maximum speed is what this is my n max this is my n max and this is exactly equal to n minimum this is exactly n max n max minus n minimum n max minus n minimum is nothing but called a speed range what is the range of the speed so whatever minimum speed and whatever maximum speed that ratio of maximum speed divided by minimum speed is nothing but called a speed range ratio and now we have calculated n2 by n1 so r a into a that is r so we have calculated that and we multiply that so we'll get one relation and that is nothing but it's coming exactly equal to n6 by n1 is speed range ratio is equal to r to the power of n minus 1 so r that is common ratio is equal to n minus 1 truth of a speed range ratio and therefore very interesting equation is coming and this equation is utilized to solve number of numericals what is that a common ratio r is equal to n minus 1 root of n max by n minimum n max is maximum speed n minus n minimum is minimum speed that is called a speed range ratio speed range ratio where n is nothing but number of speed how many number of speeds are there in this particular number of speed number of speed is there number of speed will be there at that particular point are you accepting everyone number of speed is this this is number of speed which comes at that particular point now sir 
generally we have understood one very important concept but where the students are making a mistake that is nothing but suppose i'm doing a turning operation state turning operation by selecting some depth of cut the moment i'm selecting that body the workpiece body it will be having certain diameter let's say the diameter is exactly equal to d naught and this d naught diameter is going through a machining operation d naught diameter is going to machining operation so this larger diameter is exposed for machining operation so what is the cutting velocity the circumferential velocity of the tool or workpiece circumferential velocity of the workpiece by which is reading that is called as my cutting velocity circumferential velocity of my workpiece by which it is reading is called as cutting velocity by which it is passing over the workpiece so therefore i'll say that cutting velocity v naught is pi d n divided by 1000 or 60 also you can take it right fine now this n naught that is the r frame of the speed or speed of this particular workpiece can be calculated 1000 v divided by pi into d naught let it be now sir once one depth of cut is selected now once cut is completed now for next machining operation because we know that sir, turning operation cannot be performed in one stroke there will be multiple passes will be required in the next pass can i say next pass can i say diameter of the workpiece which is exposed for machining operation will be d1 and not d0 because d0 was the workpiece exposed for first pass but now already some depth of cut and reduction in the diameter has taken place now d1 diameter is exposed for machining operation and what is that d1 the d1 diameter will exactly equal to d0 diameter minus two times depth of cut minus two times depth of cut so if i take this figure so i'll say that sir, this is depth of cut and this is exactly the depth of cut which has to be reduced to calculate d1 it has to be reduced to calculate what a d1 and therefore i'll say that sir d1 diameter is exposed for machining operation which is less one what is cutting velocity i'll say cutting velocity vc v is exactly exactly equal to pi into d into n divided by thousand divided by what thousand now diameter has what reduce diameter has what reduce rpm is constant what will about cutting velocity can i say cutting velocity will reduce for a first machining step in a straight turning operation, cutting velocity will be higher. As the diameter keep on reducing, cutting velocity will keep on reducing continuously. But there is one unsung rule that cutting velocity throughout machining operation, however number of passes will be, should remain constant. Cutting velocity should not change. If the cutting velocity is changing, my machining time will change, which not be accepted. And therefore, reduction in the diameter to remain this cutting velocity constant, can I say that my RPM has to increase? Do you understand that RPM has to increase there? RPM has to increase. So as the diameter is reducing, that reduction in the diameter has to be compensated by increasing the velocity by increasing velocity and therefore can i say that sir v naught and v1 velocity if we want to remain same therefore can i say that this v naught and v1 velocity same can i say next stage my rpm has to increase n1 has to increase and therefore in each stage that rpm will keep on changing rpm will keep on changing as far as machining operation is concerned machining operation is concerned now here i calculated n naught n naught i'll calculate n1 right fine d1 diameter here and d0 diameter here right fine and based on that we can simplify this equation and we can calculate one more equation that is common ratio you must have used that common ratio r is equal to n minus one root of have you heard about that n minus one root of instead of that n max by n minimum now it can be replaced by d max divided by d minimum d max divided by what d minimum because now we are calculated when the rpm will be raised when the rpm will be minimum when the rpm will be minimum when the diameter is maximum so in that case my rpm will be minimum during the machining operation when the rpm will be maximum when the diameter will be less because as the diameter is reducing my rpm has to keep on increasing to compensate reduction in the diameter so my n max diameter n max speed will be there when diameter is a minimum and therefore instead of that n max by n minimum i have written these particular values and if i return these values can i say that we get a simplified equation and this is what exactly equation is coming that is also utilized to solve number of numericals on this only single problem only single formula there are number of equations or number of i would say that questions comes on examination number of questions comes on examination on this particular single formula are you accepting everyone this equation have you heard about this equation is it okay r is equal to uh, root of n minus one the root of d max divided by d minimum is it baumic right correct yes rest of the student please comment right fine so now we'll go to the machining operation directly right fine so first machining operation will take place which is nothing but called as before that we'll tell you uh, the the process parameter also here the first process parameter is called as speed right speed what is mean by speed speed here is nothing but a revolution of the workpiece 
what is the rpm by workpiece rotating it is called as a speed speed is represented by n second is nothing but and we know that as the speed will increase if the diameter keep on reducing and just now we have discussed that right now. next is called a speed when we understand that linear distance advances by my tool with respect to one complete rotation of workpiece is called a speed and the speed is mentioned in mm per revolution speed is mentioned in what mm per revolution that means you know one revolution of the workpiece how much distance my tool is advancing and sometimes this speed can be calculated in terms of speed velocity speed can be calculated in terms of speed velocity fp that is nothing but sir it is rotating by some rpm that workpiece rotating by some rpm that is n and my speed is given that is f is exactly equal to some mm per revolution right so if i want to calculate speed velocity my speed velocity f is equal to f into n speed is mm per revolution r to is revolution per minute this r revolution revolution will cancel answer is coming mm per minute that means in one minute how much tool is traveling one minute how much tool is traveling right it is nothing but called as a basically speed velocity speed velocity right and depth of cut also we understand now we will talk about a plane turning operation now sir on a simple platform there is one question comes in the picture calculate time required for machining so how to time calculate it can i say time calculation will come in the picture exactly equal to time calculation will come in the picture exactly equal to how much distance i have to travel divided by speed velocity and distance travel is length of the workpiece divided by speed velocity f into n this is the master formula by which answer can be calculated what is that how much length of the workpiece which is getting machine divided by what is the velocity by which tool is moving that is called speed velocity that is f into n speed mm per revolution n rpm will calculate time will calculate time now there will be number of passes there will be number of passes comes in the picture for one pass how much time is required multiply by number of passes and how to calculate number of passes sir so original diameter is given let's say that d not right and the final diameter we want to manufacture d1 so in each pass can i say that diameter will get reduced by two times because this is my depth of cut i am selecting this is my depth of cut i am selecting so in each pass the overall reduction in the diameter is two times overall reduction in the diameter is two times and therefore can i say that sir my my number of passes will be exactly equal to number of passes will be exactly equal to d minus d1 that is what i will say that sir this is exactly equal to a d1 diameter is coming d1 diameter is coming so can i say that sir d1 diameter is exactly equal to d not minus 2 times d d not minus what 2 times d right fine now how many passes will be required that number of passes required is exactly equal to remember passes required will be exactly equal to can i say that d not minus df divided by 2d why 2d because original diameter has to reduce to final diameter but in each pass diameter reduction takes place by 2d so 2d has to be divided to total reduction divided by 2d and if i calculate the number of passes multiply by time per pass you will get actual time of machine sometimes one more drama is coming approach and over travel if approach and over travel is neglected it's okay and if the approach and over travel is given then i'll say that sir actual distance that need to be travel is exactly equal to approach distance plus length of the workpiece plus over travel approach distance plus length of the workpiece plus exactly equal to over travel that is nothing but called as a actual distance traveled is exactly equal to approach because before start of machining operation tool has to be certain distance away called as approach right called as approach and after machining also it has to travel certain distance called as over travel right so i'll say that approach plus over travel and entire length of the workpiece that will be give me a total length of machining operation total length of machining operation is there any doubt in this this is the simplest way by which you can able to calculate right a simple time of machining operation right fine now here it's very important called as phase turn what is in a phase turning a phasing operation is phase turning and during the phase turning can i say that my tool is moving along the radial direction where the tool is moving tool is moving along right right it is moving along radial direction right that is called as a a phasing operation and in the phasing operation what happens length of the workpiece reduces length of the workpiece reduces whereas whereas what what is happening length of the workpiece reducing whereas diameter remains same nothing will happen to the diameter in the phasing operation so now here i have developed an equation for hollow disk for hollow disk it is assumed that hollow disk means what there is in internal hollow portion is there which has outer diameter and which has inside diameter this is d not and di that is internal diameter is di and outside diameter is d not and i am moving from outside diameter to inside diameter along radial direction along what radial direction i am moving and what is the time time is distance divided by velocity so let's i'm traveling dr small distance along that with the velocity is exactly equal to fn and then we do the differentiation of that and after the differentiation we got one particular equation 
and that is nothing but machining time machining time can you read that machining time is pi divided by 4 into fe into d naught square minus di square that is nothing but machining time required for a hollow disk in a facing operation in a facing operation d naught stands for outside diameter di stands for inside diameter outside diameter and inside diameter square pi divided by 4 f is nothing but feed in mm per revolution and v is nothing but cutting velocity and v has to be calculated we know that it is has to be calculated pi d into n divided by 1000 or whatever 1060 whatever the unit is required you can use that unit whatever but this is the way by which cutting velocity has to be calculated now you'll ask me a question sir if the solid disk is given then for facing operation that means inside diameter is zero put the di is in zero if the put di inside diameter is zero i'll get the equation time per pass is exactly equal to time per pass is exactly equal to that is machining time per pass is exactly equal to what pi into d square that is outside square divided by 4 into f into v 4 into f into v very interesting equation as to which 4 into f into v 4 into f into v this is the way by which answer has to be calculated this is the way by which answer has to be calculated answer has to be calculated time per pass is exactly equal to pi into d naught square divided by 4 into f into v f into v 4 into f into v is it okay everyone pi into d naught square divided by 4 into f into v solid disk right right taper turning operation now we all know that sir producing a conical shape of surface or conical shape or funnel shape of component or when uniform reduction in the diameter or uniform increase in the diameter is called a taper so therefore you can easily understand that sir i'm manufacturing this particular taper so there is one angle so if i extend these lines and wherever they are meeting wherever they are meeting if i extend this line and wherever they are meeting so whatever angle it is coming can i say that this angle is nothing but called as taper angle represented by 2 theta 2 theta so producing that taper can i say that my tool also travel in a certain inclined direction with respect to axis of the workpiece and therefore can i say that my tool post has to be rotated by a certain degree and then we can do this particular taper turning operation now i am interested here to understand what are what is the time required for machining of this particular case now therefore i am selecting one particular drama here you can easily concentrate here sir i am selecting one particular length of the body and on the length of the body there is a certain length over taper is interested to produce say certain length and that length is nothing but called as the length of the taper because on the entire length of the workpiece i am not interested to create a taper overall on the entire length out of that certain portion of the length we are interested to create a taper called as length of the taper what is what length of the taper length of the portion of the workpiece where we are interested to produce a taper called as length of taper and now this taper also nothing but reducing the diameter from given to required so this is my original diameter and this is final diameter so this material has to remove this material has to remove but this entire material cannot remove in one pass so we require number of passes one pass second pass third pass right fine so first time my tool will travel along this path second time my tool will travel like this and third time my tool will travel like this one two three is it actually everybody first time my tool is traveling like this second time my tool is traveling like this and third time my tool is traveling like this this is the way by which tool is going to travel but each time my tool is traveling can i say that different distance tool is traveling so this enlarged figure is drawn here so first time i am traveling a distance only a b next time i am traveling distance a c d and next time i am traveling distance e f every time the distance travel is changing a b a b c d and e f can i say that so every time the time required for machining will be different and machining time is exactly the length that we want to travel divided by feed velocity fb and therefore can i say that we have to calculate a machining time for first case second case and third case first step second and the third right fine so i'll say that sir here from here this is theta that is nothing but half of the taper angle because this total angle is a uh, two theta and therefore this angle is nothing but called as half of the taper angle so this will be exactly equal to half of the taper angle theta so therefore i'll calculate here from here l1 is coming exactly equal to from this is the length of the taper from here so from here i'll say that sine theta is exactly depth of cut divided by l1 so therefore i'll say that l1 is equal to d into a cosec theta d into what cosec theta l1 is exactly d into cosec theta l1 is exactly what d into cosec theta same time l2 is exactly equal to 2d into cosec theta 2d into what cosec theta likewise we have calculated everything and then we'll say that time required for first pass is this much time required for second pass is this much time required for third pass is this much that is nothing but length distance traveled divided by feed velocity length is d into cosec theta divided by fn L length is 2d into cosec theta divided by FN. and total time of machining operation is summation of all the passes so once you do the summation of all the passes 
I'll calculate and take it common. So it will come one series 1 plus 2 plus 3 and that is nothing but a n into n plus 1 divided by 2 n into n plus. So total machining time is exactly equal to d into cosec theta divided by f into n into n into n plus 1 plus 2 and what is n stands for? It is stands for a number of passes. Number of passes. It is nothing but stands for number of passes. Number of passes it comes in the picture. Number of a passes which comes at that particular point n into n plus 1 divided by 2. If the number of passes is 1, put 1. If I put 1, here it will be coming 1. n is 1, n plus 1 is 1 plus 1, 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. If number of passes is 2, you put value of 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 multiplied by 2 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that is what exactly, that is what exactly answer is coming. So therefore, you can be able to calculate total machining time at this particular point. Total machining time at this particular point. Is it crystal clear, my dear friends? How to calculate machining time as far as taper turning is concerned? And taper turning is done by number of ways. One is called as compoundress method. Second is called as tailstock offset method. A third is called as taper attachment method. And fourth is called as a form tool method. What is that? Compound rest, compound rest method, tailstock offset, taper attachment, and form tool. Out of that, only two process where the numerical comes in the picture. It is compound rest and tailstock offset. Right? Compound rest and tailstock offset. Now, what is your compound rest? You know that, sir. This is exactly your compound rest. Whatever comes above that cross thread is called as compound rest. And it is having compound swivel base. Can I say it is having compound swivel base? Like, like a tank, it can rotate any 360 degree. Right? So, whenever it is rotating, so this particular tool will travel in an inclined direction to the workpiece. And if it is traveling in inclined direction, I can be able to perform machining operation. How exactly it is done? Let's say that, sir. This is compound swiveling base. This is my tool. Now, it is being at 0 degree. So, if my tool is moving like that, it is moving parallel to workpiece. It is moving parallel to workpiece, it will perform, what is that? It will perform a straight turning operation. Now, if it is rotated by 90 degree and now my tool is moving here, can I say that it will perform my facing operation? It will perform what? Facing or face turning operation. But, but if it is inclined at certain angle and now my tool is moving, can I say it will travel like that? This is the direction it will travel. So, can I say that this portion, it will remove this portion it will remove and can i say that taper will get manufactured will it produce a taper yes it will produce a taper at that point so this is nothing but called as a taper attachment or called as compound rest method compound rest method and how the angle by which that has to be rotated the angle by which it has to be rotated can be calculated from here let's see that sir this is the taper workpiece and can i say that so this angle will be exactly equal to theta which is nothing but called as half of the taper angle half of the taper angle now this vertical line it is normal to this horizontal line and this whatever inclined line is normal to here. So, can I say this angle theta and this angle theta both are same? Can I say that both are same? This angle theta and this angle theta both are same. Both are what? Same. So, whatever the taper that we are interested to generate. Suppose I want to generate a taper angle of 30 degree. So, can I say that a compound rest swivel has to be done by theta that is exactly what 15 degree. This compound based swivel has to be rotated by what? 15 degree and then it will definitely produce a taper of total exactly equal to 30 degree. Taper will produce exactly equal to 30 degree. Is it okay everyone? Yes, I hope, I hope so you are understanding this. This is entirely which is given there. Right? Compound rest method. Next is nothing but called as a tailstock offset method. Now tailstock offset means what? This tailstock is shifted in this direction. That is nothing but called as offset. By certain distance, small amount of distance it is offset. Right? Fine. So, therefore, I'll say that, sir, it is shifted. So, whatever the distance it is shifted there, so can I say that, sir, it is nothing but called as a tail stock offset method. Tail stock offset method. Tail stock offset method. And from here, you can easily understand that this tail stock offset, that distance we have to calculate. X. Tail stock offset distance we have to calculate. And what is the way by which you have to calculate? Sir, whenever we are interested to calculate set over distance, that has to be calculated on the overall length of the workpiece. Overall length. Because I want to produce a taper on certain length that is called a taper length that might be different. But whenever I am shifting this workpiece, that tail stock is slided a little bit in this direction. Can I say entire length of the workpiece has to be selected. Entire length of the workpiece should be selected there to calculate a x value that is called a set over distance. Set over distance x value has to be calculated over the entire length. And therefore from this figure, this is theta. So I will say that sir sin theta is exactly equal to offset distance x offset distance x divided by a length of the workpiece. So, I will say that sir, offset distance is equal to L into sin theta and theta is nothing but called as what? 
theta is nothing but called as basically a half of the taper angle half of the taper angle half of the taper angle and now how to calculate taper angle half of taper angle it's very simple how to calculate taper angle let me tell you sir this is exactly equal to work is given right fine and this is exactly equal to taper we have to produce this is a taper we are interested to produce hypothetical example i am telling you uh, this is the taper we are interested to produce this is my work pieces now can i say length of the taper must be given this length is given to you right fine this is the length of the taper must be given to you and original diameter what is the original diameter d naught and what is final diameter it must be also given can i say that this diameter must be given so this is nothing but called as final diameter and we are interested to calculate taper value right taper angle so i'll draw a horizontal line so there is one right angle triangle is coming here is it right angle triangle is coming yes now you tell me that what is this distance what is this distance in right angle triangle so can i say that here this distance will be exactly equal to a outside diameter d naught minus df divided by 2 can i say that this angle is exactly equal to d naught minus df divided by 2 d naught minus df divided by 2 and from here i am interested to calculate this angle this is the half of the taper angle theta because if i extend this line if i extend this line and if i extend this line whatever the angle is coming can i say this angle is nothing but called as 2 theta out of that only half value we are calculating so here can i say that sir a tan theta is exactly equal to d naught minus df divided by 2 d naught minus df divided by 2 multiply divided by again it will come ld that is coming here so therefore length of the taper is known to us original and final diameter is known to us can we able to calculate theta yes sir that has to be calculated based on a total length or length of the taper and once you calculate theta once you calculate theta then from this particular figure this is theta calculated this is offset offset distance and this distance is nothing but total length of the workpiece this is what total length of the workpiece it is my total length of workpiece so from this figure i'll say sin theta is exactly equal to x divided by l so x is exactly equal to l into a sin theta l into what sin theta answer is coming l into sin theta answer is coming l into sin theta answer is coming is it okay but whenever we are calculating the offset distance it has to be calculated on the overall length please remember that overall length it is over all length it is what overall length of my workpiece overall length of the workpiece overall length of the workpiece is there is it okay everybody yes so these are the two methods next two methods are not at all important for get examination not required there now the gigantic process that you want to understand thread cutting have you read the thread cutting anyone let me tell you ask a simple question write it in the comment box my dear friends no one is present here please comment in the comment box yes you understood yes so now the principal idea of generating the thread cutting operation is nothing but sir right we know that all the geometry of the thread cutting so thread whenever we talk about that is one value pitch that is the linear distance between two consecutive crest point is called as pitch that is the most important thing as far as thread cutting is concerned right fine so whenever we are interested to produce a thread can i say that it's very important whether we are interested to generate right hand threads or left hand threads so what is the difference between right hand and the left hand side what is exactly equal to a uh, difference between right hand whichever the thread is slanted towards left it is called as a right hand thread the right hand whichever the thread slanted towards a left is called as right hand threads and whichever the threads are slanted towards right it is called as left hand threads so on the left hand side figure right hand threads are there and right hand side figure left hand threads are there so these are nothing but called as left hand threads if i want to generate a right hand threads work piece is rotating like this so can i say my tool has to travel from right to the left my tool has to travel from right to the left then only these right hand threads will get produced and if you want to understand that you take a paper and wrap this paper along the bottle along the bottle take a tool rotate this particular work piece along with that particular i would say that paper and move the tip of the pen in this direction the moment you will find out what is the path it will follow that is the path by which a, a thread will get generated so to generate the right hand thread that is which is slanting towards left exactly opposite right hand thread is simple 
you just see the thread in the same front direction it is slanted towards left it is right hand so for that my tool has to travel from right to the left hand side and for right hand threads or for sorry left hand threads my tool has to travel from left to the right direction left to the right direction and thread cutting operation is done with the help of a simple that is nothing but called as a universal dividing head or with the help of that uh, lead screw lead screw comes in the picture the lead screw has to be engaged automatically so my lead screw is rotating a rotational motion of lead screw converted into linear motion of this particular tool and now we have to understand is very simple that if i want to produce a pitch of 3 mm so this is the location of the tool let's say that's the this is location of the tool can you understand that this is exactly equal to correct location of the tool is right fine so now when the tool is moving from here to here that is completely in a one rotation it will move from the location one to location two again in one rotation tool move to three location again that next move that tool will move from three to four location so in a one complete rotation whatever tool is traveling can i say that that will be the pitch will going to get manufactured on the thread so whatever distance tool is traveling from here to here whatever distance it is traveling that will be the pitch generated on that particular thread and therefore can i say that sir in a reverse direction whatever the pitch that we are interested to manufacture 2 mm 3 mm 5 mm can i say that my feed given to the tool and feed given to the tool means what linear distance advances tool in a one complete rotation is called as feed linear distance advances by tool in a one complete rotation is nothing but called as feed so can i say that my feed should be exactly equal to pitch value my feed should be exactly equal to pitch value this is the bottom idea for this particular operation whenever we are interested to calculate any kind of pitch value any kind of pitch on the thread so during that thread cutting operation it's very mandatory that my tool has to give a feed and that feed given to the tool is exactly equal to feed given to the tool is exactly equal to pitch exactly equal to what pitch so come here so now can i say my spindle this is nothing but called a spindle spindle right this is nothing but called a spindle rotating by certain rpm then workpiece rotating by certain rpm because spindle on that check is installed workpiece is there now it is start rotating and once it is start rotating can i say that my tool has to advance but the tool will get advances by a uh, lead screw lead screw is attached to that particular that carriage the carriage will start moving my tool will start moving and that who will provide the the rpm to this particular lead screw again there will be one intermediate gears or change gear system is developed so that that change gear is the one who will give and drive this particular my lead screw so therefore here my spindle will be acting as my driver gear the spindle will be acting my driver gear and this lead screw shaft is acting my driven gear because it is getting drived who is driving spindle is driving whom that that particular lead screw and as the distance between that spindle and the lead screw is greater there is one intermediate gear comes in the picture that intermediate gear can be selected depending upon simple gear chain or depending upon compound gear chain simple gear chain or compound gear chain can be correct so when the spindle start rotating that intermediate gear will start rotating and then the rotational motion from this driver gear will be given to the driven gear and this driven gear will start rotating when the lead screw start rotating rotational motion of lead screw will convert into the linear motion of the tool and tool will also start moving suppose let's take an example whatever lead screw is there lead screw also has certain thread specification lead screw also has, has some, some thread specification let's see that the lead screw thread is exactly equal to 5 mm what is the lead screw thread 5 mm and assume that continuously assume that lead screw always has right hand threads lead screw threads are standard lead screw threads are always right hand and my lead screw always rotate in a uh, sorry lead screw has always always right hand threads right hand threads whereas my always workpiece will always rotate in a counter clockwise rotation you must have worked in a lathe machining operation and whenever you start performing lathe machining operation you must have seen that can i say that my tool uh, sorry my workpiece and spindle always rotating what counter clockwise rotation there are two things we need to understand here in thread cutting operation one is my workpiece is always rotated in a counterclockwise direction it is considered as a standard rotation standard rotation of workpiece is counterclockwise and thread has right hand thread as a standard rotation if it is a right hand thread so if it is rotated if it is rotating in a counterclockwise direction can i say that my tool will travel from right hand to the left hand direction right hand to the left hand direction but if my my lead is to rotate in clockwise direction clockwise direction my tool will travel from left to the right my tool will travel from left to the right and for generating generating a right hand thread can i say my tool has to travel from right to the left direction and therefore my my lead screw or my lead screw should also rotate in the same direction as that of the workpiece that is counter clockwise direction if my workpiece rotating counter clockwise my lead screw also rotating counter clockwise and my tool should travel from right to the left then only these particular threads will get manufactured that is right hand threads will get manufactured right fine suppose i want to manufacture a pitch of 5 mm i want to manufacture pitch of 5 mm 
on the thread, right? Each, each of the thread is 5M out of manufacture. Lead screw thread is also 5M. So that means, can I say that when my workpiece is rotating by one complete rotation, my tool has to advance by 5M. My tool has to advance by 5M. When the workpiece is rotating by one rotation, my tool has to advance by 5M. And same thing is applicable over here. If my workpiece rotation or tool rotation is one, and if I maintain the lead screw rotation is also one at the same time through this change gear system, can I say my lead screw will also rotate by one rotation? And that lead screw rotation will convert into linear motion of this particular tool. Tool will travel by the distance of lead. And how much is lead? Lead is exactly equal to 5 mm. So can I say that required thread of pitch of 5 mm will get manufactured. Required thread of pitch of 5 mm will get manufactured. Will get what? Manufactured. So here for that pitch to get manufactured 5 mm. So can I say that RPM of this lead screw will be exactly equal to RPM of this particular workpiece. Workpiece rotated by one rotation. Lead screw will also rotate by one rotation. But if I change the, the philosophy, if I change the drama, if I change the drama, let's take an example that I'm changing the drama. These are all the things we have been already understood, I think so. Let's take an example that a pitch value on the pitch value on the lead screw is exactly equal to a 12 mm. Pitch value is exactly equal to what? 12 mm. And the, the thread we want to manufacture of the pitch of exactly 3 mm. 3 mm pitch we want to manufacture. Right fine. And whatever intermediate change gear system is there, which is which is developed, that is what driver gear and driver gear and in intermediate gear are installed in such a way that if my spindle rotated by one rotation, my lead screw also rotated by one rotation. If the system is developed like that, then what will happen? My workpiece rotated by one rotation. In the same time, my lead screw also rotated by one rotation. And if the lead screw rotated by one rotation, my my this particular tool will travel by the distance of lead, and the lead will be exactly equal to 12 mm right now. 12 mm right now because my pitch on the lead screw is exactly 12 mm. What is the pitch here? The pitch is exactly equal to 12 mm. 12 mm pitch is there. So how much exactly equal to thread? Thread pitch will get manufactured. The thread will get manufactured with the pitch of 12 mm. I want to manufacture 3 mm pitch. So it will be wrong. So can I say that sir? When my workpiece is rotating one complete rotation by the same time, my tool has to advance only by 3 mm. Only 3 mm. And so if we into one advance only by 3 mm, that means can I say that my lead screw should rotate by only one fourth of rotation. If it rotate by one complete rotation, tool will advance by, by 12 mm. But I want to advance the tool only by one fourth of the 12. That is exactly 3 mm. That means can I say that I have to develop such a change gear system here. Such a change gear system in such a way that let the work be rotated by one rotation. But my lead screw should rotate by only one fourth of rotation. And if my lead is rotated only by 1.4, my tool will advance by only 3 mm. When the workpiece is rotated by one complete evolution, the pitch will get manufactured of 3 mm. Pitch will get manufactured by 3 mm. Are you accepting everyone? This drama, you are you accepting everyone this drama? Whatever I am talking about. Please write down in the comment box this drama. So can I say rotation of this particular lead screw should be one fourth of the rotation of this particular, uh, I would say that a spindle. And therefore, can I say that sir? There is a, a gear trend is developed. There is there is a gear ratio, right? Fine. I'll say that sir. Gear ratio. What is the gear ratio? Gear ratio is nothing but a the spindle uh, RPM of the driver driven gear divided by RPM of the driver and speed ratio is nothing but what kind of RPM of the driven divided by RPM of the driver. But the gear ratio is what RPM of a RPM of sorry the speed ratio is nothing but speed ratio is exactly opposite of that. So I'll say that speed ratio. Speed ratio is exactly equal to RPM of a driver, RPM of driver gear divided by RPM of a driven gear. Right, fine. Whereas gear ratio is what exactly opposite? RPM of driven gear divided by RPM of driver gear. There are two types of gear trains can be developed. Simple gear train and compound gear train. Simple gear train and compound gear train. And based on that, we come across the equation. That is gear ratio is exactly equal to RPM of a driven gear divided by RPM of driver gear is equal to the number of teeth on the driver gear divided by number of teeth on the driven gear number of teeth on the driver gear divided by number of teeth on the driven gear and there are two types of a, a gear train is simple gear train and compound gear train have you heard about that there is a lot of discussion is done based on that what is mean by driver what is mean by intermediate gear there will be a module comes in the picture and this is what exactly based on that whatever the gear uh, system we have come across the gear ratio is exactly equal to number of teeth on the driver divided by number of teeth on the driver. Is it accepted everyone? Driver gear is your lead screw sir. Driver gear is no, 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 no. Abhishek Shivam. No, no, no. You understand that. What is the driver? It's very simple. Yeah. Who is driver? This is the motor. 
this is motor motor is driving this particular spindle this is my spindle 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 is my driver spindle is my what driver and there is intermediate gear is there through that intermediate gear this lead screw is getting driven so it is my driven gear it is my driven gear lead screw is a driven gear and spindle is a driver gear because rotational is transferred from here to here through this change gear system through the change gear system right this is what change gear system is it understood my dear friends uh, i think so my dear friends you uh, need to read that in very thorough manner it's it's a it's a very uh, uh, conceptual concept how exactly this things has to be done in the reality right fine so therefore there are number of formulas that develop and these formulas are developed based on compound gear chain or simple gear chain is nothing but called as a gear ratio is number of teeth on the driver divided by number of teeth on the driven it is exactly equal to diameter of driver divided by diameter of driven it is exactly equal to lead of a rpm or rpm of the lead screw divided by uh, rpm of the spindle rpm of lead screw divided by rpm of the spindle now i'll also develop this particular and tell you in a very simple manner how exactly equal to this formula is developed simple manner what is there gear ratio is exactly equal to driver teeth divided by driven teeth number of teeth on the driver divided by number of teeth on the driven and that is exactly equal to rpm of the lead screw divided by rpm of a spindle right rpm of the spindle divided by rpm of the lead screw let's see that suppose same example i am taking about here same example i am taking here suppose sir i want to manufacture i want to manufacture a pitch on the lead screw is 3 mm and pitch on the lead screw is given exactly equal to 12 mm 12 mm that means it's very natural that whenever my workpiece rotated by one rotation this lead screw will rotate by only one fourth of the rotation one fourth of the rotation it has to be rotated by one fourth of the rotation one fourth of the rotation which means that if my if my if my lead screw has to rotate it by one time we lead screw has to rotate by one time can i say that this workpiece will rotate by four times workpiece rotated by what what four times four times so rpm of the job is four and the rpm of the lead screw is one that is what exactly ratio it has to be now what is the gear ratio the gear ratio is exactly equal to driven driven that is called the rpm of the driven gear what is driven lead screw that is exactly one divided by rpm of the rpm of the driver gear that is four so what is the gear ratio is coming gear ratio is coming exactly equal to one by four one by four. right fine are you accepting because just now we have discussed now the gear ratio is exactly equal to rpm of a driven divided by rpm of a driver gear which is exactly opposite of that speed ratio so which is driven who is driving this is exactly equal to driven gear is a lead screw so that is it has to rotate by one time that is rpm of the lead screw in the same time work piece loaded by four times that is driver gear so rpm of a driven gear driven gear divided by rpm of the driver gear rpm of the driver gear right fine that ratio is 1 by 4 so if i want to generate the same ratio of the pitch or pitch of the lead screw and pitch of this particular work piece what is the pitch of the work piece is 2 3 and pitch of the lead screw is exactly 12 so can i say it has to be written exactly 3 by 12 is nothing but 1 by 4 can i 3 by 12 is exactly 1 by 4 is it 3 by 12 so what is meant by 3 can i say that sir gear ratio will come 3 is exactly equal to lead of a job or pitch of a job pitch of job divided by can i say it will be exactly lead of a lead screw lead of lead screw or pitch of a lead screw lead of lead screw or pitch of a lead screw is it okay is it okay therefore it is written here a gear ratio is exactly equal to a rpm of lead screw divided by rpm of the job spindle which is exactly equal to lead of job divided by lead of lead screw that is pitch of job divided by pitch of lead screw that is exactly equal to gear ratio that is exactly equal to gear ratio is it understood my friends this is what exactly we have developed that is gear ratio how to calculate the gear ratio in thread cutting operation Yes. Or no.
fine fine so now let's say that sir based on that there will be number of things gear ratio will come in the picture but now the question is there whenever we talk about that gear ratio is nothing but number of tits on the driver gear divided by number of tits on the driven gear that formula also comes in the picture number of tits on the driver gear divided by number of tits on the driven gear but now whenever i say that gear ratio is 1 by 4 do i have this many number of tits or do i have any gear who has one number of tits do i have any number of gear which has four number of tits no so therefore there is one engine length is utilized and in that engine length whatever the gears are available these are standard gears and the standard gears are ranging from there are set of gears ranging from 20 number of tits to 120 number of tits and in the state of a five number of tits so the first gear has a 20 number of tits next gear has a 25 number of tits next gear has what 25 first gear 20 number of tits next is 25 number of tits next is 30 number of tits next is 35 number of tits next is 40 number of tits next is what 40 number of tits next is 45 number of tits so likewise can i say that sir these number number of tits are there up to 120 these are standard tits are available and there is one special gear is also utilized that is 127 number of tits is there and these number of tips are utilized to develop a simple gear train or compound gear train. Simple gear train that means in intermediate shaft, what is intermediate shaft is there is only one gear is available called a simple gear train. And compound gear train means what? On intermediate shaft there are two gears are available, right? On an intermediate shaft there are two gears are available called as compound gear train. And that is what exactly mentioned over here. That is simple gear train and compound gear train. So this is my simple gear train. That means this is intermediate shaft. These are the intermediate shaft. On the intermediate shaft, only one particular gear is present whereas if you go here in a this is compound gear train so this is my intermediate shaft this is my driver gear this is my driven gear and on this intermediate shaft how many gears are available there are two gears are available called as compound gear train called as what compound gear train simple gear train and compound gear train comes at that particular point simple gear train and a compound gear train comes at that particular point right fine so now how these problems are being solved let's take one example here the, the pitch of the lid screw is 6 mm and the pitch of the thread to be get manufactured is 1 mm. Find the change gears. Find what change gears. One example, I'll take it, right? Uh, a pitch of a lid screw is this 6 mm and pitch of the thread is to be, it is find the change gears. Change gear is nothing but what? Gear ratio. Gear ratio. So I'll write down here. Gear ratio will be exactly equal to, gear ratio will be exactly equal. What is that? Pitch of the job divided by pitch of the lid screw. Pitch of the job divided by pitch of a lid screw what is the pitch of the job pitch of the job is exactly equal to we are interested to produce a pitch of thread of 1 mm so i'll take 1 divided by 6 gear ratio is exactly equal to 1 by 6 comes to the picture but now is there any gear available in the gearbox who has one number of teeth or is there any gear available in in the gearbox who has six number of teeth yes it's it's not it's not so therefore can i say that we have to simplify so you do one thing that multiply numerator and denominator by 20 the moment I am multiplying numerator and denominator by 20, can I say it will come 20 divided by 120, 20 divided by 120. So can I say that sir, is there any gear who has 20 number of tits? Yes. Is there any tits who has 120 number of tits? Yes. So therefore my gear ratio is exactly equal to number of tits on the driver gear, number of tits on driver gear divided by number of tits on a driven gear, number of tits on driven gear that is 20 divided by 120 will be answered. 20 divided by 120 will be answer is coming. 20 divided by 120. Number of tits on the driver gear divided by number of tits on the driven gear which comes at that particular point. Right? It is called as 20 divided by 120 comes in the picture. 20 divided by 120. I hope so you are understanding this. And now sometimes there might be chances that a compound gear train he is asking us to calculate. Compound gear train is asking us to calculate. Right? Fine. So let's take this example. Let's say that sir, compound gear train if I want to develop here right a 6 mm is the pitch of the the thread to be cut right 125 1.25 so i'll say here in simple manner what is that so gear ratio is exactly equal to number of tits on the driver gear divided by number of tits on the driven gear that is pitch of the job 1.25 divided by pitch of the lead screw is exactly equal to 6 now how to modify that it's very simple 1.25 you multiply this 1.25 any number so that it will convert into round up number. So I'll multiply by 4, it will convert by 5. So denominator also you multiply by 4. So I'll say 6 multiply by 4 like this. Now if I want to develop a compound gear train, so I'll say that simply a gear ratio is equal to 5 by 6. I'll written like that. 
and 1 by 4 I'll return like that. So I'll say gear ratio is equal to this 5 by 6. I'll multiply numerator and denominator by 10. And how it has to be multiplied? It has to be multiplied in such a way that once we do the multiplication, whatever the number of tips will come, that gear has to be available in the standard set. Because we have a standard gear set who has a number of tips 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 till the 120. So therefore, and 1 by 4 has to multiply by is uh, 20. I can multiply here by 20. Is it true? I can multiply here by 20. I can say that gear ratio is coming exactly equal to uh, 50 divided by 60 multiply by 20 divided by 80. This is also one gear trend ratio is coming in the picture. 50, 20, 60, 80. Right? So number of tits on the driver gear and number of tits on the driven gear. That is tits on the driver TATC divided by TB into TD. Driver gear divided by driven gear. This is called as compound gear trend system. This is also correct which is solved in the left hand side. That is also one of the options available. Have we went through like this? This is the way by which gears has to be solved. The gear ratio has to be solved. Please write down in the comment box whether it is correct or not. Alright, now there is one special threads I need to get manufactured that is nothing but called as a cutting a metric threads on an engine lathe. Cutting a metric thread on what engine lathe? The cutting of metric threads on the lathe with an English lead screw. What is meant by that? So metric thread is nothing but if the pitch of the thread is given in millimeter, it's called as metric thread. Metric thread is what? When the pitch of the thread is given in millimeter, it's called as metric thread. An English lead screw, that means pitch of the lead screw, pitch of the lead screw is given in the inches, it's called as English lead screw, English lead screw. And that is generally given in terms of A exactly equal to, in terms of what? A threads per inch. It is generally given in what? Threads per inch. So therefore it is given if the lead screw has N threads per inch. N threads per inch means, that means, can I say that sir, how many number of threads are there in one pitch, in one, sorry, one inch? What is the N inch value? If I say that 1 inch value is exactly equal to 24, 25.4, can I say that 1 inch value is exactly equal to a 25.4. So if I talk about lead screw, on the lead screw, on the lead screw, in that 25.4, how many number of threads are there? How many number of threads are there? How many number of threads are there? That is nothing but called as threads per inch, thread per inch. Now it is given that thread per inch is exactly equal to n. So n number of threads are there. How many threads are there? n threads are there. You know one particular inch. So what is the pitch value? So can I say one inch is exactly equal to 25 mm, 25.4. And in that there are n number of threads are there. So can I say pitch of the lead screw, pitch of a lead screw is exactly equal to 25.4 divided by n. This is exactly equal to pitch of the lead screw is coming. Is like a pitch of the lead screw because in one inch these many number of threads are there. In one inch these many number of threads. If one inch this many number of threads. That means how much? This is the pitch value. This is the pitch value. Suppose if I say that, sir, this is one inch, and in one inch, these three three threads are there. One, two, three. So how much pitch value? That one inch divided by a pitch value. That is nothing but called as answer. Right? Fine. So therefore, I have developed one equation. That is nothing but a gear ratio to pitch of the job divided by pitch of the lead screw. Pitch of the job is p, and the pitch of the lead screw is 25.4 divided by n. 25.4 divided by n that is what exactly thus now we called as pitch of the lead screw right fine now i multiply this particular 20 uh, 25.4 by 5 so if i multiply this 25.4 by 5 i'll get the answer exactly 127 and we have one standard gear whose whose number of tits are exactly equal to 127 and therefore what i did here in a simplified manner that whatever this 25.4 divided by n is there it will be multiplied by 5 and divided by 5 so that this 25.4 will get converted to 127 and therefore here i multiply by 5 divided by 5 and that whatever 5n is coming i'll take to the numerator and therefore my gear ratio is coming that is number of tits in the driver divided by number of tits in the giver is exactly 5 into n into p 5 into n into p divided by 5 into n into p divided by 127 
फाइव इंटू एन इंटू बी डिवाइडेड बाय वन ट्वेंटी सेवन दिस इज वॉट एक्जैक्टली मैं आंसर इज कमिंग and this is the way question is coming calculate the gear ratio or number of tilts on the dri driver gear divided by number of tilts on the driven gear or the answer is question is coming exactly equal to uh, that is called a strain ratio or gear ratio very simple pi into n into b divided by 127 n stands for threads per inch of the lead screw and p stands for pitch of the pitch of the workpiece pitch of the workpiece pitch of the workpiece is it understood my friends right fine so this is the way by which i think so you can be able to a uh, understand this right fine now we'll talk about the next operation it is nothing but called as a shaping operation what is the next operation we'll talk about a shaping operation All right fine now what is in the shaping operation this is the machine utilized for shaping operation it's very simple that's uh, the reciprocating a reciprocating tool is utilized for machining operation to generate the plane surface is nothing but called as a shaping operation where let's say that this is exactly what a tool is selected tool is connected to the ram ram is connected to the crank when the crank is rotating crank rotation is converted to the linear motion of that particular ram and the tool is moving linearly when the tool is moving linearly whenever it is passing over the workpiece it will do the cutting operation return stroke is idle stroke so whenever the reciprocating single point cutting tool reciprocating single point cutting tool is utilized for machining of the the flat surface is nothing but called as my shaping operation shaping operation is generated there right so tool is reciprocating like that tool is reciprocating reciprocating single point cutting tool right fine now sir what happens here let's understand this machine is nothing but called a shaper right fine now this tool is attached to this particular uh, i would say that ram it is reciprocating that is nothing but a speed motion or speed motion speed motion is given to the tool tool is reciprocating and whereas once the one one rotation of the rail is completed my tool will move forward as well as return so when the tool is moving in the forward direction tool is integrally in contact with workpiece and performing machining operation and during the return stroke my tool is getting withdrawn from that workpiece and there is no contact with the workpiece there is no contact and no machining will take place and once the one particular stroke is completed then after one stroke is completed feed is given to this particular work table or workpiece therefore it was mentioned that the feed is given to workpiece whereas a speed motion spwd speed motion is given to my particular tool speed motion is given to the tool and therefore it is written here speed motion is given to the tool whereas speed motion is given to this particular workpiece which comes in the the picture at that particular fashion at that particular fashion is it okay yes so this is the way by which it is comes in the picture sir whenever we talk about shaping operation we need to understand a number of geometries of the shaping operation so what are these number of geometries let's see sir this is the crank is rotated by one complete rotation crank is what rotated one complete rotation when the crank rotates by one complete rotation my ram moves in the forward and the return stroke forward and the return forward stroke is cutting stroke return stroke is idle stroke forward stroke is return stroke and uh, return stroke is the idle stroke which comes in the picture right fine so one rotation of the crank is exactly equal to one stroke of the ram that is one forward plus backward that is one cutting plus one one return stroke and this is exactly the depth of cut selected and depth of cut is nothing but basically i'll say that sir this much portion of material removal takes place right fine now sir whenever my tool is moving in the forward direction can i say that it will move with the optimum velocity because cutting velocity is optimum velocity but during the return stroke as my tool is not in contact with workpiece and not performing machining operation can i say it has to come back with a faster velocity it has to come back rapidly and when it has to come back rapidly can i say that in a one complete rotation of crank there are two variable speed has to maintain and to maintain that variable speed there is one mechanism is utilized and that is nothing but called as withworth quick return motion mechanism in a withworth quick return motion mechanism between crank between crank and that particular ram there is one mechanism is installed that is called as withworth quick return motion mechanism and because of that during the forward stroke my tool will move slowly and aramsly that is called as it is moving with optimum velocity but because in the return stroke it will move with extremely high velocity extremely high velocity extremely high velocity length of the stroke in both cases will remain same but in the forward stroke cutting is optimum and the return stroke 
the the cutting velocity will be a faster velocity cutting velocity will be what a faster velocity you can easily understand from here what is understand that say the forward stroke the tool is moving in the slow direction there is a return stroke it is rapidly coming back it is what rapidly coming back can i say rapidly it is coming back that is what called as a withworth quick return motion mechanism comes in the picture called as what withworth quick return motion mechanism is coming at that particular point right point so here i am saying that so vc is nothing but cutting velocity and vr is nothing but return velocity definitely return velocity is greater than cutting velocity and based on that there is one quick return ratio is developed very correct and that quick return ratio is nothing but return velocity divided by cutting velocity as cutting velocity is less my qrr will be always greater than 1 qrr will be always greater than 1 and for simplification in analysis i have developed one constant m that constant m is exactly equal to 1 by qrr so if m is exactly equal to 1 by qrr that is quick return ratio so that is exactly equal to less than 1 always so therefore if some ratio is given in gate examination and if that cutting ratio or that velocity ratio is greater than 1 it should be qrr and if it is less than 1 it is value of m constant it is just a constant it has no name it is just a constant my dear friend it is just a constant nothing to worry about it it is just a constant it is just a constant nothing to worry about it it is just a constant comes at that particular point it is just a constant comes at that particular point nothing to worry about it, it is just a constant around the constant comes in the picture that is m is equal to 1 by qr m is equal to what 1 by qr comes in the picture now sir we are interested to calculate how much time is required per path so there will be certain time required for cutting and certain time required for return so therefore i say that total time of machining operation is exactly equal to time of cutting plus time of return Time of cutting plus what? Time of return is total time. What is time of cutting? Length travel divided by cutting velocity. And what is time of return? Length travel same divided by return velocity. So L by VC plus L by VR. So I have written this L by VC plus L by VR. LL will, will, will take care of one. So I'll say that time per stroke, time per stroke required is exactly equal to L will take it common. 1 by VC plus 1 by VR. 1 by VC plus 1 by VR. We have just discussed one constant here m is equal to m is equal to what vc divided by vr vc divided by a vr vc divided by vr so can i say that here vr is exactly equal to vc divided by m vc divided by m so i'll put it here so time per stroke is exactly equal to l is equal to 1 by vc plus 1 by vc by v sorry m by vr what is coming what it is that that is nothing but exactly equal to vc by m so I'll say that M by VC, M by VC. So VC will take it common. So it will come L by VC into 1 plus M. L by VC into what? 1 plus M. L by VC into what? 1 plus M. So therefore I'll say that sir, time per stroke is exactly equal to L by VC into 1 plus M. This is master formula is coming in the picture. And I hope so you must have heard about this equation. Time per stroke is equal to L by VC into 1 plus m right is it okay why is it okay everybody ajay krishna this is the formula comes at that particular point right fine and now rest of the calculation will also do now we'll talk about the feed mechanism now feed mechanism case the feed mechanism let's understand that whenever my tool is moving in the forward direction my tool is in contact with workpiece it will perform machining operation and my tool will withdraw when the tool is withdrawing it will come to the return, return position and then the feed is given to the work table but why you wait till that tool will reach to the original position and then the feed is given? Don't require. You do one thing that whenever my forward stroke is completed, you withdraw the tool and immediately you start giving the feed to this particular workpiece so that I don't require to wait extra time. So because the tool will come to the original position and then the feed is given to the work table and then that extra time is nothing but non-productive time. So therefore, when my tool is moving in the forward direction, the cutting stroke is completed and the tool is withdrawn. When there is no contact with the tool in the workpiece, give the fit to that work table. And therefore, there is one mechanism is utilized here. And that is nothing but called as a, a feed mechanism called as ratchet and fall mechanism is utilized. A ratchet and the fall mechanism is utilized here. The ratchet wheel has number of teeth on the outer periphery. Ratchet wheel has what? Number of teeth on the outer periphery. And this is exactly going to fall. This is exactly going to fall. It will restrict the uh, rotation of this particular, uh, the ratchet wheel in the opposite direction. It will lock the rotation. And whatever that, Whenever this ratchet shaft, uh, ratchet wheel is installed onto this particular shaft, that is nothing but called a lead screw shaft. So this is exactly a lead screw, a lead screw shaft on which that ratchet wheel is being installed, and it is being locked with this Allen key. 
so therefore whenever or key ways the key slot or key ways being put there so now whenever my ratchet wheel is rotating whenever my ratchet wheel is rotating can i say that my my this particular lid screw rotate and when the lid screw is rotating can i say rotational motion of the lid screw will converted into the linear motion of this particular work table so feed motion is given by whom the ratchet and the pawl mechanism ratchet and pawl mechanism and therefore i have taken one example here let's say that whatever lid screw selected who has pitch is equal to 5 5 mm number of starting what well, that is lead is exactly going to one right pi so now what is happening so let's say that this is what exactly this things is coming what is that let's say now in a one complete rotation let's let's see that is it possible to view that right pi now you can see that here i'll tell you how exactly it's happening okay let's see that now how exactly it is happening let's see let's see so this is the crank in the first half rotation of the crank in the first half rotation of the crank can i say that sir my tool is same crank is driving my ratchet and pawl mechanism also and that particular a uh, this quick cradle motion mechanism also in a first half rotation can i say my tool is moving the forward direction my tool is moving the forward direction once the half rotation is completed my tool is getting withdrawn and momently it is getting withdrawn momently can i say that it is getting withdrawn can i say that in the second half rotation can i say that this particular ratchet this particular ratchet right or sorry this is particularly a pawl p a w l pawl is indexing this ratchet wheel can i say that it is indexing ratchet wheel by some number of ticks so some ticks it is indexing some ticks it is indexing and that is nothing but in a one complete rotation of the crank in one complete rotation of crank this particular pawl is indexing ratchet by some number of ticks by some number of ticks and therefore it is given here let's say that in simple example if i talk about number of ticks on the ratchet wheel is are 100 100 number of ticks are there on the ratchet wheel and the ratchet has a, a lead a lead screw has a pitch of 5 mm and understand that during every double stroke that is one complete rotation of crank double stroke forward stroke of that particular tool as well as return stroke of the tool that is considered as one double stroke that means tool has to move in forward direction cutting and then there will be a return stroke that is called as one complete stroke that is forward plus return stroke in one rotation of the crank pawl is indexing the ratchet by one tith pawl is what indexing ratchet that pawl can index the ratchet by two tith one tith whatever it may be so it is indexing that that ratchet by one tith how many ticks are there on this particular ratchet wheel 100 ticks are there so for one complete rotation of the ratchet wheel can i say all the 100 ticks has to be indexed so that means for all ticks to be get indexed 100 100 ticks to be get indexed crank has to be rotated 100 times so therefore can i say that 100 ticks are indexed 100 ticks are getting indexed when the crank is rotated by 100 times if the crank is rotated by one time then the ratchet will be indexed by ratchet will be indexed by one tith if the ratchet is indexing by 100 tith can i say ratchet will complete by one rotation so therefore i'll say that 100 ticks are indexed which means that one rotation of the ratchet and when the one rotation of ratchet can i say that my work table will advance exactly equal to uh, work piece will advance by 5 mm distance that is called as pitch distance so therefore i get the relation 100 ticks are indexed a uh, work table will advance by 5 mm and therefore if one tith is indexed how much exactly equal to work table is advanced and because in one complete rotation in one complete rotation it is indexing only one tith and that is nothing but called as feed in mm per stroke because in one complete rotation of the crank my tool is moving the forward as well as backward and in same one one rotation of the crank my pawl is indexing the ratchet by one tith that means my work table is advances by this distance that is called as feed per stroke feed per stroke per stroke how much work table is advancing and that feed per stroke can be calculated so feed per stroke can be calculated by equation pitch or the lead pitch or the lead of what that lead screw divided by number of ticks on the ratchet wheel number of ticks on the ratchet wheel sometimes there might be chances that ki instead of one tith i am indexing now i am saying that i am indexing two ticks now how many ticks are there on the periphery 100 ticks and now in a one complete rotation of the rank that pawl is indexing instead of one tith it is indexing two ticks how many ticks are indexing two ticks are indexing two ticks are indexing if the two ticks are indexing can i say that in a simple manner i'll say that sir now how many rotations of the crank required so 50 rotations of crank in which all the 100 ticks will get indexed so therefore can i say that number of ticks required are exactly 50 in a 50 stroke in a 50 stroke can i say that all the 100 ticks will get indexed that means distance traveled is equal to 5 mm so therefore in a one particular stroke how much distance is getting traveled and therefore this is exactly answer is coming and based on that i have developed one particular equation here feed is equal to pitch divided by number of ticks multiplied by 
number of tits per number of tits index per stroke whether it is a one tits its index or two tits or how many number of tits are indexed at that particular point how many number of tits are indexed at that particular point this is nothing but called as feed the feed is exactly good what which divided by number of tits on the ratchet number of tits on the ratchet multiply by number of tits indexed per stroke number of tits index per stroke are you accepting my dear friends not accepted yes accepted kya hai bhai right fine now let's say that sir we are interested to calculate a how much distance that l has to be come in the picture approach and over travel will come so along the length direction can i say that there will be lengthwise approach and over travel will come and along the width direction also there is a widthwise approach and over travel will come in the picture so i'll say that sir total distance traveled l is exactly equal to approach plus length plus over travel and along the width direction also i'll say that sir approach plus width plus over travel that is actual width right fine now you tell me that here so suppose this is exactly equal to my feet distance right given this is the feet distance like between every two cutting off every every stroke that is forward plus return this is exactly equal to feet is given so how many number of passes required how many number of strokes will be required for entire cutting so can i say that number of strokes required number of strokes required number of strokes required are is exactly equal to w divided by feed w divided by feed can i say that sir because that much width of the metal gate machine and in each stroke only a feed distance is getting machine so now each stroke is happening forward return feed is given forward return feed is given forward return feed is given so how many number of strokes w into f that is called as total number of strokes required and time required per stroke we have already discussed l divided by vc into 1 plus m 1 plus m so this is nothing but called as a time required per pass this is nothing but called as what time per pass required in a machining operation time per pass required in a machining operation so i'll say that sir here answer is coming time per pass is equal to w by f into l by vc into 1 plus m and m is a constant m is what a constant comes in the picture w by f into l by vc into 1 plus m is it okay everybody number of times now sometimes we know that sir entire depth whatever we want to machine cannot get machine in a one pass so initially this much depth of cut then again small depth of cut depth of cut depth of cut if i want to reduce the thickness from t not to tf i want to reduce the thickness from what t not to tf that is what exactly thickness we want to reduce from where t not to tf right fine t not to tf so how many number of passes will be required that will be t not minus tf divided by d because depth of cut in every every pass small depth of cut so to reduce that t not to tf how many number of passes will be required that is t not minus t will be by d and therefore i'll say that sir total number of time is exactly equal to w into w by f into l by vc into 1 plus m multiply by number of passes it has to be rounded up to the higher side it has to be rounded up to the higher side which comes in the picture right fine and one very interesting question is developed here the time per stroke is nothing but let's say that 0.5 mm time per stroke that means can i say that sir a one stroke one stroke means what forward plus backward that is forward plus backward is called as one rotation of the crank so if the time per stroke required is 0.5 mm that means in 0.5 mm is the time per stroke that means crank is rotated one times in 0.5 minutes my crank rotation is one one rotation of the crank required work 0.5 minute so how many times crank is rotating in one minute so crank is rotating in one minute by two times two times so can i say that rpm of the crank is exactly two rpm of the crank is exactly two so can i say rpm of the crank is nothing but called as a time per stroke time one by time per stroke can i say that rpm is exactly equal to one divided by a time per stroke time per stroke is nothing but rpm isn't it yes sir rpm is exactly one by one by time per stroke and therefore i'll say that sir rpm is equal to one by time per stroke and therefore if i simplify this equation i'll get the equation and multiply and this 
a VC will be exactly equal to N into L into 1 plus M. Very, very interesting equation to solve number of numericals. What is that? VC is exactly equal to N into L into 1 plus M. N into L into 1 plus M. You can simplify that. You, you can take this to the left hand side. This is N into L into 1 plus M. VC will take come to the right hand side. So, VC is equal to N into L into 1 plus M. Very, very interesting for solving numericals and get examination. Right? Yes. Right? Fine. Now, there are second operation, planing operation. So, the planing operation is exactly opposite of that shaping operation because in shaping operation, the reciprocating motion is given to the tool and feed motion is given to the work table. Reciprocating motion is given to the tool and feed motion is given to the work table. Whereas in planing operation, my, my reciprocating motion given to the work table. So, speed motion is given to the work table. Work table is just moving, reciprocating, forward, backward, forward, backward. Whereas speed motion is given to that particular tool and therefore this is called as my shaping operation, sorry, planing operation. Here you can easily understand that this is what exactly my work, work, work piece or this is exactly equal to my tool which is attached to this particular horizontal arbor or horizontal this particular cross tail. It is stationary whereas this whatever the work piece is there which is reciprocating work piece moves in the forward and backward and the forward and the backward. So I will say that is a reciprocating motion that is speed motion is given to the work piece whereas speed motion is given to tool. So, after one complete reciprocating motion of the workpiece, my feed is given to the tool. Tool is slided in this direction. That is called as feed is given. And the beauty of this particular planing operation is that more than one tool can be selected here. Like this. This is my work table. This is exactly equal to my work table. Work table. This is exactly equal to my work table. Right? This is work table. And you can understand that whatever this particular work table is there, on that work table, my workpiece is placed. And once it is placed that particular uh, work piece, can I say it will keep on reciprocating like that. Whereas multiple tool can be placed above that. One tool can be placed, two tool can be placed, three tool can be placed and so on. And therefore simultaneously large size of work piece easily can get machine. Large size of work piece easily can get machine. And this is nothing but called as my planing operation. Generally planing operation is utilized for machining of a larger size of work pieces larger size of work pieces for which a planing operation is utilized. Planing operation is basically utilized for machining of what? A larger size of work piece. Larger size of work piece is where planing operation is utilized. Right? Fine. So yes, now sir. let's take an example here. What exactly I am talking? I am talking one thing that, sir, this is exactly equal to work table where these four work pieces are placed. And this is exactly equal to my tool number one. This is exactly tool number two is placed there. Right? Fine. And now the workpiece is started moving like that. Now when a workpiece is moving, can I say that both the tool will come and touch to the workpiece? So can I say tool number one will machine this workpiece three and the four, and tool number two will machine workpiece one and the two, right? Fine. And this both the tools will continuously keep on moving in the direction, keep on moving in the direction. One point will come where both this particular I would say that the workpieces will get machined, right? Fine. So this is can I say that productivity will be extremely higher in the case of a uh, planing operation as compared to that shaping operation, right, fine. Now we'll talk about a drilling operation. Now we'll talk about a drilling operation, right, fine. So now before drilling operation, we'll do one thing that we'll take a lunch break of half an hour. Half an hour lunch break we'll take. And after half an hour, we'll resume to the drilling operation. Is it okay, everyone? Right, fine. Half an hour, we'll take lunch break. And after lunch break, we'll start resuming again, right? So I'll say that, sir, it is roughly uh, 2 7, right? So 2.30 pm, we'll start again. Right, fine. Okay, so we'll start. Derive. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Chalo, we'll take a break and then we'll come back. Right, fine.
ऑर्डर कर दो बाद में चेंज कर देंगे
So welcome back everyone. Yes, 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 everyone. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Okay, fine, fine. So we'll start now. Am I audible? <clears throat> so let's see that now we'll talk about a drilling operation, right? Drilling is a multi-point cutting tool, oblique machining process. Shall we start? Yes. I think the students will join slowly. No worries, right? Slowly, slowly students will join. We'll start our discussion, right? Yes, fine. So let's see that, sir. Till now, we have discussed a single point cutting tool operation. Now we'll talk about multi point cutting tool operation. The first operation is called as drilling operation. So we'll say that, sir, drilling is basically multi point cutting tool oblique machining operation used for producing a cylindrical holes into a piece. So whenever we are interested to produce a cylindrical hole of certain diameter, the drilling operation comes into the picture. Drilling operation, what comes into the picture? Is it true? Yes. So now here we'll say that sir, this drill tool is there. Now drill tool has to be rotated by certain RPM and then it has to be fed into downward direction. And then once it is fed into downward direction, multiple cutting edges will remove the material and the machining will take place. Right, fine. To perform this operation, there is a one drill piece is utilized. Here is the work table on which the work piece is installed and the clamp. And then once you rotate this particular, I would say that uh, a lever. So this drill will start moving and penetrating into a thickness direction of the metallic plate and the thickness or required whole of required diameter will get produced. Now, first of all, we need to understand the geometry of a drill. There is a one drill is selected that is called a twist drill. That is called what? Twist drill, which is extremely famous and extremely, uh, I would say that, uh, utilized in the industry. A twist drill is utilized. So, whenever we talk about twist drill, can I say that twist drill has number of parts. Why it is called a twist drill? If I select any rod and if I rotate, twist it. So, whatever the shape is generated, that is called a twist drill. This is the shank of this particular drill, which is utilized for holding that particular drill. And this is exactly going to main body of the drill, main body of the drill. If you go here, you can easily understand that there is a flute is created. Can I say this is exactly going to flute is created into that drill and that flute is created for removal of unwanted material during drilling operation. So whenever my drill till comes in contact with workpiece and when drill is applying force onto workpiece, whatever removal of material, it has to some space, it requires some space. So what are the topic covered uh, till now we have covered metal cutting and the machining is going on right machining is going on right fine okay fine so i think so everybody is now uh, alive and kicking right fine so that flute is created this particular grooves and the flute is created for what the removal of unwanted material that is nothing but called as a hexagonal grooves helical grooves helical grooves are created along the periphery along the periphery and these are created for removal of unwanted material. Let's understand geometry. At the tip of this particular tool, at the tip of this particular tool, let's let's cramp it basically so that you'll understand in a better manner. Let's cramp it.
let's see that now uh, is it visible to everyone this particular tool is it visible to everyone this particular tool yes you can understand that or you can also see this particular tool both one and the same thing one and the same thing both tools are there one and the same thing right fine now you can understand that whenever we do the rolling operation or sorry whenever we do the drilling operation drilling operation this edge 0 1 can i say that 0 1 is cutting edge this is nothing but called as main cutting edge main cutting edge or principal cutting edge in the same manner that 0 3 is or 2 3 is also called as a one more cutting edge there are two cutting edges are there these are nothing but cutting edges this is one cutting edge and this is one cutting these are principal cutting edge or main cutting edge 0 1 and 2 3 0 1 and 2 3 0 1 and 2 3 are nothing but called as the main cutting edge because when the drill tool is rotating can i say these cutting edges will come apply force and remove the material remove the material as far as machining operation is concerned and we know that whenever the chip comes out whichever the surface over which chip is sliding that is called as the rig surface so can i say that sir this is the surface over which chip is sliding this is the surface over chip is sliding and then these chips will be transported through these helical grooves to the upper surface so that surface is called as the rig surface and this cutting edge 0 1 and 2 3 is nothing but called as a main principle or major cutting edge and there is one edge sir why would a drill has a long pointed nose long pointed nose means what this one this this you are talking about this one long pointed nose yes i'll talk about that i'll talk about that also right fine now let's see that sir let's understand very carefully there is a one edge there is a one edge can i say that this edge this edge is connected this cutting edges to each other can i say this edge one two is seamlessly connecting these two principal cutting edges to each other and that is nothing but called a chisel edge that is called what chisel edge chisel edge now whenever my tool is rotating that question will talk about why it has a pointed edge pointed edge because whenever my tool is rotating can i say it is expected that whether it is a multi-point cutting tool operation or a single point cutting tool operation can i say only cutting edges should be allowed to come in contact with workpiece whereas machining is concerned no flank surfaces no body of the tool should be in contact with workpiece otherwise there will be rubbing takes place therefore only single edge of the cutting tool should be remain in contact with workpiece for machining to be takes place and therefore here can i say that this only if i want this cutting edges to be in contact with workpiece so whatever this surface i'm highlighting can i say that this should be sloped inside so that only this edge has to be in contact with workpiece and we know that this face is nothing but called as a flank face of the tool. It is called as what? It is called as a flank face of a tool. It is called as flank face of the tool. Flank face of the tool. And can I say that sir, intersection of rake and flank surface of the tool is nothing but called as main cutting edge. It is called as cutting edge. And therefore, this cutting edge 0, 1 and 2, 3 are also intersection of flank surface. And therefore, to avoid the contact of the surfaces with the workpiece without any rubbing action, there is some inclination or slope is given here. That is what exactly surface is flank surface this is called as what flank surface and now this cutting edge that is nothing but called as 0 5 cutting edge and 3 4 cutting edge they are not in contact with workpiece and marginal material removal takes place and therefore it is nothing but called as basically a uh, secondary cutting edge end cutting edge or uh, auxiliary cutting edge secondary cutting edge auxiliary cutting edge or a secondary cutting edge comes in the picture whereas 0 1 and 2 3 are called as main cutting edge principal cutting edge and 1 2 which is connecting these particular two cutting edges are called as chisel edge chisel edge comes at that particular point you can easily understand here also can i say that 0 1 a material remote takes place here and the material is flowing through this particular groove and 0 1 then 1 2 and 2 3 2 3 is cutting edge 0 1 is cutting edge and 1 2 is chisel edge whereas this surface is nothing but called as flank face of this particular tool flank face of the tool now there is a one edge which is continuously moving along this particular circumferential helical grooves can i say that this is exactly equal to that one edge what is that edge so this is exactly equal to a one edge this is exactly equal to a one edge this is exactly equal to one edge this edge is nothing but called as leading edge can i say it is along that particular flute along that particular helical grooves whatever there along that this is nothing but called as leading edge of this particular tool leading edge of this particular tool and now there will be a certain axis of this particular drill tool will be also there certain axis of drill tool right fine so angle made by this leading edge angle made by this leading edge with the axis of this drill tool is nothing but called as a uh, angle it's called as helix angle so therefore here this is helix angle so this is helix angle this is helix angle 
as we are moving from a, a periphery, as we are moving from center to a periphery, I am moving outside, outside, outside. Can I say that this helix angle is keep on increasing? That helix angle keeps on increasing and the maximum helix angle is appeared at the, at the outermost periphery, at the outermost periphery and that maximum helix angle of the tool is nothing but called as rectangle of the tool also. So, I will say maximum helix angle of the tool is nothing but called as a rec angle of this particular tool rec angle of this particular tool and one more topic we have to understand that whatever the drill tool that we selected it is always tapered in a backward direction it is always tapered in a backward direction have you seen that it is always tapered it has a little bit of larger diameter at the tip but at the back it is always tapered because whenever my deal is inserted into that machining operation can i say only cutting edges should be come in contact with workpiece whenever the drill is inserted into workpiece that circumferential surface these uh, these leading edges should not be come in contact with workpiece only tip and that two cutting edges two cutting edges which are being there at the tip they should be doing the machining operation or to be a combination of two two pack means what pratik nigam sir drill tool can be assumed to be a combination of two uh, two what Two single point cutting tools, right? What exactly is this? And now in the top view, in the side view, if I D, so this is nothing but called as a 0, 1 is principal cutting edge, 1, 2 is a chisel edge, and 2, 3 is nothing but called as again one more principal cutting edge. Whereas these are nothing but called as secondary cutting edges. Secondary cutting edges come to the cut picture. Now, whatever this angle included between these two particular slanted surfaces or slanted cutting edges, that angle is nothing but called as 2 beta. It is nothing but called as point angle during the machining operation. Point angle during machining operation. And you need to understand that, sir. The way I am looking into this drill tool, there will be different figures will come to the picture. So, if I keep this drilling tool in such a way that in front of me, if that point 1 and point 2, if the point 1 and point 2 are being in front of my eyes, so, point 1 and point 2 are exactly in front of my eyes so that they will get overlapped to each other and therefore, if I draw the picture of the drill tool, this is exactly equal to a picture of the drill tool will come to the picture. What is that? This is exactly equal to drill tool picture is comes in the picture because 1, 2 will get overlapped in front of me. But if I place this drill tool in front of me in such a way that 1 is here and 2 is here, they can be easily parallel to my eyes. They are parallel to. So, 1 point and 2 point can be easily visualized. The way I am putting this particular drill tool in front of me, and therefore, can I say that the so second particular picture comes in the picture. Both pictures are same for me during operation. Both pictures are basically same for me during operation. Is there any doubt? Both pictures are same for me during the operation. There is no problem at all in this particular case. Both pictures are same. Both pictures are same in this particular case. Yes. Yes, fine. So, let's see that, sir. What exactly is this? We have already discussed, right? Fine. So now we'll talk about process parameters of drilling operation. So RPM is nothing but the RPM by which this drill tool is rotating, called as RPM, right? N N is nothing but RPM by which it is rotating. And whatever the speed or whatever the distance by which it is feeded into downward direction, that is called as feed velocity. And that feed velocity is nothing but our feed is given in mm per revolution, mm per revolution. And the feed velocity is exactly equal to feed multiplied by RPM of this particular drill tool. Feed multiplied by RPM of the drill tool. Let's say that, sir, T is exactly the thickness of the workpiece and D is nothing but called as a diameter of the drill tool. So, this 0, 1, this is principal cutting edge and this 0, 2 will be also called as principal cutting edge, major cutting edge. Right, fine. Before the machining operation, can I say that my drill tool will be kept certain distance away and then slowly it will move in a downward direction. And then this tip of the tool will come and touch to the workpiece. And whatever distance it has to travel, it is called as my approach distance LA. So once my drill tool touch to the workpiece, then again it has to move in a downward direction. So at the beginning, it will start machining only this particular surface. It will start machining only at this particular point. Right, fine. But now, if I want to remove the material from entire diameter, if I want to generate the exact diameter of the hole, can I say that this diametrical opposite point 1 has to reach to 1 dash. And simultaneously, can I say 2 has to reach to 2 dash. And once it is reaching there, then I will say that sir, actual machining will take place. And that is what exactly given here, 1 dash and 2 dash. So whatever distance I have to travel to start the complete machining of the entire diameter of the workpiece, that is nothing but called as a compulsory approach. Called as what? Compulsory approach. Because this diametrical opposite point should reach here. And this diametrical opposite point should reach here. And whatever distance I have to compulsorily travel, 
to start my entire machining that distance is nothing but called as compulsory approach and that is also called as cone height because can i say that this will be considered as cone of the drill tool cone of the drill tool and that height of this cone is nothing but called as compulsory approach which comes in the picture compulsory approach which comes in the picture and now as the machining operation is concerned can i say that there are certain distance we have to travel compulsory approach we have to travel then approach distance we have to travel and then after machining is entirely done if if at the end my my cone of the tool has reached here suppose my cone has reached where at the end my cone has reached at this particular location at this particular location my cone has reached right fine my cone has reached here can i say that to ensure the entire machining operation it has to move certain distance extra in the downward direction it has to move certain distance extra is it true and that distance is nothing but called as a over travel distance over travel so how much is the distance that we have to travel for the entire machining operation so we have to travel a total distance l is equal to compulsory approach plus approach plus thickness of metallic plate plus over travel if it is given that neglect compulsory approach or approach in over travel this compulsory approach and the over travel distance will turn out to be zero compulsory approach and over travel distance will turn out to be what zero at that particular point zero at that particular point right fine now very important thing is that sir what is mean by feed feed is very simple so when my tool is rotating whatever linear distance my tool is moving in a downward direction whatever linear distance my tool is moving in a linear direction or downward direction that distance is nothing but called as feed distance that is called as what feed distance and that is given by the equation or given by f feed is equal to mm per revolution mm per revolution but let's say that whenever drilling takes place what happens my drill tool is rotating and there are two principal cutting edges are simultaneously in contact with workpiece but whenever it is rotating can i say that first for first half of the rotation only one cutting edge will be there which is re removing the material and for rest half of the rotation the second principal cutting edge will come in the picture and that will remove the material so during the one complete rotation both the cutting edges will never in contact with workpiece for removal for one complete rotation for one complete rotation for half of the rotation out of that half of the rotation one principal cutting edge will cut the material and for rest of the half of the rotation rest of the half of the cutting edge or rest of the cutting edge will perform the cutting operation so if it is happening like that i know that my tool is advancing by feed distance f but one cutting edge effectively experience a feed exactly by f by 2 f by 2 f by 2 why f by 2 because for entire feed movement my both cutting edges are not doing machining operation for half of the feed for half of the feed f by 2 one cutting edge is doing operation and for rest of the half of the feed that is f by 2 distance one more cutting edge is doing machining operation that's what is given effective feed experiences by each cutting edge how many cutting edges there two cutting edges are there effective feed single yes 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 pratik nikam absolutely correct effective feed experiences by each cutting edge is exactly equal to f by 2 it is exactly equal to what f by 2 and already we have discussed feed velocity is exactly equal to f into n comes in the picture right fine now we want to calculate uncut shift thickness and now same logic we have to consider as far we have discussed as far as a uh, single point cutting tool geometry is concerned what is the uncut shift thickness distance advance distance advances by a principal cutting edge in a one complete rotation of the workpiece is nothing but called as a, a uncut shift thickness t naught and we have discussed that the principal cutting edge is traveling from this to this position that feed distance if the orthogonal cutting edge is pure orthogonal cutting edge now can i say that the feed is exactly equal to becomes uncut shift thickness that is t naught is exactly equal to f and if not then t naught is equal to f into sin lambda f into what sin lambda just in the morning we have discussed this just in the morning we have discussed in the same manner now sir this is my a principal cutting edge it is moving from here to here in a one complete rotation but point to be understand that sir when the o point is moving this is the o point right when o point is moving to the a point can i say the effective feed experiences by my cutting edge single cutting edge is f by 2 it should not be f why it should not be f because just now we have discussed in you know, a one complete rotation out of that for half of the rotation one cutting edge is in contact for rest of the half of the rotation rest of the cutting edge is in contact and therefore it is very important that whenever i want to calculate that uncut shift thickness t naught then we have to consider 0 to a distance that is f by 2 that is the experience the feed experience by each cutting edge is f by 2 so this cutting edge is moving from here to here so what is that what is the uncut shift thickness that is a true fit true fit means what i have to consider the normal distance between them so i have run normal here normal here so can i say that ab is nothing but called as a uncut shift thickness t naught uncut shift thickness t naught 
and now total angle of this cone is 2 beta right so half of the angle is exactly equal to beta right so this angle is also beta so i'll go to one particular triangle here that is o b c a this is beta this is uncut chip thickness t naught and this is f by 2 this is uncut chip thickness t naught can i say that this is the triangle what is the triangle you can easily understand this triangle here this is exactly a triangle i'm talking about this is exactly equal to a triangle i'm talking about can i say this distance is nothing but called as a uncut chip thickness t naught right this is exactly equal to a, a beta right half of the cone angle and this is exactly equal to f by 2 this is exactly equal to my f by 2 f by 2 right fine so here can i say that sine of beta is exactly equal to t naught divided by f by 2 therefore i'll say that sir t naught is exactly equal to f by 2 into a sine of beta t naught is exactly equal to f by 2 into a sine beta f by 2 into what sine beta so i'll say that sir t naught is exactly equal to f by 2 into sine beta question will come right question will be come right fine are you accepting my dear friends what exactly case is there there is number of poles are happening here please vote these poles right fine very important for us to serve you better now width of the cut what is width of the cut length of the portion of the cutting edge which is in contact with workpiece is called as width of the cut what is that length of portion of cutting edge length of portion of cutting edge which is in contact with workpiece while the machining to be taken place is called as width of the cut so i'll say that sir a b is nothing but width of the cut because that is the length of portion of single cutting edge is in contact with workpiece right so i'm drawing the horizontal line i'm drawing vertical line there is a 90 degrees coming right this is beta this is d by 2 diameter is d this is a d by 2 so from here i'll say that sir sine of beta again exactly equal to a d by 2 divided by hypotenuse is w so w is exactly equal to d divided by 2 into sine beta d divided by 2 into sine beta is it okay everybody yes so this is exactly equal to a width of the cut comes in the picture w is going to d by 2 into sine beta is it okay yes now we are not interested to understand here so now let's say that sir whenever we talk about a cutting process takes place can i say that you imagine that the drill tool is rotating like that drill tool is rotating so when the drill tool is rotating can i say cutting edges are moving cutting edges are moving by circumferential velocity and these cutting edges are applying force and therefore can i say that in a typical manner can i say that my cutting force will be acting tangential to that particular circle this drill tool is rotating and while that cutting edge is rotating that will apply force so force will apply tangential to that particular circle force will apply tangential to that particular circle so therefore can i say that my cutting force will be acting here that is exactly equal to vc right this is exactly equal to vc and can i say that sir or cutting force is fc and my cutting velocity will be also that peripheral velocity by which that drill tool is rotating cutting velocity is not the feed velocity feed velocity is not cutting who is doing cutting single point cutting tool single sorry that multi point cutting edges and these cutting edges are rotating by some rpm and what is the rpm by will rotate that will generate my cutting velocity so what will be cutting velocity can i say cutting velocity is pi into d into 20 divided by 1000 into 60 d is nothing but called as diameter of that workpiece that is a diameter of the tool diameter of not workpiece sorry diameter of a tool and n stands for a rpm of this particular tool and this is nothing but called as a meter per second it is called as what meter per second which comes in the picture meter per second which is coming in the picture right fine now sir whenever we talk about a, a depth of cut that is also very very important now what is depth of cut sir i know that one thing very surely the perpendicular distance between machine surface and atmospheric surface is called as depth of cut perpendicular distance between machine surface and a atmospheric surface please please uh, 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 appear this pole whatever the pole is please comment on the pole right only two weights there, uh, uh, votes were there previously. So we'll say that, sir, uh, you just go and comment on that, right? Fine. So that our team will actually uh, receive some particular polling and they'll understand that ki what is the way by which uh, we should proceed, right? Fine. Please do that for me so that, right, we'll understand, right? Fine. Keep increase the vote, right? All the students who are there. Please don't be lethargic. Yes. Fine. Okay, fine. So what is the depth of cut? So now here, let's say that sir, my tool is coming initially and this pin pin point of the tool is touching here. The tip of the tool will touch here. 
the movement tip of the tool is touching here and this surface is nothing but called as my machine surface this surface is machine surface so whatever the surface where my tool is touching whatever the surface where my tool is touching can i say that sir that point is considered as a atmospheric surface and whichever surface which is getting machine that is nothing but called as a machine surface so the distance between these two is nothing but called as a, a depth of cut called as what depth of cut so here in a drilling operation depth of cut is considered as a d by 2 depth of cut is considered as what depth of cut depth of cut is considered as exactly equal to d by 2 depth of cut is considered exactly equal to d by 2 depth of cut is considered d by 2 d by 2 d by 2 is considered as a depth of cut right fine now sir we have to understand that during the drilling operation there are two holes we can drill one is called as a through hole and second is called as a blind hole through hole and the blind hole point to be understand through hole and the blind hole through hole and the blind hole what is in the through hole whenever hole is created throughout the entire thickness of the sheet that is called as through hole what is called as blind hole the blind hole stands for if i create a hole up to certain depth if i create a hole up to certain depth up to certain depth the hole is created it is nothing but called as my blind hole it is nothing but called as what blind hole if the hole is created up to certain depth right fine i am not creating through hole called as blind hole right fine now if i am calculating a through hole you can understand very easily that sir initially my tool has to travel some distance that is this point has to reach here then i will start machining operation is called as a approach and now we also understand that sir this diametrically opposite point if i say that this is one point this is two point this one point has to reach to one dash and two point has to reach to two dash is it accepted one point has to reach to one dash and two has to reach to two dash and then the full fledged diameter of the hole will start producing and therefore that distance if i want to travel called as a compulsory approach and that compulsory approach is sometimes also called as a cone height so can i say this is my cone this is considered as a cone right fine so this is nothing but called as my cone height also cone height or compulsory approach now once i start machining operation this point will reach here so this is the position but to ensure the complete finishing operation i have to travel extra that is called as a over travel distance over travel distance will also come so therefore i'll say that l is equal to a total distance i want to travel is a compulsory approach plus approach distance plus thickness of the plate and over travel if compulsory approach over travel and the approach distance is neglected it will be considered zero and then we can calculate here but when you talk about blind hole sir even if we, we are interested to produce a blind hole sir compulsory approach will be there then the approach distance will be also there then whatever the depth up to which we are interested to create a hole that depth will be there but over travel will not be a question because i am not interested to ensure the extra distance the tool has to travel whatever the depth up to which whatever the depth up to which we are interested to create a hole up to that depth up to that depth can i say that sir my my tool has to travel up to that depth my tool has to travel so therefore that is nothing but called as in the case of blind hole my distance travel l is exactly what you do compulsory approach plus approach plus depth of the hole but over travel is not required there. over travel is completely not required at that particular point over travel is not required at that particular point is it okay everyone over travel is not required at that particular point hopefully you are understanding this particular drama right fine now sir whatever that cone height or compulsory approach you are talking about calculate that for calculation of that i am selecting this triangle and i am enlarging that here this angle is beta right this oa distance is nothing but called as compulsory approach and ab is nothing but d by 2 so here i'll say that tan of beta is exactly equal to d by 2 divided by lc so compulsory approach or it is called as cone height sir is there practice session at midnight midnight there won't be any practice session midnight uh, is there no practice session we'll conduct the practice session after some time right and full fledged practice sessions will be there where random questions of 25 30 50 questions of production will be covered randomly questions will be from welding metal cutting forming a sheet metal advanced machining ntm this practice sessions will be conducted after 15 and second session of this uh, will be conducted on the 16th of 16th we have second marathon session whatever remaining topics for that will will coming up so compulsory approach is equal to d by 2 cot of beta d by 2 cot of beta comes in the picture right fine now sir over oh, just now we have discussed that sir cutting velocity is nothing but the 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 circumferential velocity of the cutting edge that is vc and that is nothing but pi d n divided by 1000 or multiply by 60 also meter per second or meter per minute what is the drilling time very simple what is the distance i want to travel divided by feed velocity feed velocity is equal to f into n what is f f is nothing but mm per revolution 
and this is nothing but called as revolution per minute revolution per minute and l is nothing but called as a length that we are interested to travel l is nothing but length we are interested to travel length where and what is the length for through hole it will be approach plus compulsory approach plus t thickness of the blade plus over travel and for blind hole only that over travel will not be there please be take take care of this right fine and we have already discussed that okay fine now we are interested to calculate material ribbon rate uh, forming will not be covered today forming will be in the next session forming will be in the next session metal forming sheet metal operation casting uh, that will be in the next session next session marathon 2 will be covered that right fine no worries uh, should we include a uh, numericals also in this session you tell me that after covering this should we include one two three numericals also so that you will get a practice immediately or only some theory has to be covered please write down in the comment box what do you want important questions okay vikas nima yes 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 ajay krishnan yes sir that might be good so that you will also get a practice ki ye numerical aisa aisa solve karna hai because i did not thought that because this is the first time i am uh, engaged with this marathon series and uh, basically so we will also do that next time we will have a concept and one or two numerical not more than that one or two numerical get idea how exactly these things will be come in the picture that will be right and i am talking about next time nahi nahi aaj hum log karenge don't worry right fine right fine so now we are interested to calculate a material removal rate material removal rate now sir what is material removal rate let's say that ki whenever i am selecting a tool of diameter d whenever i am selecting a tool of diameter d and then that tool is penetrated into the direction right that is thickness direction so from what is the cross section area where material will take place the cross section area from where material takes place will be cross section area of the tool that is exactly equal to pi by 4 into d square so this is the cross section material removal takes place and what is the velocity by which this takes place removal takes place what is the velocity by which tool is penetrated into thickness direction that is feed velocity by which by which that material removal takes place so therefore can i say that mrr is exactly equal to simply pi by 4 into d square into f into n pi by 4 into d square into f into n so we can write down mrr is exactly equal to pi by 4 into d square into feed velocity that is f into n so d square is exactly equal to millimeter square feed is exactly equal to mm per revolution and and n is exactly equal to revolution per minute so revolution will get cancelled and answer will come mm cube per minute mm cube per minute please understand this formula material removal rate material removal rate is exactly equal to a pi by 4 into d square into f into n pi by 4 into d square into f into n is it okay pi by 4 into d square into f into n is it okay everyone that will be exactly equal to excellent things will comes in the picture right fine now saying so we can be able to solve number of numericals as far as drilling is concerned we'll introduce ourselves to the milling operation now right important things we have covered now right fine so milling is nothing but a multi-point cutting tool machining operation milling is nothing but what multi-point cutting tool machining operation which is used for removal of the material from the layer of the surface right with the help of a different particular types of tools sometimes entire surface of the material will get machined sometimes certain portion will get machined and variety of milling cutter comes in the picture so i'll say that milling is nothing but multi-point cutting tool operation which is utilized for machining of number of work pieces number of work pieces get machined by this particular or number of work pieces i'll say that number of uh, surfaces will get machine and number of work pieces uh, the number of shape of work pieces get manufactured so now whatever this here there is a one milling cutter where these are nothing but called as cutting edges one cutting edge two cutting edge three cutting edge four cutting edge number of cutting edges are there so now these cutting edges are in contact with work piece while performing machining operation so multiple cutting edges in contact with work piece called as multi-point cutting tool operation we are utilized for producing a flat surface keyways inclined surface helical grooves 2d contouring 3d contourings these all the operations can be done with the help of milling operation with the help of what milling operation comes in the picture now there are different types of milling machines are utilized one is called as a horizontal knee milling machine and second is called as vertical knee milling machine now here you can easily understand that sir 
This is exactly when one horizontal axis is there. On that horizontal axis, this arbor is installed, and on that arbor, there is a milling cutter is installed. And if is there are no teeth shown here, but this is milling cutter is horizontal position. That means the axis of the milling cutter is horizontal. Axis of the milling cutter is horizontal. That's what is called as a horizontal knee milling machine. Whereas in the second picture, you can easily understand that this is my milling cutter is installed, right? And the axis of the milling cutter is exactly in vertical. That's what is called as a vertical knee milling machine. Vertical knee milling machine. And that whatever machine on which we are doing the operation is called as milling machine. The tool that is utilized for machining is called as milling cutter. That is called as a milling cutter. That is nothing but utilized for a machining. And whatever number of number of cutting edges are there on the periphery, these are called as milling teeths. These are called as teeth of a milling cutter. Teeth of that particular milling cutter. Now there are so many types of machining operation comes in the picture. Before that, we need to understand what type of a uh, what type of this particular would say that. Just a minute. What what type of cutters are utilized? The first type of cutter is nothing but called as plane or slab milling cutter. What is a plane or slab milling cutter? A cutter who has a teeth on the outer periphery. Can I say this is the outer periphery? Circumference surface on that milling cutter teeth are there. One teeth is there, second teeth is three, four, and this is nothing but called as a plane or slab milling cutter. And here the axis, axis of that milling cutter, can I say it is parallel to the machine surface? This surface is parallel. This is the surface. And the axis of the milling cutter is exactly parallel to the machine surface. Yes, this is called as a slab or plane milling cutter. Second milling cutters are called as face milling cutter where the cutting edge is there at the bottom face. You can easily understand that these are the cutting edges. These are the cutting teeth that are at the bottom face. They are at the bottom face. And then this is nothing but called as axis of milling cutter. Can I say this axis of milling cutter is normal to the surface which is getting machined. This is called as a, a face milling cutter. Face milling cutter. Now there is a one end milling cutter which is combination of peripheral milling cutter and the face milling cutter. It's a combination. That means now milling cutter teeth. Teeth are there on the periphery or at the face also. Periphery or the face also. Therefore you can say that this is periphery. Teeth are there and as well as at the bottom also there will be teeth will be there. And such particular teeth are utilized or cutter is utilized to creating a slot, pocketing, profile milling operation. How? This is the exactly differences. So therefore first is peripheral milling cutter where axis of milling cutter is parallel to machine surface. Second is called as a, a face milling cutter where axis of milling cutter is normal to machine surface and the, the cutting edges are there on the face. On the first, cutting edges are there on the periphery and in the third case, cutting edges are there on the face as well as along the periphery. So planning or shaping a mirror, planning operation and uh, shaping operation ka metal removal rate, we did not discuss that. Generally, uh, when you talk about planning operation and shaping operation, MRR will not come in the picture because material removal rate, material removal rate, removal rate is major with respect to time, right? Fine. So it is a complex task because what is happening? Tool is moving in the forward direction, some cutting, and the return direction. There is no cutting operation. So generally, MRR calculation is not there in the shaping or planning operation, my dear friends. So you don't require to panic about that. Don't worry, right? Don't worry, Abhishek. Right, fine. Right, fine. Next is nothing but called as a straddle milling cutter. What is in by straddle milling cutter? Sir, let's see that, sir. There are two peripheral milling cutters of a small width. Can I say width of this milling cutter is smaller? They are installed on a horizontal arbor at equidistant or some distance. And then whenever that arbor is rotating, can I say both the milling cutters which are placed at some equidistance will rotate. And therefore, this portion of the material, this portion because this what the workpiece, so this is what exactly you get machine. This is nothing but called as a straddle milling cutter. Straddle milling cutter. And next is called as gang milling cutter. When number of milling cutters are installed on one single arbor and when that single arbor is rotating, all the milling cutters are rotating. That is nothing but called as a gang milling cutter. What is gang milling cutter? Gang means what? Gang means what? A gang. Gang of Wasipur. Gang of New York. That means these tools are coming. Milling cutters are coming in a gang. In together. Together they are coming. There is no necessity that whatever the number of milling cutters that is installed together, they must be of the same diameter and same number of teeth. Not necessarily. The diameter of this particular teeth or diameter of this water milling cutter might be same, might be different. You don't require to panic about that. So when multiple milling cutters are installed on the same armor and if all the milling cutters are engaged during machining operation, called as a gang milling operation. Next milling cutter is called as T-slot milling cutter. It is very unique. 
initially it has a smaller diameter uh, shaft and then the larger diameter milling cutter who has peripheral teeth are being installed and how exactly machining is done it is generally utilized to create a steel slot but before creating T slot this slot has to be created first slotting has to be done this slot has to be created so this slot has to be utilized so that this solid shaft this shaft has to be passed there so this slot is already created and once that slot is created now this particular tool is engaged so this portion will enter here and therefore after that this material will get machine so this material will get machine and that is nothing but called as a t slot will get generated so first we have to use a different particular tool with the help of that first slot has to be created this slot has to be created then one slot is created and completed and then the this particular a t slot cutter will be utilized for creating a t slot it is called as t slot cutter now you must have heard about milling operation there are two types of milling one is called as peripheral milling and second is called as face milling what is peripheral milling Remember one thing in very clear manner, when the axis of rotation of milling cutter is a parallel to machine surface, it's called as peripheral milling. So you see that this is my machine surface horizontal and this is exactly equal to axis of this particular milling cutter. So can I say that sir, axis of milling cutter is parallel to machine surface, is called as peripheral milling, peripheral milling and peripheral milling is performed with the help of a horizontal knee milling machine, horizontal knee milling machine. You can easily understand here. So this is exactly equal to the axis of this particular milling cutter is there because milling cutter is placed in horizontal position, right? And this particular whatever the workpiece is, that workpiece is passing over that milling cutter. So therefore, a flat surface will get machine, flat surface will get manufactured, which means that, which means that axis of rotation of milling cutter, axis of rotation of milling cutter is parallel to machine surface. Axis of rotation of milling cutter is parallel to a machine surface which comes at that particular point, which comes at that particular point now there is a slab milling slab milling there are so many types of milling cutters are there we have already discussed right fine second is called as face milling what is your face milling sir when the axis of rotation of milling cutter is perpendicular to machine surface perpendicular to machine surface right fine so therefore i'll say that sir this is the vertical axis this is exactly equal to vertical axis of that particular milling cutter right sir is there any numerical on backlash in a milling sum times question was there in the test series a backlash ka dikkat nahi hai. you don't require to discuss about backlash in the milling cutter it is related to machine right fine uh, because in the test series they design a variety of different questions but i don't think so we do require that focus on a main point in the milling operation what is main material removal rate is main, main. Then the milling operation uh, calculate the feed velocity that is the main and then most importantly a brown and sharp indexing plate that is indexing in the milling operation is very important these three topics where questions comes in the picture or sometimes we are interested to calculate machining time calculation compulsory approach calculation these are the topics which are very famous which are asked in the examination so face milling is what the face milling is nothing but basically when the axis of milling cutter is perpendicular to machine surface is nothing but called as a face milling and face milling is performed always with a vertical knee milling machine because you can easily understand that this is the milling cutter can i say axis of milling cutter is vertical and which is normal to this particular machine surface called as a face milling which comes at that particular time right fine now sir as far as peripheral milling is concerned there are two types of milling comes in the picture. One is called as up milling and one is called as down milling. What is the up milling? Sir, when, when the, the direction of rotation of cutting, when the direction, when the cutting takes place, when the cutting takes place, if the tool is moving in opposite direction as that of the field, it is nothing but called as basically a up milling. You see that, sir. This is the tool is rotating in clockwise direction. What is the rotation? Tool rotating in clockwise direction. So when these teeth are coming here at the cutting point, can I say that? the the cutting direction is this this is the cutting direction and whereas workpiece is fed in this direction so can i say that they are moving in a opposite direction to each other such a machine machining operation is called as up milling and why it is called as up milling because you can easily understand that my milling cutter tits are engaged to the workpiece and they try to lift the workpiece in upward direction they try to lift the workpiece in upward direction and the chips comes out from there called as a up milling where initially the chip thickness is zero and gradually when the tool is moving can i say that when the milling cutter is rotating can I say that and the feed is given to the work table that thickness of the chip keeps on increasing. So in the up milling, the thickness of chip increases from 0 to maximum, 0 to maximum and this is that exactly chip is taken out away from this particular process. That is a chip value is increases from where? From 0 to maximum. Initially 0 chip, then maximum chip. How? The tool is coming 
teeth will engage and slowly thickness of the chip continuously keep on increasing in this particular case it is nothing but called as up milling right fine in the down milling it is exactly opposite of it what is exactly down milling it is exactly opposite of it right fine exactly opposite right how exactly it is like exactly opposite let's see that sir this is exactly equal to opposite let me take that to the left side so that you'll understand how exactly it is in a opposite direction right fine this is exactly equal to in a opposite direction right fine so this is the exactly equal to what is down milling in the down milling what is happening let's say that sir whenever my tool is coming and touching to this particular that tool is coming and touching the workpiece now the feed motion of this particular workpiece is given in opposite direction this is nothing but called as my feed motion feed motion is given in what opposite direction feed is given in opposite direction so if the feed is given opposite direction so now can i say that initially billing cutter will come touch there and then gradually gradually can i say that the thickness of the milling teeth or thickness of this particular chip will keep on reducing will keep on what reducing and therefore i'll say that sir this is exactly equal to the chip will come in the picture and at the end the thickness of the chip will become zero at the end thickness will come to the zero and this is nothing but called as a cutting whenever the cutting takes place the direction of cutting and the feed motion both are same because what happens let's say that suppose one milling cutter is coming and touching here right at this point and then it will do machining operation now whenever that milling cutter is rotating the workpiece is also giving the feed the workpiece is moving slowly in the forward direction workpiece is moving slowly in the forward direction so when the workpiece starts moving slowly in the forward direction can i say that this teeth will come and touch here so now can i say that this will be exactly equal to my teeth or this is exactly equal to chip comes in the picture this is exactly equal to chip comes in the picture so i'll say that sir this will be exactly equal to my chip this is exactly equal to my chip which is coming at that particular point so this is exactly equal to my chip comes in the picture right so initially the chip width or chip thickness is very large but as gradually it moves in the forward direction thickness of the chip slowly 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 so reducing and it becomes zero so can i say that thickness of the chip increases from maximum to minimum thickness of the chip increases from maximum to minimum so i'll say that sir this is exactly equal to my down milling and why down milling because you know that sir when the milling cutter touches to this particular workpiece it will try to push the workpiece in a downward direction that's what is called as downward milling or called as what down milling down milling comes in the picture right fine up milling and the down milling right fine now this is the important story as far as gate examination is concerned slab milling or face milling are are slab milling or face milling case is same hai abhishek let's see what is slab milling slab milling cutter right slab milling cutter is there slab milling cutter is only utilized during a peripheral milling operation right fine what is the slab milling you you see this is a slab milling slab milling has number of teeth on the periphery circumferential periphery right fine now what is the face milling cutter this is face milling cutter you can understand here in the slab milling this is the axis of this particular workpiece right or axis of the tool can i say axis of the tool is parallel to machine surface whereas in the face milling operation axis of this particular tool is how much is the axis of the tool can i say it is normal to machine surface exactly opposite drama slab and a face they are all different between each other they are all different right slab milling cutter and face milling cutter they are different from each other is it okay everyone yes yes fine now we'll come back to here let's take a drama here very importantly sir whatever the milling cutter that we have selected it has number of teeth it has what number of teeth on the periphery milling cutter has number of teeth on the periphery milling cutter has what number of teeth on the periphery right fine is it visible to you guys everybody so i'll just shift a little bit so that you'll understand let me check okay now it will be okay i think so okay fine okay great so let's see now it's a very important drama we need to understand so however number of teeth are there on the periphery let's say that a z number of teeth are there in the periphery z number of teeth are there on the periphery right fine z number of teeth are there on the periphery z number of teeth are there on the periphery on the periphery now sir let's say 
whenever my milling cutter is rotating 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 so one teeth will come and touch to this particular workpiece at this location one teeth will come and touch to this workpiece at this location and continuously this teeth will be in contact with the workpiece along this particular arc they will be in contact with workpiece right this is the path by which tool will move so tool will move over the workpiece by a path 0 1 this is the path the tool will move but sir my workpiece is not remain stationary so my workpiece is also slowly moving in the forward direction so when the workpiece is moving in the forward direction slowly so can i say that because of the movement of the workpiece in the forward direction the path followed by this particular tool will be exactly equal to 0 2 this is the 0 2 the path will follow right that means workpiece moving and that's why the path followed by the tool over that workpiece will be 0 2 and this is exactly equal to my chip will get manufactured during that this is exactly what the chip will get manufactured during that now whatever the time whatever the time for which whatever the time for which my the uh, teeth of the tool that is that whatever the teeth is there of milling cutter will be in contact with this particular whatever the workpiece is so from 0 to 2 can i say that my tooth will be in contact with this particular workpiece and after 2 my that teeth will leave with the contact what teeth whatever we have discussed that one tooth initials initially engage with the workpiece will contact with workpiece 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 at the two point it will leave the engage it will leave the contact with that particular workpiece so 0 2 is the location 0 2 is the path along which my one teeth will be in contact with that particular workpiece so in that contact time certain distance my workpiece will travel in the forward direction and whatever the linear distance advances by my workpiece in that particular span is nothing but called as feed per tooth feed per tooth per tooth per tooth when the one tooth is passing when the one tooth is passing over the workpiece how much is the linear distance my work table is traveling when the one tooth is passing from engagement to the exit during that distance or during that time how much distance my work table is traveling that is nothing but called as a feed per tooth feed per tooth feed per tooth are you accepting everybody feed per tooth what is feed per tooth the the time time or distance my work table is advancing when my one tooth is engaged and exited that is called as during that time how much distance it is traveling is called as feed per tooth feed per tooth feed per tooth ft right fine z are the number of teeth how many number of teeth are there z number of teeth are there. and feed per tooth is exactly equal to ft feed per tooth is ft so when when entire number of teeth are passing over the workpiece one teeth is passed second tooth third tooth fourth tooth so and so on so when all the number of tooths are passed over the workpiece this is nothing but in a one complete rotation when when all the teeth are passing over the workpiece my milling cutter will rotate one complete rotation during that how much distance my work table is advancing can I able to calculate yes sir that is nothing but called as a feed in mm per revolution that is nothing but number of teeth z multiplied by a feed per tooth number of teeth z multiplied by feed per tooth so therefore f is equal to z into ft and that is nothing but mm per revolution because z is nothing but number of teeth multiplied by that is feed is nothing but mm per what revolution mm per or feed is nothing but mm per tooth mm per tooth and particularly in whenever this all the n number of tooths are passing one complete rotation takes place of the milling cutter so this is nothing but called as a feed mm per revolution now sir that milling cutter also might be rotating by certain rpm the milling cutter also rotating by certain rpm let's say that n is exactly equal to rpm of the milling cutter what is that let's say that n is exactly equal to rpm of milling cutter so can i say that sir a feed velocity will come exactly equal to what is the feed velocity will come so can i say that feed velocity will come exactly equal to z into ft into n that is mm per minute z into ft into n that is mm per minute comes in the picture is it okay z into ft into n mm per minute because in one rotation this much distance in these many rotations how much distance so multiply by that rpm so z into f2 into n mm per minute so i'll say z is number of teeth on the milling cutter n is nothing but the rpm of the milling cutter f is nothing but the table feed in mm per minute small f is nothing but the table feed in mm per revolution and ft is nothing but feed per tooth all the things will be required while solving numericals all the things are required while solving numericals so please remember this z into ft into n is nothing but feed in uh, that is feed in mm per mm per minute right fine mm per minute right fine now sir we are interested to calculate a milling time calculation what is that milling time calculation will be there milling time calculation 
for milling time calculation let's say that sir i'm taking a side view of this particular a peripheral milling cutter peripheral means what there are a number of teeth are in the periphery and axis of the milling cutter will be parallel to machine surface so perpendicular to this there is axis of the milling cutter and that whatever circle is assume that there are number of teeth are there on the periphery right fine and we know that in a milling operation feed is given to the work table milling cutter is not moving the work, work piece is moving right fine now initially this particular work piece metallic plate which is having a width also width also is there but it is hidden at, at this particular moment so now to start the milling operation to start the milling operation can i say that my this point of the work piece will reach here then the machining operation will start then my milling cutter will comes in contact with work piece so whatever distance my work table and work piece is moving that is nothing but called as approach distance so once approach distance is completed can i say that my milling cutter will come in contact with work piece or work piece will come in contact with milling cutter now once the work piece comes in contact with milling cutter my machining will start but but i want to generate a depth of cut d that is this is the portion of material up to that depth we want to machine but now immediately only tip portion of this particular work piece is getting machined so to start machining the entire depth can i say that by this point this point has to reach here this point has to reach here and therefore slowly my tool will reach here slowly i'll say that sir where this particular tool will move and our work piece will move here and this work piece will move here and then it is moving here can i say that sir this will be position is coming this will be a position is coming this will be position is coming and then i'll say that sir the actual machining will start can i say that now actual machining will start up to death and therefore this distance is nothing but called as compulsory approach compulsorily i have to travel that distance then the entire depth of cut will start machining right that is called as lc and now at the end can i say that sir this is exactly equal to this point work piece has moved this point has come here now i'll say that entire machining is completed and then i'll travel extra distance forward so that is nothing but called as over travel distance so can i say that sir again total distance that that work piece has to travel is exactly equal to approach plus compulsory approach plus length of the work piece plus over travel comes to the picture approach will be there over travel will be there compulsory approach will be there if there is no approach in over travel neglecting approach in over travel then this approach in over travel will become zero this approach will become zero over travel will become zero and then compulsory approach is by default there compulsory approach has to be there no doubt and denying fact of it no doubt and denying fact of it right fine is it okay everyone yes so therefore i will talk about how much is time required for machining operation so it's very simple machining time is exactly equal to distance i want to travel divided by feed velocity distance travel is exactly equal to a mm how much distance distance travel is exactly equal to mm and how much exactly equal to time can i say that time is exactly equal to a mm per minute mm per minute this mm will get cancelled and answer will come exactly equal to minute answer will come what machining time very simple machining time but sir here compulsory approach is not being considered because approach uh, will be given in the problem uh, the the length of the work piece will be given in the problem over travel will be given in the problem uh, but compulsory approach is the problem that we need to calculate here what we have to calculate now compulsory approach distance we have to consider compulsory approach distance anyhow we have to consider we have to consider compulsory approach distance right Com compulsory approach distance we have to calculate right fine now sir there are different machining operations are there out of that selective fuse are being selected to calculate a compulsory approach right fine now we are selecting first that is called a slab and plane milling operation where the axis of milling cutter is parallel to machine surface and now i'm taking a side view of that then only i'll be able to see what is exactly equal to compulsory approach comes in the picture side view i'm observing right side view i'm observing once i take a side view this is exactly equal to milling cutter of diameter this is what exactly work piece is there right fine and we know that who is moving my work piece is moving my work piece is moving but for understanding point of view let's assume that my tool is moving here so it will be easy for understanding but actually work piece is moving so now milling cutter is in contact here for starting the entire machining operation can i say that sir my milling cutter this point has to reach here so this distance is nothing but called as compulsory approach compulsory approach right fine now from the geometry there are three things i'll say d is diameter of milling cutter small d is nothing but depth of cut and r is nothing but radius of this particular from here we calculate it and we'll get compulsory approach is exactly equal to a root of small d into d minus d this is called as a compulsory approach comes in the picture what is that a root of root of small d into capital d minus small d that is exactly equal to compulsory approach coming as far as peripheral milling is concerned as far as peripheral milling is concerned small d stands for depth of cut and capital d stands for a diameter of milling cutter that we have selected diameter of milling cutter that is selected at this particular moment the second case 
now it is called as a symmetric face milling face milling means what face milling i have to look from the top साइड व्यू का कुछ काम नहीं है टॉप मतलब कैसे टॉप से देखो फेस मिलिंग कटर वेर एक्सिस ऑफ मिलिंग कटर इज परपेंडिकुलर टू मशीन सर्फेस वट एवर दिस मशीन सर्फेस इज देर एक्सिस परपेंडिकुलर 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 इट हेस्ट बी परपेंडिकुलर 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 सो देर फॉर कैन से दैट सर इन अमेट्रिक फेस मिलिंग इन वॉट सिमेट्रिक फेस मिलिंग माई एक्सिस इज एक्सैक्टली गुड टू नॉर्मल 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 टू मशीन सर्फेस नाउ दिस एंटायर सिमेट्रिकल फेस मिलिंग कहां से देख रहा हूं टॉप से देख रहा हूं वेन आई लुक फ्रॉम द टॉप दिस इज माई डायमीटर ऑफ मिलिंग कटर राइट एंड दिस इज एक्सैक्टली इक्वल टू अ विथ ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्क पीस वट डायमेंशन कैन आई सी फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द टॉप विथ डायमेंशन विथ डायमेंशन राइट फाइन Now, sir, when the machining will start, when this point, diametrical point, will reach to the one dash, and these two points will reach to the two dash, oh, 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 entire machining operation, entire surface will start machining, and therefore I'll say that this distance is called as compulsory approach LC, right? This is a symmetric face milling. That means axis will coincide to the axis of the workpiece, symmetrical. So this distance is W by two, and then after the derivation, my dear friend, there is one equation is coming. What is that? Compulsory approach LC is exactly equal to one half. Compulsory approach LC is exactly one half. Into capital D minus root of a d square minus w square minus root of 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 d square minus w square is the answer comes in the picture. So I'll say that sir, compulsory approach is exactly equal to 1 half into d minus root of d square minus w square d square minus w square right fine capital d stands for diameter of cutter and w stands for width of the workpiece width of the workpiece width of the workpiece right fine right fine now this is unsymmetrical face milling for unsymmetrical face milling also there is one answer is coming that is nothing but a length of a cut or unsymmetrical face milling means what unsymmetrical face milling in very simple axis is not coinciding to the axis of the workpiece axis of milling cutter is not coinciding to axis of workpiece forget about this figure you look into the top figure right fine where this is axis of the milling cutter where the axis of the workpiece is like that they are not coinciding there is offset is available there is what offset is available and based on that geometry we got it the compulsory approach is exactly equal to one half into d minus root of d square minus w i square where w i is nothing but the imaginary width of the workpiece and that imaginary width of the workpiece is nothing but exactly equal to imaginary width of the workpiece exactly equal to what is coming width of the workpiece plus 2 into offset plus 2 into what offset plus 2 into offset which comes in the picture have you heard about that yes sir you heard about that yes you already saw all number of numericals and i know that already you are master in this right fine and then next is very simple that is called as a end milling that is called as calculation of compulsory approach as far as end milling is concerned end milling is what end milling is the pocket milling profile milling where end milling cutter where number of milling cutter teeth are there on the periphery as well as face so therefore i am generating this pocket so it's very simple sir my this diametrical point will come one will come to the one dash and two will come to the two dash that is compulsory approach can i say compulsory approach will be d by 2 then Compulsory approach will be straight away d by two. Compulsory approach will be straight away what? D by two, d by two, d by two, d by two, d by two. Compulsory approach will be what? D by two. Yes. Fine. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Now, sir, there is derivation is done. Right. Calculate the maximum chip thickness and average chip thickness because in every milling operation we know that, sir. The chip thickness is ranging from zero to maximum or maximum to zero. In up milling, it is ranging from zero to maximum. And in down milling, it is ranging from maximum to zero. In up milling, it is ranging from zero to maximum. And in down milling, it is ranging from maximum to zero. That is called as a a what average chip? Uh, that is called as a chip thickness, right? So maximum chip thickness is calculated by derivation two into f divided by z into n root of d by d, where f is nothing but called as a feed in mm per minute. Z is nothing but number of teeths. On the milling cutter, n is nothing but RPM. Small d is called as depth of cut, and capital D is nothing but called as diameter of a milling cutter. And average, average is what then? Minimum chip thickness is zero. Maximum chip thickness is this much. Average is what? Minimum chip thickness for maximum divided by two is average. So you have to divide it, this equation by two. So if I divide it by two, two will get cancelled. So we'll get answer f divided by z into n root of small d divided by capital D. Root of small d divided by capital D. That is nothing but called as a average and maximum chip thickness. Maximum and average chip thickness. Question was asked. Question was asked in gate examination. Mean. What is mean by mean? Yes, average means called as mean. Very correct. Mean chip thickness comes in the picture. And now here is 
uh, the thing which is coming called as indexing in the milling operation. Indexing in the milling operation. Right, fine. Now, sir, why and what is been by indexing in the milling operation? It's a very simple drama. Sir, indexing is nothing but rotation of the workpiece by typical degree. Rotation of the workpiece by typical degree to generate a or uh, divide the periphery into some equal subdivisions. And for that reason, that indexing comes in the picture. That is what the operation of rotating the job. Operation of rotating the job through, throughout two consecutive operations for, for generating or dividing the space or the periphery of the cylindrical workpiece into equispace division. And that is nothing but called as indexing in the milling operation. Simple manner, suppose I want to manufacture a hexagonal. I want to manufacture, I want to manufacture, I'll say that, sir. What I want to manufacture? I want to manufacture one hexagonal cross section workpiece with the help of a cylindrical workpiece. That means, can I say entire circumferential surface, that is, this circle is divided into six equispace. That is called as six subdivisions. We have to divide that. That is, periphery has to be divided into six equispace subdivisions. Six equispace subdivisions, it has to be divided. So, now, can I say that sub equispace division, which means that if I talk about that, sir, I'll draw this line. That means, what is the angle subtended at the center by each, each division? What is the angle subtended by each division? Can I say that angle subtended by each division is exactly equal to a 360 degree divided by 6. So, angle subtended at the center is exactly equal to 360 degree divided by 6. That is exactly equal to 60 degree. That means this angle is exactly equal to 60 degree. Right point. Right point. So, between two consecutive operations, can I say that this workpiece has to be rotated by 60 degree and my milling cutter or this workpiece will be traveling and this surface will get machine. So, this surface has to get machine. Once this surface has to get machine, this work swiss has to be rotated by again 60 degree. Once rotated 60 degree, this surface will get machine. Again rotated by 60 degree, again this surface will get machine. So therefore, the operation of rotating the job through the required angle between two consecutive operation, between two consecutive operation to divide the periphery of the job into some equal subdivisions. Into what? Some equal subdivisions is nothing but called as basically indexing in the milling operation. Indexing is nothing but simply we have to divide the periphery into some equal subdivisions and for that we have to rotate the workpiece by certain degree. We have to rotate the workpiece by certain degree is nothing but called as indexing in the milling. Indexing in the milling which comes in the picture. Is it true? Yes. Right? Fine. So, I will say that sir, let's, let's talk about that. Now sir, in the indexing whenever we talk about, right? Sometimes it is also called as suppose I have given a gear blank, right? I have given and I want to produce a n number of gears on the periphery. How many n number of teeth are has to be cut on that gear? So, n number of teeth that means can I say that sir, this milling cutter you can say that easily this milling cutter is cutting one teeth. Then this particular workpiece is rotating. Workpiece what? Rotating. Again one teeth will be created. Again it will be rotating. One teeth will be creating. And how many number of teeth is to created in the periphery? Small n number of teeth has to be created on the periphery. Small n number of teeth has to be created on the periphery. Which means that entire periphery has to be subdivided into small n number, small n number of equidivisions. And for dividing that particular periphery into small n number of equidivisions. Which means that this workpiece has to be rotated by by every two operation that workpiece has to be rotated by what degree 360 degree divided by small n if the small n is nothing but 36 if i say that sir i want to create a 36 number of 36 number of teeth on the periphery so angle subtended by it each teeth is 360 degree by 36 that is a 10 degree that means between every two consecutive operation my workpiece has to be rotated by 10 degree 10 degree 10 degree which means that we can easily understand that how exactly this is? So, angle between this, right, 10 degree. This is what? 1 teeth. What is the angle? 10 degree. What is this angle? It is also a 10 degree. What is this angle? This is also a 10 degree. What is this angle? Can I say that this is also a 10 degree, 10 degree. That means, can I say, between every two consecutive operation, work is at 10 degree, 10 degree, 10 degree, 10 degree. And therefore, my entire periphery will get divided into 36 equispace division, which means that 36 number of teeth will get manufactured. How many? 36 number of teeth will get manufactured at this particular point. Are you accepting everyone? 36 number of teeth will get manufactured. Right, fine. Now, for producing this particular, there will be one head is created. That is nothing but called as universal dividing head. What is created? What is used? Universal dividing head.
what is universal dividing head let's say that this is the front view is there there is one crank is there and there is one crank plate is there what is there a crank is there and the crank plate this is exactly the crank this is called as a crank plate is there right fine and now if i go you you must have heard about that abhi aur kya cover hoga ah mujhe pata nahi kya cover hoga nahi hoga how many hours of class uh, is uh, preferable in one day for this marathon 5 hours 6 hours or uh, 9 hours 10 hours how many hours you preferred my team please uh, take this poll also you are taking the number of polls na you ask them that how many number of hours daily has to be consider how many hours of marathon hours are uh, feasible daily that poll also you take it 8 hours okay fine 5 to 6 hours 5 to 6 hours vikas nikam 5 to 6 malesham 5 to 6 5 to 6 5 to 6 5 to 6 right ajay krishna 6 to 8 5 shivam singh okay pratik nikam 8 hours And whatever we are covering, I think so. You went already or went through this particular concept. You must have went all these concepts. Right, fine. Uh, before proceeding, we'll take a five minute break and will that proceeding, right? ओके थोड़ा फाइव मिनट्स का ब्रेक लेंगे थोड़ा रिफ्रेश होते हैं राइट फिर विल स्टार्ट करें फाइव मिनट्स थोड़ा लेंगे
Hello, my dear friends. The session, share the session with your friends, motivate us so that we'll post a beautiful content which will boost your preparation. Right, fine. We are working extremely hard for your preparation. So let's share and take benefit from the same thing. Like the share, comment the share, like this session, comment, comment on the session. Spread this session, right, fine. Let's start a next thing which is nothing but called as indexing in the milling operation. Right? What is it? Indexing in milling operation. So whenever between two consecutive operations we have to rotate the workpiece by a constant degree of rotation, it's very complex by a normal way and therefore there is a universal indexing head is utilized. What is utilized? Universal dividing head. Now how the structure of universal dividing head is there? Let's understand. Sir, in the universal dividing head, this is exactly good. I'll show you the multiple pictures so that you'll understand. How exactly equal to that universal dividing head is there? So this is exactly equal to a picture by which you can understand number of things about of universal dividing head. Let's see that. This is exactly equal to my crank is right. This is exactly equal to my crank handle. That crank handle can rotate, right? Fine. The crank handle is installed on this particular shaft. That is nothing but called as worm shaft. The crank handle is installed in the worm shaft, and the worm has a worm worms. Worm shaft has a worm, and these worms are meshed with a worm wheel. Worm wheel is there, right? Fine. But this whatever this index plate is there, who has a concentric rings of whole circles. You can say that there is a simple simple plate is there. And on that simple plate, there are number of whole circles, concentric rings of whole circles are there. Concentric rings of whole circle are there. That is not installed on this particular shaft. And it is not connected to this particular crank handle. It is installed somewhere else. That is nothing but there is a back gear system is developed there. There is a one more system is developed, developed back gear. So this is exactly back gear system. And then the bevel gear system. And then it is attached to that. So this crank plate is attached to it. Right? Right now it is not shown here. Right now it is not shown in the back gear system, but it is attached there. So, at the center of this metallic plate, there is a hole is there and on that particular, that through the hole, this shaft is passing and on that shaft, crank is being installed. So, whenever the crank handle is rotating, can I say that this particular worm wheel will rotate or worm shaft will rotate? Worm shaft is engaged to this particular worm wheel, right fine. And now, this whatever the shaft is there, this is called a spindle, this is called a center and on that center, there is a workpiece is installed. There is what? Workpiece is installed. This is the way by which workpiece is installed there. Workpiece is installed and this workpiece has to be rotated by a required number of degree between two consecutive operations that is called as indexing. Right, fine. So this is nothing but called as my particular. This is nothing but called as particular structure is there. And at the back side also, there is one structure is there. What is the structure? So this is my spindle, right? This is my spindle, right, fine. That is called as a spindle shaft or that is called as a worm wheel shaft because worms are there, worm wheel is there. And now at the back of this, there is a, a change gear system is installed. And now this is exactly bevel gear, which is utilized to rotate or transmit the rotation between perpendicular shafts. And on that bevel gear shaft, this particular index plate is installed. Index plate is installed. This is nothing but called as my particular structure of a dividing head, universal dividing head. But whenever I look from the front, can I say that, sir, I don't see what is at the back. I don't see what is exactly at the back of this particular case. Now let's understand in very very simplified manner. Here also we can understand the same structure is there. Let's understand the inner structure of that. What is that? Sir, this is called as a index crank. This is nothing but called as a crank handle. Crank handle is installed on this particular shaft. That is called as worm shaft. Right fine. And this is exactly equal to a plate called as index plate who has a concentric rings of whole circle. But whenever I am rotating this particular crank handle, this plate is remaining stationary and constant, but this particular shaft will rotate, shaft will rotate. So movement, my shaft is rotating, can I say that these worms are indexing this particular worm wheel and whatever the worm wheel is selected, in a standard manner, this worm wheel has 40 number of standard stitch. How many number of stitch are there? That worm wheel has 40 number of standard stitch. Standard number of stitch on the worm wheel are 40. 
standard number of teeth on the worm wheel are 40 number of teeth are there. How many? 40. And you know one complete, you must understand that. We if, if this worm wheel or sorry, this worm shaft is rotating by one complete rotation. You know one complete rotation of the worm shaft. Can I say that this worm will get advances or index by one teeth? By one teeth, that means if the crank is rotating, crank handle is rotating one time, this worm shaft will rotate by one time and it will index this particular this index this particular worm wheel by one particular teeth, one teeth. And whatever this worm wheel is there, worm wheel is installed on this particular shaft. This is what exactly shaft. And back side, can I say that that is nothing but spindle? That is nothing but what spindle? You can easily understand that. Oh, this this is exactly equal to worm wheel, and worm wheel is installed onto the spindle. And on that spindle, my workpiece is installed. My workpiece is installed. Is it okay, everyone? On that, what is installed? Workpiece is installed at that particular point. Workpiece is installed at that particular point. Is it okay, everybody? Yes. We are understanding. Yes. So therefore, let's say that, sir. Now, what is happening, sir? If I want to rotate this workpiece by one rotation, that means we have to rotate this particular wheel, worm wheel by one rotation. That means all the forty number of teeth has to be indexed. All the forty number of teeth has to be indexed. And to index this teeth by forty number, can I say that this worm wheel should be rotated or worm shaft will be rotated by forty times? That means crank has to be rotated forty times. So when the crank is rotating forty times, one, two, three, four, forty times, all these forty teeth will get indexed. And my spindle will rotate by one time. My spindle will rotate by one time. My workpiece will rotate by one time. That means, can I say that speed reduction ratio is exactly to one by forty? What is the speed reduction ratio? Speed is reducing by one by forty. Speed reduction ratio is one by forty, one by forty, one by forty. And then I'll say that ICM stands for index crank moment, and WM stands for WPM stands for workpiece moment. Oh, how is the degree by which workpiece rotated called as WPM that is workpiece moment workpiece moment workpiece moment and ICM stands for indexing crank moment indexing crank moment is called as a index crank moment index crank moment index crank moment is nothing but called as a ICM and WM stands for a workpiece moment workpiece moment it is called as a workpiece moment index crank moment and workpiece moment index crank moment and workpiece moment which comes at that particular point index crank moment and workpiece moment which is coming at that particular point is it true everybody yes so it was written here 40 rotation of crank workpiece rotated by one rotation workpiece rotated by one rotation so therefore i'll say that icm by workpiece rotation that ratio is exactly 40 by 140 by 1 this is what exactly case is is there anyone available here right fine okay now let's say that sir in a simple manner if i say that index crank motion is one rotation index crank motion is one rotation that means exactly 360 degree rotation 360 degree rotation comes in the picture index crank rotation is exactly equal to 360 index crank movement index crank that means crank is rotated by one rotation right fine and workpiece rotation is exactly to one so if i say that sir for a for a one rotation of the workpiece that is exactly the 360 degree rotation can i say that index crank motion is 40 index crank motion is what 40 if my index crank is rotated by only one rotation right i know that whenever index crank that is crank is rotating by by 40 times my workpiece rotated by one time so now that means one time rotation that means 360 degree if my crank rotated by only one time how much degree of workpiece will rotate right so therefore i'll calculate here that is theta will come like that 360 degree by 40 that means 9 degree which means that so if my crank rotated by one rotation my work is rotated by 9 degree work is rotated by 9 degree that is what speed reduction it comes in the picture so i'll say that one rotation of uh, one rotation of index crank is equal to 1 by 14th rotation of my workpiece 1 by 40th rotation of my workpiece right fine now next question is coming find out required number of crank rotation to rotate the workpiece by 36 degree so how many number of rotations of crank required to rotate the workpiece by 36 degree sir you know one rotation of crank workpiece will rotate by workpiece will rotate by what 9 degree was to rotate by what 9 degree now for 36 degree can i say 9 degree plus 9 degree plus 9 degree plus 9 degree that means can i say that if my crank is rotated by four times four times 
can I say that 36 degree rotation will take place? That is the high written here. Index crank rotation is 1. Workpiece rotated by 9 degree. Now we want to rotate by 36 degree. Therefore, how much exactly equal to index crank rotations required? Number of rotations are exactly equal to 4. Number of rotations required exactly equal to 4. Is it accepted everybody? Yes. And therefore, this is exactly equal to index crank motion is there. But now there are different methods are developed as far as indexing is concerned. And the first method is nothing but called as direct or rapid indexing. Very simple method. Direct indexing or rapid indexing. Direct indexing or rapid indexing. And whenever I say direct and rapid indexing, in the direct and rapid indexing, whatever that worm wheel and the worm shaft is there, it is dismantled. I don't use that. We have seen that crank, that index crank rotation, index crank motion, index crank universal dividing head. In the universal dividing head, crank is there, crank plate is there, that worm wheel is there, worm shaft is there and blah, blah, blah. I do one thing that I dismantle everything. As far as what? Direct and rapid indexing. And I am designing one particular a group plate. That group plate, there are two types of group plates. One is called as 24 group plate and second is called as 36 group plate. 36 group plate and 24 group plate. Now I am discussing about 24 group plate. What is in the group plate? Along the periphery, that whatever 360 degree plate is, cylindrical plate is there. Along that periphery, equidistant, equispace, 24 grooves are created. Groove number 1, groove number 2, groove number 3, groove number 4, groove number 5, 6. How many number of grooves are there? 24 group plate. That means in a simple manner, I'll, I'll see that along the periphery, 24 number of tits are there on the plate. 24 number of tits are there on the plate. And that metallic plate is directly installed on my, my spindle. Where is the spindle boss? Where is the spindle? Don't get confused. Very, very simple. Sir, this is exactly equal to my spindle, right? This is spindle is coming. And on that spindle, this is exactly equal to my workpiece is installed, right? Fine. On this workpiece is installed, right? Fine. Here also we can easily say that this is exactly equal to workpiece installed on this particular spindle shaft, right? Fine. Now what I'm doing at the back side, whatever this arrangement is there, I'm deleting that all the arrangement and on that spindle shaft, directly this particular disc is installed, directly disc is installed. That is nothing but called as 24 group plate or exactly equal to a 36 group plate. And 36 grooves plate is nothing but what? Along the periphery, there are 24 grooves are there or along the periphery, there are 36 number of grooves are there, right? Fine. So if I take this plate and this is nothing but called as a spring loaded arbor or spring loaded pointer. That spring loaded pointer is just utilized for, for avoiding the unnecessary rotation of this disc plate and in any direction. Right, fine. So this can be get lifted here and then this particular index plate or this groove plate can be rotated by required number of that grooves and then this particular jammer or this particular pointer can be locked there so that the index plate will not rotate. And that index plate is installed on where? Directly on the spindle. So which means that if my index plate rotated, if my index plate rotated, can I say that this spindle will rotate? As the spindle is rotating, can I say workpiece will also rotate? As simple as that. Now if on the periphery, there are 24 grooves are there, which means that the entire periphery has 24 number of teeth. So what is the angle subtended by one teeth? What is the angle subtended by one teeth at the center? Let's say the theta angle subtended at one teeth. That is exactly 360 degree divided by 24, which is exactly equal to 15 degree. That is exactly what 15 degree angle is subtended at the center. Right? Fine. Between two consecutive, between two consecutive teeth, what is the angle? That is angle is exactly equal to 360 divided by 24. Very correct. That is a 15 degree. Now you tell me that, you tell me that, suppose I am rotating this particular plate by, I am rotating this plate by one groove, one groove. That means rotated, this, this whatever pointer is lifted, the plate is rotated by one groove and again pointer is being placed there. Therefore, can I say that this, this particular spindle will rotate by a 15 degree and this workpiece will also rotate by 15 degree, isn't it? Isn't it? It is rotated by what? 15 degree, 15 degree, 15 degree? Yes, absolutely correct. So therefore, it was written there. As a group plate is advances by one group, group plate advances by one group, that means it rotated one group is exactly spindle or workpiece rotated by 15 degree. Spindle or workpiece rotated by what? 15 degree, as simple as that. Is it okay? Yes. Is it okay, everybody? Yes. Right, fine. Let's talk about now this question. Find out number of groove advancement. Find out number of groove advancement. To rotate the workpiece by 60 degree with the help of rapid indexing having 24 group plate. So we have 24 group plate and we have to rotate the workpiece by 60 degree. How many number of groove advancement should be there? 
If I advance groove and that plate is rotated by one groove, workpiece should rotate by 15 degree. One more groove, again 15 degree. One more groove, again 15 degree. So, I will say that sir, one groove will rotate the workpiece by 15 degree. Now, how many grooves I have to rotate? So, to rotate by 60 degree. So, therefore, I can say that sir, definitely the number of groove passment or number of grooves advancement is exactly equal to through. How many groove advancement? Four. Number of groove advancement is exactly equal to four comes in the picture. How many? Five. But every time, do I require to do like that? We don't require to do like that. It's very simple. Very simple. Sir, if I want to divide or I want to rotate the workpiece by 60 degree between two consecutive operations, which means that how many equispace division that periphery is going to create? So I'll say that, sir, number of divisions periphery is going to create is exactly equal to 360 degree divided by 60. 360 degree divided by 60, that is nothing but a 6 divisions it is going to get created. How many divisions? 6, because we know that between two consecutive operations, work is rotated by 60 degree. A uh, one of over 60 degree, again operation completed 60 degree, operation completed 60 degree. That means entire periphery is divided or entire periphery is divided into 6 sub-equal subdivisions. 6 subdivisions in which it is divided, right? So, I will say that the number of subdivisions is exactly to 6. Exactly to what? 6. Now, sir, how many number of grew advancement required? That grew advancement directly exactly equal to that grew advancement is exactly equal to 24 divided by n that is exactly equal to 4. That is what exactly we have discussed. The 4 number of grew advancement is required. You don't require to calculate like that. You don't require to calculate like that. You just do and just one thing. What is that? Grew is exactly equal to 24 divided by n. n stands for how many number of subdivisions we want to create. How many number of subdivisions into which periphery need to get divided? 24 divided by n, you will get the answer. You don't trust me. Let's say take one example. Suppose I want to divide a or I want to rotate the workpiece by 45 degree between two consecutive operations. So 45 degree means how many number of subdivisions we want to create or we are creating 360 degree divided by a 45 degree which means exactly equal to a 8 divisions right 8 divisions is the actual delivery. So how many number of grew advancement so number of grew advancement is exactly equal to 24 divided by 8 that is exactly equal to 3 grew advancement and it is very simple that you know 1 grew advancement 15 degree. 2 grew advancement 30 degree and 3 grew advancement it is exactly equal to 45 degree 45 degree 45 degree. Is it okay everyone? So this is nothing but called as grew advancement comes in the picture. How many? 3 grew advancement and therefore it is directly written here. So number of grew advancement is exactly 24 divided by n. But now the question is that is it possible to divide the periphery into any sub equal divisions? Suppose I want to divide the periphery into a 5 sub equal divisions. 5 sub divisions. Now I will say that how many grew advancement? Number of grew advancement is exactly equal to 24 divided by n that is 24 divided by 5. 24 divided by 5. So, I will say that 5 into 4, 20, right, divided by 4 by 5, right, fine. So, I know that, sir, the 4 grooves can be passed. How to pass that 4 by 5 grooves? How to pass that 4 by 5 grooves? Is it possible? No. That means with the help of rapid indexing or direct indexing, any subdivisions not possible to produce. <laughs> any subdivisions are not possible. Any subdivisions are not possible to produce. I think impossible. Only subdivisions, only periphery can be divided into equal subdivisions only by the number which is dividing 24 by a round up number. That is nothing but sir, a 24 grouplet can produce any number of subdivisions out of 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24 because they are dividing this particular 24 completely. There is no fraction is coming and if it is fraction is generating, such kind of subdivisions are not possible to produce by this particular rapid or direct indexing. Rapid or direct indexing cannot produce such kind of subdivisions. Is it possible to produce such divisions? No, not possible. Never, not possible, right? And therefore, next plate is coming called as 36 group. So, instead of 24 number of, instead of 24 number of uh, grooves on the periphery, now we have, now we have a 36 grooves. Now, that means along the periphery, 36 number of teeth are there. So, if the 36 number of teeth are there, what is the angle subtended by one teeth? So, angle subtended by one teeth exactly equal to 360 degree divided by 36 degree. That means exactly equal to what? 10 degree. 10 degree angle is subtended at the center. 10 degree angle is subtended at the center. 10 degree subtended. So, which means that if one groove is passed, my spindle and the workpiece will rotate by 10 degree. Two grooves pass 20 degree and so on. Right, fine. So, take one example. That means one groove 
one group will will rotate the workpiece by 10 now we want to rotate the workpiece by 50 degree how many number of group rotations are required that is 5 instead of that i'll say that sir if i want to rotate the workpiece by 50 degree right 50 degree how many number of groups right sorry so this is also not possible so i'll i'll, I'll do one thing that sir suppose i want to divide the periphery into 12 sub equal divisions i want to divide the periphery into what 12 sub equal divisions that means what is the angle subtended at one particular center that is 360 degree divided by 12 degree which is exactly equal to 30 degree so how many group advancements required so i'll say group advancements are exactly equal to three group advancement one group advancement 10 two group, ad group advancement 20 and then 30 so three group advancement will be required there three group advancements will be required there right fine but sir it's very normal that you are talking about that you do one thing that group advancement is exactly equal to 36 divided by number of sub equal divisions that is 36 divided by n number of sub equal divisions 36 divided by n and that's enough that's enough right fine right 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 fine so i'll say that sir 36 divided by n comes at that particular point so we'll say that sir number of group advancement is coming 36 divided by n but again any number of subdivisions cannot get produced why because whatever the number is dividing that 36 by by completely there is no fraction and remainder is coming only such that means only these 2 3 4 9 12 18 36 uh, subdivisions can get produced if i want to divide the periphery into a 15 subdivisions is it possible because number of group advancement is exactly 36 divided by 15 not possible not possible in the complaint not possible not possible at that particular point and therefore can i say that sir uh yaar ek fire beer jala do abhi bahut ho gaya right from six and a half hours we are continuously doing this right fine bahut ho gaya indexing or all these things write share comment subscribe get all india rank one right do everything whatever we is it possible into this particular drama right fine so we'll say that sir it cannot be possible it is not possible it is not possible to produce these many number of uh, i would say that subdivisions and therefore uh, next particular is coming is called as simple or plain indexing it is called as what simple or plain indexing right simple or plain indexing right fine one of the best right simple or plain indexing is coming in the picture right fine whatever i thought is that key uh, in a one day or in one session uh, to cover production is highly impossible at least four to five sessions required and and these five to four sessions has to be crisp that is four hours of session that's it morning 10 to 2 in one session one or two topics you cover and wind up that it will be better for student also and for ourselves also because uh, it's highly impossible to cover production in in entire day because it is a subject where we teach 150 to 160 hours right that is what exactly length of subject and to cover it in a five six hours uh, it's even we tell formulas that formula itself will take six to eight hours you will accept i think so all the students all the students will accept this is it true right fine so now we will discuss a simple and plain indexing right fine now when we talk about simple and plain indexing then in that case that whatever the worm wheel and the worm shaft is there that is engaged so worm wheel and the one shaft is indexed that means can i say that a speed reduction will take place 1 by 40 1 by 40 speed reduction that means crank is rotated 40 times my work is rotated by only one time if the crank is rotated one time my work is rotated by 9 degree already we have discussed right fine so therefore i have written here 40 rotations of crack will generate one rotation of the spindle or worm wheel right which means that 40 rotation may 360 degree of the workpiece in one rotation how much degree that is exactly 9 degree which means that one rotation of the workpiece one rotation of the index crank will generate a one 9 degree rotation of a workpiece already we have discussed that right fine 40 rotation may 360 degree of the workpiece that is index crank motion is 40 in that case index crank motion is 40 in that case workpiece motion is a 360 degree so in one rotation there will be there will be a 9 degrees rotated right fine now simple question is asked we will try to understand that if you want to subdivide the periphery of the workpiece into 10 subdivisions tell me a icm icm stands for index crank motion and index crank motion means what index crank motion means what index crank motion is how many times index has to be rotated index crank has to be rotated right 
best way to study we should so these classes since day one on youtube will be topper yeah absolutely absolutely right fine fine so therefore can i say that i want to divide the periphery into 20 subdivisions so 20 subdivision that means what is the angle subtended at the center periphery has to be divided into 20 subdivisions what is the angle subtended at the center 360 degree divided by a 20 which is exactly equal to i'll say that a 18 degree right 18 degree right 0 0 cancel 18 degree that means the workpiece has to be rotated by 18 degree between two consecutive operation but we know that when the crank is rotated one time workpiece will rotate by 9 degree how many times crank has rotated two times if the crank is rotated covering almost everything in less time yes 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 absolutely correct so i'll say that when the crank is rotated by two times one and two times crank is rotated two times can i say that my workpiece will rotate by 18 degree absolutely so therefore same thing is in a one rotation of crank workpiece will rotate by 9 degree how many index crank motion is required that is exactly two but you don't require to do like that i'll say that index crank motion is exactly 40 by n that's it 40 by n 40 by n 40 by n how many number of subdivisions we require 20 40 divided by 20 how many two and that is called as index crank motion so it is written here now the indexing crank moment is calculated by the following formula that is exactly 40 divided by n 40 divided by n. and what is been by n n is nothing but how many number of subdivisions that is need to be created on the periphery how many number of subdivisions that we are interested to create on the periphery that is called as index crank motion directly you take 40 by it because that is the speed reduction ratio is comes at that particular point right fine now let's take one example here right very interesting let us do a simple indexing to subdivide the periphery of the workpiece into seven subdivisions so sir how much is the index crank motion sir 40 divided by n that is called as 7 so 40 by 7 is a 5.7 so that means my crank has to be rotated by a 5.7 times We'll get hypnotized, sir. 5.7 times. I can rotate the crank by 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But how to rotate the crank by 0.7? It is not possible. Complete rotation of the crank is easily possible. But sir, 0.7 rotation of the crank is highly impossible. And so with the help of that only crank and that mechanism, I can't be able to do that simple indexing. And therefore now, their index split comes in the picture. And that index split has given a name brown and sharp there were two scientists brown and sharp they developed a index plate that is nothing but called as brown and sharp indexing plate brown and sharp indexing plate because complete rotation i can do that but that whatever 0.7 rotation of the crank is not possible and for that 0.7 rotation of the crank the brown and sharp index plate comes in the picture and there are three brown and sharp plates are there plate one plate two and plate three these are called as standard brown and sharp index plate standard brown and sharp indexing plate what is meant by indexing plate it is just a cylindrical plate it is what just a cylindrical plate who has a concentric rings of circles who has what concentric rings of circle which means that you can understand that sir so this is the one concentric rings of circle one ring of circle is there second concentric rings of circle is there third concentric rings of circle is there and how many concentric rings every plate has seven concentric rings of circle every plate has sorry six concentric rings of circle every plate has six concentric rings of circle there are Parkinson plates are also there. Yes, yes, Parkinson plate is there. But as far as get examination is concerned, only brown and sharp is important. Parkinson plate is also there. Absolutely correct. But you only concentrate on brown and sharp indexing plate. So each and every plate has a six concentric rings of circle. Right. And in each ring, there are some holes are there. Now there is a one plate is developed plate one. In that plate one, there are six concentric rings of whole circle is there. And out of that six concentric rings of whole circle, First ring has 15 number of holes. Second ring has 16 number of holes. This first ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. How many? A 15 number of holes are there. Likewise, 15 number of whole circle ring is there. 16 number of whole circle ring is there. 17, 18, 19, 20. So plate number 1, designed by Brown and Sharp, has basically 6 concentric rings of whole circle. First ring, uh, concentric rings has 15 number of holes. Second has 16 number of holes. Third has 17. 18, 19, and 20. So, how to remember? 15 to 20, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, second ring has or second plate has developed who has again six concentric rings of whole circle. First ring has 21 number of circles. Second has 23. So, odd numbers you have to do, right? After 20, 21, 23, 25 is not allowed. Panja, 5. That is Congress ka haath unko nahi chahiye. 
कांग्रेस को डिलीट करो ट्वेंटी फाइव इज नॉट देर एंड आई एम नॉट बीजेपी सो यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दैट डोंट डोंट गो टू दैट ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी सेवन ट्वेंटी नाइन थर्टी वन थर्टी थ्री सो ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी सेवन ट्वेंटी नाइन थर्टी वन थर्टी थ्री देन थर्टी फाइव इज नॉट अलाउ नेक्स्ट फ्लेट थर्टी सेवन थर्टी नाइन फोर्टी वन फोर्टी थ्री फोर्टी सेवन फोर्टी नाइन दैट इज कॉल्ड एक्जैक्टली द नंबर ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रिक रिंग्स ऑफ होल सर्कल कॉन्सेंट्रिक रिंग्स ऑफ होल सर्कल सर देर राइट फाइन सो प्लेट नंबर वन प्लेट नंबर टू प्लेट नंबर थ्री आर देर राइट फाइन Now, how to do that? Very simple. How to do that? Very simple. You do one thing that, sir. You take this forty by seven, right? Now you divide that forty by seven. So I'll say seven into five, thirty-five. So I'll say that five by seven is the remainder. Five by seven is the remainder. Is it remainder? Yes, sir. Because, sir, whatever five complete rotations of the crank, I don't have any problem. But that five by seven rotation is, I am having a problem. So now you do one thing that. Now you do one thing that. Multiply that fraction five by seven. You take it five by seven. You take it. And multiply denominator by such a number in such a way that you will get and we will convert that into a any concentric whole circle ring in any plate. Plate one, plate two, plate three. Out of that plate, there are number of ring circles are there. Fifteen number of ring circles, sixteen number, seventeen. So you multiply this denominator by one such number in such a way that it will convert it into a one concentric ring circle. Right, fine. So if I multiply denominator by three and numerator also three, can I say that seven into three is twenty-one and five into three is exactly fifteen? So is there any concentric ring circle is there in a plate one, two, or three who has twenty-one number of circles? Yes, sir. Sir, I have one plate, plate number two, who has a twenty-one number of full circle and take that twenty-one number of circle plate. Take that plate number two, install there, and can I say that you rotate the crank by one, two, three, four, and five? Once the crank is rotated by five, now you take a reference of twenty-one whole circle ring on a plate number two. Twenty-one whole circle ring on a plate number two and rotated by how many spaces? How many holes? Fifteen whole spaces. One whole space, two whole space, three whole space, and how many? Fifteen whole spaces. And definitely you will reach to that particular five point seven rotation or whatever that rotation forty by seven or five by seven rotation will be generated. Will be generated at that particular point. This is called as use of A, a brown and sharp plate, brown and sharp plate. Number of combinations will be there. I don't have any problem. So how it has to be written? It is written that so five complete rotation of that particular crank plus fifteen whole spaces, fifteen whole spaces over a plate number two, over plate number two, right? With respect to twenty one whole circle ring, with respect to twenty one whole circle ring, right? Is it acceptable, everybody? Yes. Now you take one more example here. And now that is will tell you each and everything of this chapter. That is nothing but do simple indexing, right? Do simple indexing with brown and sharp plate for making a thirty number of tits on a gear blank. Write down all the possible combinations or a use plate, right? Now we have to generate how many spaces? How many? How many specification? So periphery has to be divided into a thirty number of thirty number of equi equi divisors. Or I'll say that the periphery has to be divided into Thirty equispace subdivision. So now n is exactly with thirty subdivisions. What is index crank motion? Forty by thirty. Four will get cancelled. Four by three. Four by three is nothing but exactly do what? One into one by three. So I'll go here and I'll write down here. Right? What is exactly equal to this much? Do I have any space available? Yes. So I'll write down here. It is exactly equal to forty by thirty. It is exactly equal to four by three, which is exactly one into one by three. Right? Fine. Now, what are the possible cases? You take plate number one. You take what plate number one? Right, fine. Now, in the plate number one, can I say that I'll multiply case number one? I'll multiply here by five and divided by five. I'll multiply by five divided by five. Right, fine. So, how much answer is coming? Five divided by five divided by fifteen. So, can I say that is there any circle ring is available in the plate number one who has fifteen ring circle? Yes. So, can I say that, sir? My first answer is exactly equal to my my crank has to do it by one complete rotation and then five whole spaces with respect to fifteen whole circle on plate number one. Is there any combination available in plate number one? Yes, sir. I'll multiply by six. I'll multiply by six denominator numerator. Can I say it will come six by a eighteen? Is there any whole circle? Yes, sir. You can easily understand that eighteen number of whole circle ring is there. With respect to that eighteen whole whole circle ring, can I say my crank has to be rotated by how much time? How much time? Six number of whole spaces, right? So in this way, there are certain combinations are there. Plate number one, these two combinations. 
plate number 2 has these combinations and plate number 3 also having this particular combination this is exactly equal to combination with their plate number 3 it is nothing but called as use of a brown and sharp index plate brown and sharp index plate right fine so listen my dear friend now we'll wind up the session right machining is completed that we can assume and now what i'm planning is that uh from 15 to 20 15 to 20 right i'll be free from 15 because up to 15 some classes are there so in that there will be a revision session marathon definitely will conduct where the class will start at 10 am right fine and wind up up to 2 pm four hour classes where only two topics will be revised daily two topics will be revised daily right fine because uh this all the revision and production in one day is highly highly difficult that's what exactly i feel so whatever i could be able to do today we have done i think so right fine uh your love appreciation and uh, suggestions will be always welcome right fine thanks for joining and uh, taking benefited from this same thing right share with the uh, all the rest of the community so that they'll also get benefited if there any suggestion you can down and connect with me with the telegram channel also right all the best uh, we'll see you in the next session right thank you everybody take care